Section 1 of Metamorphoses. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. Volume 1. The First Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 1. From bodies various formed, mutative shapes, my muse would sing. Celestial powers give aid. From you those changes sprung, inspire my pen. Connect each period of my venturous song, unsevered, from old chaos's rude misrule, till now the world beneath Augustus smiles. While yet nor earth nor sea their place possessed, nor that cerulean canopy which hangs o'ershadowing all, each undistinguished lay, and one dead form all nature's features bore, unshapely, rude, and chaos justly named together struggling laid each element confusion strange begat soul had not yet whirled through the blue expanse his burning car nor luna yet had lighted forth her lamp nor fed her waning light with borrowed rays no globus earth poised inly by its weight hung pendant in the circumambient sky the sky was not nor amphitrite had clasped round the land her wide encircling arms unfirm the earth with water mixed and air opaque the air unfluid were the waves together clashed the elements confused cold strove with heat and moisture drought opposed light heavy hard and soft in combat joined uprose the world's great lord the strife dissolved the firm earth from the blue sky placed apart rolled back the waves from off the land and fixed where pure ethereal joins with foggy air defined each element and from the mass chaotic ranged select in concord firm he bound and all agreed on high upsprung the fiery ether to the utmost heaven the atmospheric air in lightness next up floated dense the solid earth dragged down the heavier mass and girt on every side by waves circumfluent seized her place below this done the mass this deity unknown divides each part disposed in order lays first earth he rounds in form a sphere immense equal on every side then bids the seas pent in by banks spread their rude waves abroad by strong winds vexed and clasp within their arms the tortuous shores and marshes wide he adds pure springs and lakes he bounds with shelving banks the streams smooth gliding slowly creeping some the arid earth absorbs furious some rush and in the watery plain their waves disgorge their narrow bounds escaped to billows rise and lash the sandy shores he bade the plains extend the valleys sink the groves to bloom and rocky hills to lift their heads aloft and as two zones the northern heaven restrain the southern two and one the hot amidst with five the godhead girt the enclosed earth and climates five upon its face impressed the midst from heat inhabitable snows eternal cover too twixt these extremes two temperate regions lie where heat and cold meet in due mixture Above the whole light air was hung as water floats above the land so far above air ascends here he bade lodge thick clouds and vapours thunders bellowing loud terrific to mankind and winds which mixed sharp cold beget but these to range at large the air throughout his care forbade e'en now their force is scarce withstood but oft they threat wild ruin to the universe though each in separate regions rules his potent blasts such is fraternal strife far to the east where persian mountains greet the rising sun eurus withdrew where sinking phoebus's rays glow on the western shores mild zephyr fled terrific boreas frozen scythia seized beneath the icy bear on southern climes from constant clouds the showery oster reigns the liquid ether high above he spread light calm and undefiled by dregs terrene scarce were those bounds immutable arranged when upward sprung the stars so long pressed down beneath the heap chaotic and along the path of heaven their blazing courses ran next that each separate element might hold appropriate habitants the vault of heaven bright constellations and the gods received to glittering fish allotted were the waves to earth fierce brutes to agitated air light plumaged birds a being more divine of soul exalted more and formed to rule the rest was wanting then he finished man or by the world's creator power supreme formed from an heavenly seed 
or new-shaped earth late from celestial ether torn and still congenial warmth retaining moistened felt prometheus's fire and moulded took the form of him all potent others earth behold pronely to man a face erect was given the heavens he bade him view and raise his eyes high to the stars thus earth of late so rude so shapeless man till now unknown became first sprung the age of gold unforced by laws strict rectitude and faith spontaneous then mankind inspired no judge vindictive frowned unknown alike were punishment and fear no strict decrees on brazen plates were seen nor suppliant crowd with trembling limbs low bent before their judges bowed unknown was law yet safe were all unhewn from native hills the pine tree knew the seas not nor had viewed regions unknown for man not yet had searched shores distant from his own the towns ungirt by trenches deep laid open to the plain nor brazen trump nor bended horn were seen helmet nor sword but conscious and secure unawed by arms the nations tranquil slept the teeming earth by barrows yet unraised by ploughs unwounded plenteous poured her stores content with food unforced man plucked with ease young strawberries from the mountains cornels red the thorny brambles fruit and acorns shook from jove's wide spreading tree spring ever smiled and placid zephyr fostered with his breeze the flowers unsown which everlasting bloomed untilled the land its welcome produce gave and unmanured its hoary crop renewed here streams of milk there streams of nectar flowed and from the ilex drop by drop distilled the yellow honey fell but saturn down to dusky tartarus banished all the world by jove was governed then a silver age succeeded by the golden far excelled itself surpassing far the age of brass the ancient durance of perpetual spring he shortened and in seasons four the year divided winter summer lessened spring and various tempered autumn first were known then first the air with parching fervour dry glowed hot then ice congealed by piercing winds hung pendant houses then first sheltered man houses by caverns formed with thick shrubs fenced and boughs entwined with osiers then the grain of ceres first in lengthened furrows lay and oxen groaned beneath the weighty yoke third after these a brazen race succeeds more stern in soul and more in furious war delighting still to wicked deeds averse the last from stubborn iron took its name and now rushed in upon the wretched race all impious villainies truth faith and shame fled far while entered fraud and force and craft and plotting with detested avarice to winds scarce known the seamen boldly loosed his sails and ships which long on lofty hills had rested bounded o'er the unsearched waves the cautious measurer now with spacious line marked out the land in common once to all free as the sunbeams or the lucid air nor would the fruits and elements suffice the rich earth from her surface threw but deep within her womb they digged and thence displayed riches of crimes the prompter hid far deep close by the stygian shades now murderous steel and gold more murderous entered into day weaponed with each war sallied forth and shook with bloody grasp his loud resounding arms now man by rapine lives friend fears his host and sire-in-law his son e'en brethren's love is rarely seen wives plot their husband's death and husband's theirs design stepmothers fierce the lurid poisons mix the impatient son inquires the limits of his father's years piety lies neglected and astrea last of celestial deities on earth ascends and leaves the sanguine moistened land nor high raised heaven was more than earth secure giants tis said with mad ambition strove to seize the heavenly throne and mountains pile on mountains till the loftiest stars they touched but with his darted bolt all-powerful jove olympus shattered and from pelion's top dashed ossa there with huge unwieldy bulk oppressed their dreadful courses lay and soaked their parent earth with blood their parent earth the warm blood vivified and caused assume an human form a monumental type of fierce progenitors heaven they despise violent of slaughter greedy and their race from blood derived betray saturnian jove this from his lofty seat beheld and sighed the recent bloody fact revolving deep 
the lycaonian feast to few yet known incensed with mighty rage rage worthy jove he calls the council none who here delay a path sublime in cloudless skies fair seen they tread when toward the mighty thunderer's dome his regal court the immortals bend their way on right and left by folding doors enclosed are halls where gods of rank and power are set plebeians far and wide their place select more potent deities in heaven most bright full in the front possess their shining seats this place might words so bold a form assume i'd term palatium of the lofty sky here in his marble niche each god was placed and on his ebon sceptre leaning jove o'er all high towered the dread inspiring locks three times he shook and ocean earth and sky the motion felt and trembled then in rage the silence thus he broke not more i feared our kingdom's fate in those tempestuous times when monsters serpent-footed furious strove to clasp within their hundred arms the heavens already captive deemed though fierce our foe one race alone warred with us sprung from one now all must perish all within the bounds by nereus circled with his roaring waves i swear by Styx, by those infernal streams through shades slow creeping all i could i've tried but lest to parts unsound the taint should spread what baffles cure the knife must lop away our demigods we have we have our nymphs our rustic deities our satyrs fauns and mountain sylvans whose deserts we grant celestial honours claim not yet on earth by us assigned they safely sure should rest but oh ye sacred powers but oh how safe are these when fierce lycaon plots for me me whom the thunders and yourselves obey loud murmurs fill the skies swift vengeance all with eager voice demand when impious hands with caesar's blood the immortal fame of rome raged to extinguish all the world aghast with horror shook and trembled through its frame nor was thy subject's loyalty to thee more sweet augustus than was theirs to jove his hand and voice to still their noise he raised their clamours loud were hushed all silence kept when thus the thunderer ends his angry tale dismiss your care his punishment is o'er but hear his crimes and hear his well-earned fate of human vice the fame had reached mine ear with hoped exaggeration gliding down from proud olympus's brow i veiled the god and roved the world in human form around twere long to tell what turpitude i saw on every side for rumour far fell short of what i witnessed through the dusky woods of minolus i passed where savage lurk fierce monsters o'er the cold lycian hill with pine trees waving and selene's height thence to the arcadian monarch's roof i came as dusky twilight drew on sable night gave signs a god approached the people crowd in adoration but lycaon turns their reverence and piety to scorn then said not hard the task to ascertain if god or mortal by unerring test and plots to slay me when oppressed with sleep such proof his soul well suited impious more and hostage from molossus sent he slew his palpitating members part he boiled and o'er the glowing embers roasted part these on the board he serves my vengeful flames consume his roof for his deserts o'erwhelm his household gods lycaon trembling fled and gained the silent country loud he howled and strove in vain to speak his ravenous mouth still thirsts for slaughter on the harmless flocks his fury rages as it won't on man blood glads him still his vest is shaggy hair his arms sink down to legs a wolf he stands yet former traits his visage still retains grey still his hair and cruel still his look his eyes still glisten savage all his form thus one house perished but not one alone the fate deserves wherever earth extends the fierce erinus reigns men seem conspired in impious bond to sin and all shall feel the scourge they merit fixed is my decree part loud applaud his words and feed his rage the rest assent in silence yet to all man's loss seems grievous anxious all inquire what form shall earth of him deprived assume who then shall incense to their altars bring and if those rich and fertile lands he means a spoil for beasts ferocious their despair he bade them banish and in him confide for what the future needed held them forth the promise of a race unlike the first originating from a wondrous stock and now his lightnings were already shot and earth in flames but that a fire so vast he feared might reach olympus and consume the heavenly axis 
also called to mind what fate had doomed that all in future times by fire should perish earth and sea and heaven and all the unwieldy fabric of the world should waste to naught cyclops's laboured bolt society laid a different vengeance now to drench with rains from every part of heaven and whelm mankind beneath the rising waves pleased more the immortal straightway close he pent to the dry northeast and every blast to showers adverse in caves aeolian and unbarred the cell of notus notus rushes forth on pinions dropping rain his horrid face a pitchy cloud conceals pregnant with showers his beard and waters from his grey hairs flow mists on his forehead sit in dews dissolved his arms and bosom seemed to melt away with broad hands seizing on the pendant clouds he pressed them with a mighty crash they burst and thick and constant floods from heaven pour down iris meantime in various robe arrayed collects the waters and supplies the clouds prostrate the harvest lies the tiller's hopes turn to despair the labours of an year a long long year without their fruit are spent nor jove's own heaven his anger could suffice his brother brings him his auxilio waves he calls the rivers at their monarch's call his roof they enter and in brief he speaks few words we need pour each his utmost strength the cause demands it op your fountains wide sweep every mound before you and let gush your furious waters with unshortened rains he bids the watery gods retire break up their narrow springs and furious toward the main their waters roll himself his trident rears and smites the earth earth trembles at the stroke yawns wide her bosom and upon the land a flood disgorges wide outspread the streams rush o'er the open fields uproot the trees sweep harvests flocks and men nor houses stood nor household gods asylums here too safe where strong built edifice its walls opposed unlevelled in the ruin high above its roof the billows mounted and its towers tottered beneath the watery gulf oppressed nor land nor sea their ancient bounds maintained for all around was sea sea without shore this seeks a mountain top that gains a skiff and plies his oars where late he ploughed the plains or fields of corn one sails above the roofs of towns emerged another in the elm seizes the entangled fish perchance in meads the anchor oft is thrown and oft the keel tears the subjacent vine tree where were wont the nimble goats to crop the tender grass unwieldy sea calves roll the nereid nymphs with wonder groves and palaces and towns beneath the waves behold by dolphins now the woods are tenanted who furious smite the boughs and shake the strong oak by their blows swims with the flock the wolf and swept along tigers and tawny lions strive in vain now not his thundering strength avails the boar nor borne away the fleet stag's slender limbs and land long sought in vain to rest her feet the wandering bird draws in her weary wings and drops into the waves whose unchecked roll the hills have drowned and with uncustomed surge foam on the mountain tops of man the most they swallowed whom their fierce eruptions spared by hunger perished in their bleak retreat between the aeonian and actaean lands lies phocis fruitful were the phocian fields while fields they were but now o'erwhelmed they form a region only of the widespread main here stands parnassus with his forked top above the clouds high towering to the stars to this deucalion with his consort driven o'er ridgy billows in his bark clung close for all was sea beside there bend they down the nymphs and mountain gods adore and she predicting themis then oraculus deemed no man more upright than himself had lived than pyrrha none more pious heaven had seen now jove beheld a mighty lake expand where late was earth and from the swarming crowds but one man saved of woman only one both guiltless pious both he chased the clouds and bade the dry northeast to drive the showers far distant and display the earth to heaven and unto earth the skies the ocean's rage remains no more mild neptune lays aside his three-forked weapon and his surges smooths then calls blue triton from the dark profound above the waves the god his shoulders rears with inbred purple tinged he bids him sound his shelly trump and back the billows call and rivers to their banks again remand the trump he seizes broad above it wreathed from narrow base the trump whose piercing blast from east to west resounds through every shore this to his mouth the watery bearded god applies 
and breathes within the stern command all hear the sound or waves of earth or sea and all who hear obey sea finds a shore floods flow within their channels rivers sink hills lift their heads and as the waves decrease in numerous islets solid earth appears a tedious time elapsed and now the woods displayed their leafless summits and their boughs heavy with mud at length the world restored deucalion saw but empty all and void deep silence reigning through the expansive waste tears gushed while thus his pyrrha he addressed o sister wife o woman soul preserved by nature kindred at the marriage bed to me most closely joined now nearer still by mutual perils we of all the earth beheld by soul in his diurnal course we too alone remain the mighty deep entombs the rest nor sure our safety yet still hang the clouds dark lowering wretched wife what if preserved alone what hadst thou done of me bereft how singly borne the shock where found condolement in thy load of grief for me and trust my dearest wife my words hadst thou amidst the billows been engulfed me also had they swallowed o oh, for power to form mankind as once my father did and in the shape and earth true souls infuse in us rests human race so will the gods a sample only of mankind we live he spoke and pyrrha's tears joined his to heaven they raise their hands in prayer and straight resolved to ask through oracles divine its aid nor long delay quick to cephas's streams they hasten muddy still cephas's flows yet not beyond its wonted boundaries swollen libations thence they lift and o'er their heads and garments cast the sprinklings then their steps to themis's temple bend the roof they found with filthy moss o'ergrown the altars cold prone on the steps they fell and trembling kissed the gelid stones and thus preferred their words if righteous prayers can move the heavenly mind and soften harsh resolves and soothe the rage of great immortals say o themis say how to the world mankind shall be restored and grant most merciful in our distress thy potent aid the goddess heard their words and instant gave reply the temple leave ungird your garments veil your heads and throw behind your backs your mighty mother's bones astonished long they stood and pyrrha first the silence broke the oracle's behest refusing to obey and ernest prayed with trembling tongue for pardon for her sin her mother's shade to violate she dreads her bones thus rudely flinging but meantime deep in their minds in dark mysterious veil obscurely hid the sentence they revolve at length deucalion soothes his wife with words of cheering import right if i define no impious deed the deity desires earth is our mighty mother and her bones the stony rocks within her these behind our backs to cast the oracle commands with joy the spicious augury she hears but joy with doubt commingled both so much the heavenly words distrust yet still they hope the essay cannot harm the temple left their heads they cover and their vests unbind and o'er their heads as ordered heave the stones the stones incredible unless the fact tradition sanctioned doubtless straight began to lose their rugged firmness and anon to soften and when soft a form assume next as they grew in size they felt infused a nature mild their form resembled man but incorrectly marble so appears rough hewn to form a statue ere the hand completes the shape what liquid was and moist with earthy atoms mixed soft flesh became parts solid and unbending changed to bone in name unaltered veins the same remained thus by the god's beneficent decree and brief the change the stones deucalion threw a manly shape assumed but female sprung from those by pyrrha cast behind and hence a patient hard laborious race we prove and show the source by actions whence we sprung End of section one Part two of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso, Ovid, translated by J. J. Howard. Volume one, the first book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part two. Beings all else the teeming earth produced spontaneous, heated by the solar rays, the stagnant water quickened, marshy fens swelled up their oozy loads to meet the beams and nourished by earth's vivifying soil the fruitful elements of life increased as in a mother's womb 
and in a while assumed a certain shape so when the floods of seven-mouthed nile desert the moistened fields and to their ancient channels bring their streams the soft mud fries beneath the scorching sun and midst the fresh turned earth unnumbered forms the tiller finds some scarcely half conceived imperfect some their bodies wanting limbs and oft he beings sees with parts alive the rest a clod of earth for where with heat dew moisture kindly mixes life will spring from these in concord all things are produced though fire with water strives yet vapour warm discordant mixture gives a birth to all thus when the earth with filthy ooze bespread from the late deluge felt the blazing sun his burning heat productive caused spring forth a countless race of beings part appeared in forms before well known the rest a group of monsters strange then but unwilling she produced terrific python serpent huge a mighty mountain with his bulk he hid a plague unknown the new-born race to scare the quiver-shouldered god unused before his arms to launch save on the flying deer or roebuck fleet the horrid monster slew a thousand arrows in his sides he fixed his quiver's store exhausting through the wounds gushed the black poison to contending games hence instituted for the serpent slain the glorious action to preserve through times succeeding he the name of pythian gave and here the youth who bore the palm away by wrestling racing or in chariot swift with beech and bow was crowned nor yet was known the laurel's leaf apollo's brows with hair decked graceful no peculiar branches bound Penaean Daphne first his bosom charmed, no casual flame but planned by love's revenge. Him Phoebus flushed with conquest late obtained, his bow saw bend, and thus exclaimed in taunt, Lascivious boy, how ill with thee assort those warlike arms! How much my shoulders more beseem the load, whose arm can deadly wounds in furious beasts and every foe infix! I who but now huge Python have o'erthrown, swollen with a thousand darts, his mighty bulk whole acres covering with pestiferous weight content in vulgar hearts thy torch to flame to me the bow's superior glory leave then venus's son o phoebus nought thy dart evades nor thou canst scape the force of mine to thee as others yield so much my fame must ever thine transcend thus spoke the boy and lightly mounting cleaves the yielding air with beating wings and on parnassus's top umbrageous rests there from his quiver drew two darts of different power this chases love and that desire enkindles formed of gold it glistens ending in a point acute blunt is the first tipped with a leaden load which love in daphne's tender breast infixed the sharper through apollo's heart he drove and through his nerves and bones instant he loves she flies of love the name in shady woods and spoils of captive beasts alone she joys to copy dian emulus her hair in careless tresses formed a fillet bound by numbers sought averse alike to all impatient of their suit through forests wild and groves in maiden ignorance she roams nor cares for cupid nor hymenial rites nor soft connubial joys oft cried her sire my daphne you should bring to me a son from you my child i hope for grandsons too but she detesting wedlock as a crime suffused her features with a bashful glow around his aged neck her beauteous arms winds blandishing and cries o sire most dear one favour grant perpetual to enjoy my virgin purity the mighty jove the same indulgence has to dian given thy sire complies but that too beauteous face and lovely form thy anxious wish oppose apollo loves thee to thy bed aspires and looks with anxious hopes his wish to gain futurity by him for once unseen as the light stubble when the ears are shorn the flames consume as hedges blaze on high from torches by the traveller closely held or heedless flung when morning gilds the world so flaming burnt the god so blazed his breast and with fond hopes his vain desires he fed her tresses careless flowing o'er her neck he viewed and oh how beauteous decked with care exclaimed her eyes which shone like brilliant fire or sparkling stars he sees and sees her lips unsated with the sight he burns to touch admires her fingers and her hands her arms half to the shoulder naked what he sees though beauteous what is hid he deems more fair 
fleet as the wind her fearful flight she wings nor stays his fond recalling words to hear daughter of peneus stay no foe pursues stay beauteous nymph so flies the lamb the wolf the stag the lion so on trembling wings the dove avoids the eagle these are foes but love alone me urges to pursue ah me then shouldst thou fall or prickly thorns wound thy fair legs and i the cause of pain rough is the road thou runnest slack i pray thy speed i swear to follow not so fast but here who loves thee no rough mountain swain no shepherd none in raiment's rugged clad tending the lowing herds rash thoughtless nymph thou fliest thou knowst not whom and therefore fliest o'er delphos's lands and tenedos i sway and claros and the pateraean realms my sire is jove to me are all things known or present past or future taught by me melodious sounds poetic numbers grace sure is my dart but one more sure i feel lodged in this bosom strange to love before medicine me hails inventor through the world my help is called for unto me is known the powers of plants and herbs ah hapless i nor plants nor herbs afford a cure for love nor arts which all relieve relieve their lord all this and more but daphne fearful fled and left his speech unfinished lovely then she running seemed her limbs the breezes bared her flying raiment floated on the gale her careless tresses to the light air streamed her flight increased her beauty now no more the god to waste his courteous words endures but urged by love himself with swifter pace her footsteps treads the rapid greyhound so when in the open field the hare he spies trusts to his legs for prey as she for flight and now he snaps and now he thinks to hold and brushes with his outstretched nose her heels she trembling half in doubt or caught or no springs from his jaws and mocks his touching mouth thus fled the virgin and the god he fleet through hope and she through fear but winged by love more rapid flew apollo spurning rest approached her close behind and panting breathed upon her floating tresses pale with dread her strength exhausted in the lengthened flight old Panaeus's streams she saw and loud exclaimed o sire assist me if within thy streams divinity abides let earth this form too comely for my peace quick swallow up or change those beauties to an harmless shape her prayer scarce ended when her lovely limbs a numbness felt a tender rind enwraps her beauteous bosom from her head shoots up her hair in leaves in branches spread her arms her feet but now so swift cleave to the earth with roots immovable her face at last the summit forms her bloom the same remains still loves the god the tree and on the trunk his right hand placing feels her breast yet throb beneath the new-grown bark around the boughs as yet her limbs his clasping arms he throws and burning kisses on the wood imprints the wood his lips repels then thus the god o laurel though to be my bride denied yet shalt thou be my tree my temples bind my lyre and quiver shalt thou still adorn the brows of latian conquerors shalt thou grace when the glad people sing triumphant hymns and the long pomp of the capitol ascends a faithful guard before augustus's gates on each side hung the sturdy oak between and as perpetual youth adorns my head with locks unshorn thou also still shalt bear thy leafy honours in perpetual green apollo ended and the laurel bowed her verdant summit as her grateful head within emonia lies a grove enclosed by steep and lofty hills on every side tis tempe called from lowest pindus poured here peneus rolls his foaming waves along thick clouds of smoke and dark and vapoury mists the violent falls produce sprinkling the tops of proudest forest with the plenteous dew and distant parts astounding with the roar here holds the watery deity his throne here his retreat most sacred seated here within the rock-formed cavern to the streams and stream residing nymphs his laws he gives here flock the neighbouring river gods in doubt or to condole or gratulate the sire here Spercius came, whose banks with poplars wave, rapid Enipeus, Apidanus slow, Amphrisus gently flowing, Aeas mild, and other streams which wind their various course, till in the sea their weary wanderings end, by natural bent directed. Absent soul was Inachus, deep in his gloomy cave, dark hidden, with his tears he swells his floods. He, wretched sire, his Eos' loss bewails, witless if living air she still enjoys or with the shade she dwells 
and nowhere found he dreads the worst and thinks her not to be the beauteous damsel from her father's banks jove saw returning and o oh maid exclaimed worthy of jove whose charms will shortly bless some youth desertless come and seek the shade yon lofty groves afford and showed the groves while now soul scorches from heaven's midmost height fear not the forests to explore alone but in their deepest shades adventurous go a god shall guard thee no plebeian god but he whose mighty hand the sceptre grasps of rule celestial and the lightning flings o oh, fly me not for eo fled amazed now lerner's pastures and lurcaea's lands with trees thick planted far behind were left when with a sudden mist the god concealed the wide-spread earth and stopped her eager flight and in his arms the struggling maid compressed meantime did juno cast her eyes below the floating clouds surprised to see produce a night-like shade amidst so bright a day no common clouds from streams exhaled she knew nor misty vapours from the humid earth suspicions rise her sharpness oft had caught her amorous husband in his thefts of love she searched around the sky its lord explored but not in heaven he sat then loud exclaimed much must i err or much my bed is wronged down sliding from the topmost heaven on earth she lights and bids the cloudy mists recede prepared already jove the nymph had changed and in a lovely heifer's form she stood a shape so beauteous fair though sore chagrined unwilling juno praised and whence she came and who her owner asks and of what heard her prying art as witless of the truth to baffle from the earth he feigns her sprung and straight saturnia begs the beauteous gift embarrassed now he stands the nymph to leave abandoned were too cruel to deny his wife suspicious shame compliance urged love strong dissuaded love had vanquished shame save that a paltry cow to her refused associate of his race and bed he feared more than a cow the goddess would suspect her rival now she holds but anxious still she jove distrusts and fears her prize to lose nor safe she deemed her till to argus's care committed round the jailer's watchful head an hundred eyes were set two closed in turn the rest with watchful care kept cautious guard howe'er he stands on eo still he looks his face averse yet still his eyes behold by day she pastures but beneath the earth when phoebus sinks he drags her to the stall and binds with cords her undeserving neck arbutus's leaves and bitter herbs her food her wretched bed is oft the cold damp earth a strawy couch denied the muddy stream her constant drink when suppliant she would raise her arms to argus arms to raise were none to moan she tries loud bellowings echo wide she starts and trembles at her voice's roar now to the banks she comes where oft she'd played the banks of inachus and in his streams her new-formed horns beheld in wild affright from them she strove and from herself to fly her sister naiads know her not nor he grieved inachus his long-lost daughter knows but she her sisters and her sire pursues invites their touch as wondering they caress old inachus the gathered herbs presents she licks his hands and presses with her lips his dear paternal fingers tears flow quick and could words follow she would ask his aid and speak her name and lamentable state marks for her words she formed which in the dust traced by her hoof disclosed her mournful change ah wretch her sire exclaimed unhappy wretch and o'er the weeping heifer's snowy neck his arms he threw and round her horns he hung with sobs redoubled art thou then my child through earth's extent so sought ah less my grief to find thee not than thus transformed to find but dumb thou art nor with responsive words me cheerest from thy deep chest sighs alone thou utterest and loud lowings to my words thou canst no more unwitting i prepared thy marriage tortures anxious to behold a son and next a son of thine to see now from the herd a husband must thou seek now with the herd thy sons must wander forth nor death my woes can finish cursed the gift of immortality eternal grief must still corrode me letha's gate is closed thus grieved the god when starry argus tore his charge away and to a distant mead drove her to pasture he a lofty hill's commanding prospect chose and seated there viewed all around alike on every side
but now heaven's ruler could no more contain to see the sorrows eo felt he calls his son of brightest pleiad mother born and bids him quickly compass argus's death instant around his heels his wings he binds his rod somniferous grasps nor leaves his cap accoutred thus from native heights he springs and lights on earth removes his cap his wings unlooses and his wand alone retains through devious paths with this a shepherd now a flock he drives of goats and tunes his pipe of reeds constructed argus hears the sound junonian guard and captivated cries come stranger sit with me upon this mount nor for thy flock more fertile pasture grows than round this spot and here the shade thou seest to shepherd's ease inviting hermes sat and with his converse stayed declining day long he discoursed and anxious drove to lull with music sweet the all-observant eyes but long he strove in vain soft slumber's bonds argus opposes of his numerous lights part sleep but others jealous watch his charge and now he questions whence the pipe was formed the pipe but new discovered to the world then thus the god a lovely naiad nymph with bleak arcadia's hamadryads nursed and on nonacrony for beauty famed was syrinx oft the satyrs wild she fled nor these alone but every god that roves in shady forests or in fertile fields diane she follows and her virgin life like diane cinctured she might diane seem save that a golden bough the goddess bears the nymph a bough of horn yet still to most mistake was easy from lycaeum's height his head encompassed with the pointed pine returning her the lustful pan espied and cried fair virgin grant a god's request the god who burns to wed thee here he stays through pathless forests flies the nymph and scorns his warm entreaties till the gravelly stream of ledon smoothly winding she beheld the waves impede her flight she earnest prays her sister nymph so human form to change now thinks the sylvan god his clasping arms in closer whilst he grasps but marshy reeds he mournful sighs the light reeds catch his breath and soft reverberate the plaintive sound the dulcet movement charms the enraptured god who thus forever shall we join exclaims with wax combined unequal reeds he forms a pipe which still the virgin's name retains while thus the god he every eye beheld weighed heavy sink in sleep and stopped his tail his magic rod o'er every lid he draws his sleep confirming and with crooked blade severs his nodding head and down the mount the bloody ruin hurls the craggy rock with gore besmearing lo thou argus liest extinct thy hundred lights one night obscure eclipsing all but juno seized the rays and on the plumage of her favoured bird in gaudy pride the starry gems she placed with furious ire she flamed and instant sent the dread erinus to the argive maid before her eyes within her breast she dwelt a secret torment and in terror drove her exiled through the world twas thou o nile her tedious wandering ended on thy banks wearied she kneeled and on her back supine her neck she leaned her sad face to the skies what could she more she lifted unto jove by groans and tears and mournful lows she plained and begged her woes might end the mighty god around his consort's neck embracing hung and prayed her wrath might finish fear no more a rival love in her he said to see and bade the stygian streams his words record appeased the goddess eo straight resumes her wonted shape as lovely as before the rough hair flies the crooked horns are shed her visual orbits narrow and her mouth in size contracts her arms and hands return parted in five small nails her hoofs are lost naught of the lovely heifer now remains save the bright splendour on her feet erect with two now only furnished stands the maid to speak she fears lest bellowing sounds should break and timid tries her long-forgotten words of mighty fame a goddess now she hears of nations linen-clad the pious prayers then bore she epaphus whose birth derived from mighty jove his temples through the land an equal worship with his mother's claim him phaeton bright phoebus's youthful son in years and spirit equalled whose proud boasts to all his sire preferring eo's son thus checked o simple thee thy mother's arts to aught persuade a feigned sire thou boasts deep blushed the youth but shame his rage repressed and each reproach to clymene he bore this too he says o mother irks me more that i so bold so fierce urged no defence which shame is greater 
that they dare accuse or that accused we cannot prove them false do thou my mother if from heaven indeed descent i claim prove from what stock i spring my race divine assert he said and flung around her neck his arms and by his life the life of merops and his sister's hopes of nuptial bliss adjures her to obtain proofs of his birth celestial prayers like these the mother doubtless moved and rage no less to hear the defamation up to heaven her arms she raises gazing on the sun and cries my child by yon bright rays i swear in brilliance glittering which now hear and view our every word and action thou art sprung from him the sun thou seest the sun who rules with tempering sway the seasons if untrue my words let me his light no more behold nor long the toil to seek thy father's dome his palace whence he rises borders close on our land's confines if thou darest the task go forth and from himself thy birth inquire elate to hear her words the youth departs instant and all the sky in mind he grasps through ethiopia's regions swiftly went with india placed beneath the burning zone and quickly reached his own paternal east End of section two. Section three of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The second book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part one. By towering columns bright with burnished gold, and fiery gems which blazed their light around, Upborne the palace stood, the lofty roof with ivory smooth encased, the folding doors of silver shone, but much by sculpture graced, for Vulcan there with curious hand had carved the ocean girding in the land, the land, and heaven o'ershadowing, here cerulean gods sport in the waves, grim triton with his shell, Proteus shape-changing, and Aegeon huge, his mighty arms upon the large broad backs of whales hard pressing, Doris and her nymphs, some sportive swimming on a rocky seat some their green tresses drying others borne by fish swift gliding nor the same all seemed yet sister-like a close resembling look each face pervaded earth her natives bore mankind and woods and cities there were seen wild beasts and streams and nymphs and rural gods above all the bright display of heaven was hung six signs celestial o'er each portal graved the daring youth the steep ascent attained or stepped the threshold of his dubious sire and hasty rushed to meet paternal eyes but sudden stayed so fierce a blaze of light no nearer he sustained in purple clad the god a regal emerald throne upheld encircled round by hours which space the day by days themselves and ages months and years crowned with a flowery garland spring appeared chaplets of grain the swarthy brows adorned of naked summer smeared with trodden grapes stood autumn icy winter filled the group snow white his shaggy locks soul from the midst his eyes all seeing glanced upon the youth startled and trembling at the wondrous sight and cried what brings my phaeton my son whose sire shall ne'er disclaim him tell me now what here thou seekest thus the youth replies o father phoebus universal light if justly i thy honoured name may use nor proudly boasting Climene conceals a crime by falsehood, grant paternal signs, the world convincing that from thee I spring, reproachful doubts erasing from my mind. He said, The sire the glittering rays removes that blazed around his head, invites him nigh, and thus embracing, Proud I own thee, son, for all is true by Climene disclosed. If still thou doubtest, name the gift thou likest, that shalt thou have, for that will I bestow. Ye streams unseen which hear celestial oaths, my vows attest. But scarce had Phoebus spoke when Phaeton, the fiery car, demands. Demands his sway the winged-footed steeds one day should suffer. Soon the solemn oath Phoebus lamented. Three times mournful shook his glorious tresses and in sorrow cried. Would I could yet deny thee, O my son, all else with gladness will I hear thee ask. List to persuasion. Perseverance sure will risk thy ruin. Phaeton, my child, the task thou seek'st is arduous, far unfit for those weak arms and age so immature. Mortal, thou wouldst a seat immortal press, ignorant of grasping more than all the gods attempt to manage. Every power we grant, diverse excels, 
but i of all the gods have force in that igniferous car to stand even jove the ruler of olympus vast whose right hand terrible fierce lightnings hurled this chariot never ruled and who than jove more mighty deem we steep the first ascent the fresh steeds clamber up the height with pain high in mid-heaven arrived to view beneath ocean and earth oft strikes even me with fear and with dread palpitation shakes my breast prerupt the end and asks a firm restraint tethers herself who nightly me receives beneath the waves fears oft my headlong fall nor all the skies a constant whirling bears in rapid motion and the heavenly orbs sweep with them swift i strive the adverse my nor can the impetuous force which whirls the rest bear with them me i stem the rapid world with force superior grant the car i yield couldst thou the swift rotation of the poles stem nervous nor be borne with them along perchance imagination fills thy mind with groves and dwellings of celestial gods and temples richly decked with offered gold where thou shalt pass far else thy journey lies through ambushes and savage monsters forms even shouldst thou lucky not erratic stray yet must thou pass the bull's opposing horns the bohemonian by the centaur bent the lion's countenance grim the scorpion's claws bent cruel in a circuit large the crab in lesser compass curving hard the task to rule the steeds with those fierce fires inflamed within their breasts which through their nostrils glow scarce bear they my control when mad with heat their high necks spurn the rein but o oh, my son beware lest i a fatal gift bestow retract while yet thou mayst thy rash demand sure tokens thou requirest to prove thee sprung from me the genuine offspring of my blood my anxious trembling is a token true paternal terrors plainly prove the sire lo on my features fix thine eyes as well i would thou couldst them place within my breast and view the anguish of a father's cares last throw thy looks around the riches view whatever earth contains in some demand some of so many and such mighty gifts in heaven or earth or sea tis undenied this only would i grant not as its grant is punishment not favour phaeton asks evil for a gift why foolish boy hang on my neck thus coaxing with thine arms whate'er thou wouldst thou shalt the stygian streams have heard me swear but make a wiser wish his admonition ceased but all advice was bootless still his resolution holds to guide the chariot still his bosom burns the sire his every effort vain at length forth to the lofty car vulcanian gift brings the rash youth of gold the axle shone the pole of gold by gold the rolling wheels were circled every spoke with silver bright upon the seat bright chrysolites displayed with various jewels shed a dazzling light from soul reflected all the high-souled youth admired and while he curious viewed each part behold aurora from the purple east wide throws the ruddy portals and displays the halls with roses strewn the starry host fly driven by lucifer himself the last to quit his heavenly station soul beheld the earth and sky grow red and luna's horns blunt and prepared to vanish straight he bade the flying hours to yoke the steeds his words the nimble goddesses obey and lead the steeds fire breathing from their lofty stalls ambrosia fed and fixed the sounding reins then with a sacred ointment phoebus smeared the face of phaeton unscorched to bear the fervid blaze and on his head a crown of rays he fixed his smothered sighs within his anxious breast sad presages of woe suppressing thus he spoke if now my words though late thou heedest spare o oh boy the lash but tightly grasp the reins unbid they run they fly to check their flight thy labour asks not through the five bright zones thy journey lies obliquely winds the path with spacious curve three girdles only touching leaving far the pole antarctic and the northern bear be this thy track there plain thou mayst discern the marks my wheels have made since heaven and earth an equal portion of my influence claim press not the car too low nor mount aloft near topmost heaven there wouldst thou fire the roof celestial here the earth thou wouldst consume for safety keep the midst let thy right wheel approach the tortuous snake not nor thy left press near the altar hold the midmost course fortune the rest must rule may she assist thy undertaking for thy safety act better than thou but more delay denied lo whilst i speak the dewy night has touched the boundaries placed upon the hesperian shore i am called for darkness fled aurora shines 
Seize then the reins, or if thy mind relents, my counsel rather than my chariot take. Now, whilst thou canst, whilst on a solid base thou standest, ere thou yet unskilful mount'st the chariot evilly wished, give me to dart those rays on earth which thou mayst safely view. Agile the youth bounds from his sire, and stands proud in the chariot. Joyously he holds the entrusted reins, and from the seat glad thanks the unwilling parent gives. Meantime neighed loud in curling flames the winged steeds of Sol. Piraeus, Ethon, Phlegon, Eus swift, and with impatient hooves the barrier beat, which Tethys, ignorant of her grandson's fate, drove back, and open laid the range of heaven. Swiftly they hasten, swiftly fly their heels, through the thin air and through opposing clouds. Poised by their wings the eastern gales they pass, which started with them, but their burthen light, small felt the pressure on the chariot seat, not what the steeds of Sol had felt before. A ship's unpoised reel tottering through the waves, light and unsteady, rambling o'er the main. So bounds the car, void of its customed weight, high tossed as though unfilled. This quick perceived, fierce rush the four yoked steeds, and quit the path beaten before, and tread a road unknown. Trembling the youth nor knows to pull the reins which side, nor knowing would the steeds obey. Then first the frozen Tryonese from Sol felt warm, and tried, but tried in vain, to dip beneath the sea. The frozen polar snake, sluggish with cold and indolently mild, warmed and dire fierceness gathered from the flames. Thou too, Boötes, fledst away disturbed, though slow thy flight, retarded by thy teams, and now the luckless fate in his eyes cast on the earth remote, far distant spread beneath the lofty sky. Pale grew his face with sudden terror, trembled his weak knees, or come with light his eyes in darkness sunk. Glad were he now his father's steeds untouched, grieved that his race he knows, grieved his request was undenied. Glad were he now if called the son of Merops, even as Boreas sweeps furious the vessel when the pilot leaves the helm to heaven and puts his trust in prayers, so was he hurried. What remains to do? Vast space of heaven behind him lies, much more he forward views. Each distance in his mind compared he measures. Now he forward bends to view the west, forbidden him to reach. Now to the east he backward turns his eyes. With terror stunned his trembling hands refuse to hold the reins with vigour. Yet he holds. The courser's names affrighted he forgets. Trembling he views the various monsters spread through every part above, and figures huge of beasts ferocious. Heaven a spot contains where Scorpio bends in two wide bows his arms, his tail and doubly stretching claws, the space encompassing of two celestial signs. Soon as the youth the monstrous beast beheld, black poison sweating, and with crooked sting threatening fierce wounds, he nerveless dropped the reins, pale dread o'ercame him. Quick the steeds perceived the loose thongs playing on their backs, and rushed wide from the path unchecked. Through regions strange, now here, now there impetuous, Unrestrained, amidst the loftiest stars, they dash and drag the car through pathless places. Upward now they labour. Headlong now they down descend, nearing the earth. With wonder Luna sees her brother's courses run beneath her own, and sees the burnt clouds smoking. Lofty points of earth feel first to the flames and fissures wide, departing moisture prove. The forage green whitens, trees crackle with their burning leaves, and ripe corn adds its fuel to the blaze. Why mourn we trifles? Mighty cities fall. Their walls protect them not. Their dwellers sink to ashes with them. Woods on mountains flame. Athos, Cilician Taurus, Tmolus burn. Oete and Ide, her pleasant fountains dry. With virgin Helicon and Hemus high, Iagrius since. Now with redoubled flames, fierce Etna blazes. Eryx, Othrys too. Synthus and famed Parnassus's double top. And Rhodope, at length of snow deprived. Dindima, Mimus, and the sacred hill Cithaeron named, and lofty Mycale. Nor aid their snows the Scythians, Ossa burns, Pindus, and Caucasus, and loftier still the huge Olympus, with the towering Alps, and cloud-capped Apennines. Now the youth beholds earth flaming fierce from every part. The heat o'erpowers him. Fiery air he breathes as from a furnace, and the car he rides glows with the flame beneath him sore annoyed on every side by cinders and by smoke hot curling round him whither now he drives or where he is he knows not in a cloud of pitchy night involved swept as the steeds swift flying will the ethiopians then tis said their sable tincture first received their purple blood the glowing heat called forth to tinge their skins 
then dried the scorching fire from arid libya all her fertile streams now with dishevelled locks the nymphs bewailed their fountains and their lakes boeotia mourns the loss of dirce argos or mimone corinth laments pyrenee nor yet safe were rivers bounded by far distant shores Tanaeus's midmost waves fume to the sky and ancient peneus smokes his men are swift caicus teuthrantian and the flood of phosus erymanthus xanthus too doomed to be fired again lycormus brown meander's sportive oft recircling waves mygdonian melus and the spartan flood eurotus with euphrates burn and burn orontes and the rapid thermodon ganges and phasus and the easter swift alpheus boils the banks of spercius burn and tagus's golden sands the flames dissolve stream-loving swans whose song melodious rung through meonian regions feel the heat caestus streams amid in terror nile fled to the farthest earth and sunk his head yet undiscovered void the sevenfold stream his mouth seven dry and dusty veils disclosed now hebrus dries and strimon thracian floods and streams hesperian rhine and rhone and po and tiber destined all the world to rule asunder split the globe and through the chinks darted the light to hell the novel blaze pluto and proserpine with terror viewed the ocean shrinks a dry and scorching plain where late was sea appears hills lift their heads late by the deep waves hid and countless seem the scattered cyclades deep crouched the fish the crooked dolphins dare not leap aloft as customed in the air with breasts upturned the gasping sea calves float upon the waves nereus with doris and her daughter nymphs deep plunged to seek their low but tepid caves thrice neptune ventured to upraise his arms grim frowning thrice the flames too fierce he found and shrunk beneath the waters earth at length by streams and founts encircled for her womb trembling they sought for refuge raised on high her face omniferous dry and parched with heat her burning forehead shaded with her hand shook all with tremor huge then shrank for shade beneath and gasping thus to heaven she plained almighty lord if such thy sovereign will and i deserve it why thy lightnings hold thus idle if by fire to perish doomed be it by thine an honourable fate scarce can my lips now utter forth my pains volumes of smoke oppressed her see my hair singed with the flames behold my face my eyes scorched with hot embers is no better boon due for the fruits i furnish such reward suits it my fertile crops or cruel wounds of harrow rake and plough which through the year and forced i suffer for the herds i bring green herbs and grass bland elements ripe fruit for man and incense for ye mighty gods faulty is this but grant thy wrath deserved how do the waves thy brother's realm offend why does the main to him by lot decreed shrink and retreat from heaven thy brother's weal say it concerns thee not nor my distress care for thy own paternal heaven may move thine eyes cast round black smoke from either pole mounts soon the greedy flames your halls will seize lo atlas labours scarcely he sustains the burning load if earth and ocean flame and heaven too perish all to chaos turned confounded we shall sink snatch from the flames what yet if aught remains and nature save no more could earth for now thick vapours rose her speech obstructing down she shrunk her head and sheltered midst the cool tartarian shades now jove the gods all witness to the fact convened even sol the donor of the car that but for him the world in ruins soon would lie the loftiest height of heaven he gains whence clouds he wont upon the widespread earth to shower from whence his thunders loud he hurled and quivering lightnings flung but now nor clouds nor showers to rain on earth the sovereign had he thunders from his right ear poised the bolt hurls on the charioteer life and the car fate and quits at once his fatal fires by fires more fierce extinguished startled prance the steeds confounded free their fiery necks from the torn reins here lie the traces broke there the strong axle severed from the seat spokes of the shattered wheels are here displayed and scattered far and wide the car's remains hurled headlong falls the youth his golden locks flame as he tumbles swept through empty air a lengthened track he forms so seems a star in night serene but only seems to shoot far from paternal home the mighty po received his burning corpse and quenched the flames due rites the nymphs hesperian gave the limbs from the forked lightning flaming 
on his tomb this epitaph they graved here phaeton entombed rests the charioteer so bold of phoebus's car which though he failed to rule he perished greatly daring grieved his sire veiled his sad face and were tradition true one day saw not the sun the embers blazed sufficient light thus may misfortune aid when Clymene, with all that sorrow could to ease her woes give utterance loud had wailed in wild lament all spark of reason fled her bosom tearing through the world she roamed and now his limbs inanimate she sought then for his whitened bones his bones she found on banks far distant from his home inhumed prone on his tomb her form she flung and poured her tears in floods upon the graven lines and with her bosom bared the cold stone warmed her sisters love their fruitless offerings bring their griefs and briny droppings cruel tear their beauteous bosoms while they loudly call phaeton deaf to all their mournful cries stretched on his tomb by night by day they called till luna's circle four times filled was seen their blows still given as customed use had made their forms of grief as nature sudden plained fair phaethusa eldest of the three of stiffened feet as on the tomb she strove to cast her body prone napatier bright rushing in hope to aid a shooting root abruptly held with lifted hands the third her locks to tear attempted but green leaves tore off instead now this laments her legs bound with thin bark that mourns to see her arms shoot in long branches while they wander thus the increasing bark their bodies upward veils their breasts their arms and hands with gradual growth their mouths alone remain which loudly call their mother what a mother could she did what could she do save here and there to fly where blind affection dragged her and while yet twas given to join join with them mouth to mouth nor this contents she strives to tear the rind their limbs enwrapping and the tender boughs pluck from their hands but from the rendered spot the sanguine drops flow swift each suffering nymph cries spare me mother spare your wounded child i suffer in the tree farewell farewell for as they spoke the rind their mouths enclosed from these new branches tears were dropped and shaped by solar heat bright amber straight composed dropped in the lucid stream the prize was borne to latium and its gayest nymphs adorned this wondrous change thenelian sickness saw to thee o phaeton by kindred joined but by affection closer he his realms for all liguria's large and populous towns he reigned had then relinquished with his plaints the po's wide stream was filled and filled the banks with his lamentings even the woods whose shade the sister poplars thickened soon he feels his utterance shrill and weak his streaming locks soft snowy plumes displace high from his chest his lengthened neck extends a filmy web unites his ruddy toes his sides are clothed with quills and feathers where his mouth was seen expanded now a blunted beak obtains and sickness stands a bird but bird unknown in days of yore mistrustful still of jove his heaven he shuns as mindful of the flames from thence unjustly hurled wide lakes and ponds he seeks to habit now indignant shuns what favours fire and joys in purling streams meantime was phoebus dull his blaze obscured as when eclipsed his orb his rays he hates himself and even the day to grief his soul he gives and anger to his grief he joins depriving earth of all its wonted light troubled my lot has been he cried since first was published my existence urged my toil endless still unremitted still unpraised now let who will my furious chariot drive flammiferous if every god shall shrink inadequate let jove the task attempt then while my reins he tries at least those flames which cause parental grief must peaceful rest then when the fiery flaming courses strain his nervous arms no more he'll judge the youth of death deserving who could less control soul grieving thus the deities surround and suppliant beg that earth may mourn no more by darkness whelmed even jove concession gave and why his fiery bolts were launched explained but threats and prayers majestically mixed the steeds with terror trembling phoebus seized wild from their late affright and reined their jaws furious he wields his goad and lash and fierce he storms and their impetuous fury blames at every blow as murderers of his son high heaven's huge walls the mighty sire explores 
with eye close searching lest a weakening flaw might hurl some part to ruin all he found firm in its pristine strength then glanced his eye around the earth and toils of man below above all terrestrial lands arcadia felt his own arcadia his preserving care her fountains he restores her streams not yet to murmur daring to her fields he gives seed corn and foliage to her spreading boughs and her scorched forest bids again look green through here as oft he journeyed and returned a virgin of nanacrony he spied and instant inward fire the god consumed no nymph was she whose skill the wool prepared nor combed with art her tresses seemed full plain her vest a button held a fillet white careless her hair confined now poised her hand a javelin light and now a bow she bore in diane's train she ran nor nymph more dear to her the mountain mainalus e'er trod but brief the reign of favour soul had now beyond mid heaven attained calistho sought a grove where felling axe had never rung here was her quiver from her shoulder thrown her slender bow unstrung and on the ground with soft grass clad she rested neath her neck was placed the painted quiver jove the maid wearied beheld and from her wonted troop far distant surely now my wife he cries this theft can ne'er discover should she know what is her rage with such a prize compared then diane's face and form the god concealed loud calling where o virgin hast thou strayed what hills my comrade hast thou crossed in chase light springing from the turf the nymph replied hail goddess greater if with me the palm than jove himself though jove himself should hear the feigned diana smiled and joyed to hear him to himself preferred then pressed her lips with kisses such as virgins never give to virgins her prepared to tell the woods where late she hunted with a warm embrace he hindered and his crime the god disclosed hard strove the nymph and what could female more o juno hadst thou seen her less thy ire long she resists but what can nymph attain or any mortal when to jove opposed victor the god ascends the ethereal court the groves and forests conscious of the deed callisto hates so swift she flies the spot her quiver and her darts and slender bow suspended on the tree through eager haste were nigh forgotten lo diana comes by clustering nymphs attended o'er the hills of lofty minalis from slaughtered beasts proudly triumphant she callisto sees and calls her as the goddess calls she flies fearing another jove disguised to meet but when the attendant virgin troop appeared fraud she no more suspected but the train joined fearless hard the countenance to form and not betray a perpetrated crime scarce from the ground she dared her looks to raise nor with her wonted ardour pressed before first of the throng close to diana's side silent she moves her blushes prove a wound her modesty had felt e'en diane might but that a virgin all the truth have known by numerous proofs and strong nay fame reports her sister nymphs had long her shame perceived nine times had luna now her orb renewed when diane from the chase retreating faint by phoebus's rays had gained a forest cool where flowed a limpid stream with murmuring noise the shining sand upturning much the spot the goddess tempted and her feet she dipped light in the waves as to the nymphs she cried hence far each prying eye we'll dare unrobe and lave beneath the stream callistho blushed quick while the other nymphs their bodies bare protracting she undresses from her limbs suspicious they the garments rend and view her body naked and her fault is plain to her confused whose trembling hands essayed her shame to hide diana spoke hence fly far hence nor more these sacred streams pollute than drove her instant from her spotless train long time the mighty thunderer's queen had known callisto's state but curbed her furious ire till ripe occasion suited longer now delay were needless now the nymph produced arcas whom juno more enraged beheld with savage mind and furious look she eyed the boy and spoke adulteress this alone was wanting fruitful harlot hast thou proved must by this birth my wrongs in public glare and what dishonour i from jove receive be palpable to sight expect not thou impunity to find thy form i'll change to thee so pleasing and so dear to jove she said and on the flowing tresses seized which o'er her forehead streamed and prostrate dragged the nymph to earth she raised her suppliant hands with black hairs covered rough her arms appeared bent were her hands and with her lengthened nails to claws transformed 
pressed on the ground as feet her mouth so beauteous late of jove admired yawned wide deformity and lest soft prayers and flowing words might pity move no power to speak she left now through her hoarse throat sounds an angry threatening voice that fear instills a bear becoming though her sense the same her sufferings proving by her constant groans lifting to heaven such hands as lift she could jove she ungrateful found but jove to call ungrateful strove in vain alas how oft in woods and solitudes to sleep afraid she roamed around the house and fertile fields of late her own alas how oft thence driven by yelping hounds o'er craggy steeps she fled thou dreadst the hunters though an huntress thou oft was her form forgotten and in fear from beasts she crouched concealed the shaggy bear shuddered to see the bears upon the hills and at the wolves she trembled though with wolves her sire like aeon howled now arcas comes arcas her son unconscious of his race near fifteen sons the youth had seen revolved and while the game he chases while he seeks thickets best suited for his sports and round the erymanthian woods his toils he sets he meets his mother at his sight she stayed the well-known object viewing arcas fled trembling unconscious why those eyes were fixed on him immovably his spear prepared to pierce his mother's breast as near she draws the youth pretends but jove the deed prevents both bears away and stays the matricide swept through the void of heaven by rapid whirl they're born and neighbouring constellations made loud juno raged to see the harlot shine amid the stars and neath the deep descends to hoary tethers and her ancient spouse where reverence oft the host of heaven had shown and thus to them who anxious seek the cause why there she journeys wish ye then to know why i the queen of heaven my regal seat now leave another fills my lofty throne nor false i speak for when grey night shall spread o'er all new constellations shall you see me irking on the utmost bounds of heaven where the last shortened zone the axis binds now surely none to insult shall rashly dare the thunderous spouse but tremble at her frown for she who most offends is honoured most much has my power performed fast is my sway her human form i changed and lo she shines a goddess thus the guilty feel my ire thus potent i why not her form restore and change that beastly shape as io once in argolis the same indulgence felt why drives he not his consort from his bed callisto placing there for sire-in-law the wolf like aeon choosing if to you your foster daughter's insults aught import forbid these stars to touch the blue profound repel those constellations placed in heaven mead of adultery lest the harlot dip in your pure waves the gods their promise gave and through the liquid air saturnia flies borne in her chariot by her peacocks bright their coats gay studded from fallen argus's eyes less beauteous was the change loquacious crow thy plumage suffered snowy white to black with silvery brightness once his feathers shone unspotted doves outvying nor to those preserving birds the capital whose voice so watchful saved nor to the stream fond swans inferior seemed his covering but his tongue his babbling tongue his ruin wrought and changed his hue from splendid white to gloomy black end of section three section four of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the second book of the metamorphoses of ovid part two no fairer maid all thessaly contained than young coronis to the delphic god most dear while chaste or while her fault unknown but corvus phoebus's watchman spied the deed adulterous and inexorably bent to tell the secret crime his flight directs to seek his master him the door pursues on plumes quick waving curious all to learn his errand heard she cries thy anxious task a journey vain pursue not mark my words learn what i have been see what now i am and hear from whence my change a fault you'll find too much fidelity which wrought my woe time was when pallas erictonius took offspring created motherless and close in basket twined with attic twigs concealed the charge to keep three sister maids she chose daughters of cecrops double formed but close concealed what lodged within and strict forbade all prying that her secret safe might rest on a thick elm behind light leaves concealed i marked their actions 
to their sacred charge hold faithful pandrosus and herse they aglauros calls her sisters cowards weak the twistings with bold hand unloosening seize within an infant and a dragon stretched the deed i tell to pallas and from her my service this remuneration finds driven from her presence she my place supplies of favourite with the gloomy bird of night all other birds my fate severe may warn to seek not danger by officious tales pallas perhaps you think but lightly loved one whom she thus so suddenly disgraced but ask of pallas she though much enraged will yet my truth confirm a regal maid was i of facts to all well known i speak coroneus noble of the phocian lands as sire i claim me wealthy suitors sought contemn me not my beauty was my bane while careless on the sandy shore i roamed with gentle paces wont the ocean's god saw me and loved persuasive words in vain long trying force prepared and me pursued i fled the firm shore left and tired my limbs vainly upon the light soft sinking sand there to assist me men and gods i called deaf to the sound was every mortal ear but by a virgin's cries a virgin moved assistance gave up to the skies my arms i stretched and black my arms began to grow with waving pinions from my shoulders back my robes i strove to fling my robes were plumes deep in my skin the quills were fixed i tried on my bare bosom with my hands to beat nor hands nor naked bosom now were found i ran the sand no longer now retained my feet but lightly o'er the ground i skimmed and soon on pinions through the air was borne and pallas's faultless favourite i became what now availed to me my pure deserts ictimony whose horrid crime deserved her transformation to my place succeeds the deed so wide through spacious lesbos known ere this has reached thee our ictimony her father's bed defiled a bird became conscious of guilt she shuns the sight of man flies from the day and in nocturnal shades conceals her shame by every bird assailed and exiled from the skies the crow enraged to her still chattering cried may each delay thy babbling causes prove to thee a curse i scorn thy foolish presages and flew his journey urging when his master found he told him where coronas he had seen clasped by a young thessalian down he dropped his laurel garland when the crime he heard of her he loved his harp away he flung his countenance fell and pale his visage grew now with fierce rage his swelling bosom fires his wonted arms he seizes draws his bow bent to the horns and through that breast so oft embraced the inevitable weapon drove deep groaned the wounded nymph and tearing out the arrow from her breast a purple flood gushed o'er her shining limbs she sighing cried this fate o phoebus i deservedly meet were but thy infant born two now in one thy dart has slain she spoke her vital blood fast flowed and stayed her voice a deadly chill seized all her members now of life bereft too late alas her sorrowing lover mourns his cruel vengeance and himself he hates too credulous listening and too soon inflamed the bird he hates who first betrayed the deed and caused him first to grieve his bow he hates his bowstring arm and with his arm the dart shot vengeful fond he clasps her fallen form and strives by skill by skill too late applied to conquer fate his healing arts he tries all unavailing fruitless he beholds his each attempt and sees the pile prepared and final flames her limbs about to burn then from his deepest bosom burst his groans for tears on cheeks celestial ne'er are seen such groans are uttered when the heifer sees the weighty mallet from the right ear poised crush down the forehead of her suckling calf and now his useless odours in her breast he poured embraced her to her last rites gave solemnization due the greedy fires his offspring were not suffered to consume snatched from the curling flames and from the womb of his dead mother he the infant bore to double-bodied chiron's secret cave but bad the self-applauding crow filled big with hopes of favour for his faithful tale with snowy plumaged birds no more to join meantime while chiron human half half beast proud of his deity descended charge joyed in the honour with the task bestowed behold her shoulders with her golden locks shaded the daughter of the centaur comes whom fair Coriclo on a river's brink swift rolling bore and then sosiroe named she not content her father's arts to know the hidden secrets of the fates disclosed now was her soul with fate foretelling sounds filled and within her fiercely raged the god 
the infant viewing grow she said apace health bearer through the world to thee shall oft expiring mortals owe returning life to thee tis given to render souls again back to their bodies once thou'lt dare the deed the angry gods forbidding flames thy power further preventing and a bloodless corpse heaven-born thou liest but what thy body formed a god becomes resuscitated twice thou too my dearest and immortal sire to ages never-ending born to live shalt wish for death in vain when writhing sad from the dire serpent's venom in thy limbs by wounds instilled the pitying gods will change thy destined fate and let immortal die the triple sisters shall thy thread divide more yet untold remains deep from her chest the sighs burst forth and starting tears stream down laving her cheeks while thus the maid pursues the fates prevent me and forbid to tell what more i would all power to speak deny those arts alas heaven's anger which have drawn what were they would i ne'er the future knew now seems my human shape to leave me now the verdant grass a pleasing food appears now am i urged along the plain to bound changed to a mare unto my sire allied in form but why soul changed my father bears a two-formed body wailing thus her words confused and indistinct at length are heard next sounds are uttered partly human more a mare's resembling then she neighs aloud treading with altered arms the ground fast joined her fingers now become a slender hoof her toes connecting with continuous horn her head enlarges and her neck expands her spreading garment floats a beauteous tail her scattered tresses o'er her shoulders flung form a thick mane to clothe her spacious neck her voice is altered with her altered shape and change of name the wondrous deed attends deep chiron mourned o phoebus and thy aid in vain invoked for bootless was thy power jove's mandate to resist nor if thou couldst then wast thou nigh to help in ellis far and fields messenian then was thy abode then was the time when shepherd like a robe of skins enwrapped thee when thy left hand bore a silvan staff thy right a pipe retained of seven unequal reeds while love engaged thy thoughts and dulcet music soothed thy cares tis said thy herds without their herdsmen strayed far to the pylian meadows these the son of atlantean maia espied and slyly driven away within the woods the cattle artful hid none saw the deed save one old hoary swain well known around and battus named whose post it was to guard the groves the grassy meads and high-bred mares of wealthy nelius him the robber feared drew him aside and coaxing thus addressed where thou art good friend if here perchance some one should seek and herd say that thou here no herd hast seen thou shalt not lack reward take this bright heifer and the cow he gave the bribe received the shepherd thus replies friend thou art safe that stone shall sooner speak and tell thy deed than i and showed the stone the son of jove departs or seems to go but soon with altered form and voice returns here countryman he cries hast thou and heard this way observed to pass no secret keep to aid the theft and heifer with a bull awaits thy information doubly bribed the hoary rogue betrayed his former trust beneath those hills he said the herd you'll find beneath the hills they were loud laughed the god and cried thou treacherous villain to myself wouldst thou betray me wouldst thou to myself my deeds betray and to a flinty stone his perjured breast he changed which still retains the name of touchstone on the harmless rock his infamous demerits firmly fixed hermes from hence on waving wings upborne darted and in his flight beneath him saw the attic pastures the much favoured land of pallas and lyceum's cultured groves it chanced that day as wont the virgins chaste bore on their heads in canisters festooned their offerings pure to pallas's sacred fane returning thence the winged god espied the troop and straight his onward flight restrained wheeling in circles round as sails the kite swiftest of birds when entrails seen from far by holy augurs thick beset he fears a near approach but circling steers his flight on beating wings around his hopes and round so above the athenian towers the light-plumed god swept round in circles on the self-same air as phosphor far outshines the starry host as silver cynthia phosphor bright outshines so much did her say all the nymphs excel the bright procession's ornament the pride of all the accompanying nymphs her beauteous mien staggered jove's son who hovering in the air fierce burns with love 
the balearic sling thus shoots a ball quick through the air it flies warms in its flight and feels beneath the clouds flames hereto known not altered now his route the skies he leaves and holds a different flight nor veils his figure such reliance gave his beauteous form and beauteous though that form yet careful did the god his looks adorn he smooths his tresses and his robe adjusts to hang in graceful folds and fair display the golden fringe his round and slender wand of sleep procuring sleep repelling power his right hand bears and on his comely feet his plumed sandals shine within the house three separate chambers were secluded formed with tortoise and with ivory rich adorned thou pandrosus within the right reposed and on the left hand thou aglarus slept fair herse in the middle aglarus first the god's approach descried and daring asked who he and what he sought to whom the god him you behold who through the air conveys his sire's commands almighty jove that sire nor will i feign my errand so mayst thou true to thy sister prove and soon be called my offspring's aunt tis herse draws me here help then a lover in his warm pursuit aglarus bends on mercury those eyes which yellow-haired minerva's secret saw and ponderous sums for her assistance claims driving the god meantime without the gates with angry glare the warlike goddess viewed the mercenary nymph and angry sighs which shook her bosom heaved the aegis shook on that strong bosom fixed now calls to mind minerva how with hands profane the maid her strict behests despising daring pride to know her secrets and the seed beheld of vulcan child without a mother formed now to her sister and the god unkind rich with the gold her avarice had claimed to envy's gloomy cell where clots of gore the floor defiled enraged minerva flew a darkened veil deep sunk the cavern held where vivid sun ne'er shone nor freshening breeze health wafted torpid melancholy ruled and sluggish cold and cheering light unknown damp darkness ever gloomed the goddess here in conflict dreaded came but at the doors her footsteps stayed for entrance fate forbade the gates she strikes struck by her spear the gates wide open fly and dark within disclose on vipers gorging her accustomed feast the envious fiend back from the hideous sight recoils the goddess and averts her eyes slow rising from the ground her half-chewed food she quits advancing indolently forth the maid in warlike brightness clad she saw in form divine and heavy sighs burst forth deep from her bosom's black recess pale gloom dwells on her forehead lean her fleshless form asconce her eyes encrusted black her teeth greened deep with gall her breasts her hideous tongue with poisons lurid laughter knows her not save woes and pangs unmerited she sees sleep flies her couch by cares unceasing wrung at men's success she sickens pining sad but stung herself while others feel her sting her torture closely grasps her much the maid the sight abhors and thus in brief she speaks deep in the breast of cecrop's daughter fix thy venomed sting aglarus is the nymph more needs not speaking so minerva fled upbounding earth she with her spear repelled glancing a squint the fury saw her rise and inly groaned that she success should gain her staff with prickly thorns enwreathed she takes and forth she sallies wrapped in gloomy clouds where'er she flies she blasts the flowery fields consumes the herbage and the harvest blights her breath pestiferous felt the cities round houses and habitants where'er she flew at length the towers of athens she beheld with arts and riches flourishing and blessed with holy peace scarce could she tears withhold no tearful eye throughout the place to see straight to the room of cecrop's daughter now her route she urges and her task performs her rusty hand upon the maiden's breast she plants and with sharp thorns that bosom fills breathes noxious poison through her frame imbues with venom black her heart and all her limbs lest from her eyes escaped the maddening scene should cease to vex her full in view she placed her sister and her sister's nuptial rites and hermes beauteous in the bridal pomp in beauty all and splendour all increased mad with the imaged sight the maid is gnawn with secret pangs deep groans the lengthened night and deep the morning hears she wastes away silently wretched lingeringly slow as soul's faint rays the summer ice dissolves so burns she to behold the envied lot of herse not with furious flames as weeds blaze not when damp but with slow heat consume 
afterward she wished to die and oft the deed to hinder thinks to tell her rigid sire her sister's fault at length her seat she takes across the threshold and the approaching god repulsed and to his blandishments and words beseeching fair and soft alluring prayers she cried desist from hence i ne'er will move till thou art driven away swift hermes said keep firmly that resolve and with his wand the sculptured portals touching wide they flew but when her limbs to raise the virgin strove a weighty numbness o'er the members crept which bend in sitting and their movement stayed strenuous she strives to raise her form erect but stiffened feels her knees chill coldness spreads through all her toes and fled the purple stream her veins turn pallid cruel cancer thus disease incurable spreads far and wide sound members adding to the parts diseased so gradual o'er her breast the chilling frost crept deadly and the gates of life shut close complaints she tried not had she tried her voice had found no passage for the stone had seized her throat her mouth to marble all was changed she sat a pallid statue all the stone her envy tainted with a livid hue his vengeance when jove's son complete had seen due to her avarice and her envious soul he left minerva's land and up the sky on wafting pinions mounted there his sire him from the assembly drew nor yet disclosed the object of his love son quickly haste thou faithful messenger of my commands urge rapid thy descending flight and seek the realm whose northern bounds thy mother star o'erlooks the land by native sidon called there wilt thou pasturing find the royal herd neath hills not distant from the sea turn down this herd to meadows bordering on the beach he said the cattle toward the seashore move where sported with her tyrian maids as wont the monarch's daughter ill majestic state and love agree nor long combined remain the sire and ruler of the gods resigns his weighty sceptre he whose right hand bears the three forked fires whose nod creation shakes assumes a bull's appearance with the herd mingles and strolling lets the tender shrubs brush his fair sides of snowy white his skin such snow as rugged feet has never soiled nor southern showers dissolved his brawny neck strong from his shoulders stands beneath extends the dewlap pendulous smaller his horns but smooth as polished by the workman's hand pellucid as the brightest gems they shine no threatenings wear his brow no fire his eyes flame fierce but all his countenance peace proclaims him much a Gino's royal maid admired his form so beauteous and his look so mild yet peaceful as he seemed she feared at first a close approach but nearer soon she drew and to his shining mouth the flowery food presented joyed the impatient lover stands her fingers kissing and with sore restraint defers his looked-for pleasures sportive now he wantons frisking in the grass now rolls his snowy sides upon the yellow sand her apprehensions chased by slow degrees the virgin's fingers playful stroke his breast then bind with wreaths his horns more daring now upon his back the royal maid ascends witless a god she presses from the fields his steps deceitful gradual turned he bends and seeks the shore then playful in the waves just dips his feet thence plunging deep he swims through midmost ocean with his ravished prize trembling the nymph beholds the lessening shore firm grasps one hand his horn upon his back secure the other resting to the wind her fluttering garments floating as she sails end of section four Section 5 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The Third Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 1. And now the god, his bestial form resigned, shone in his form celestial as he gained the Cretan shore. Meantime the theft unknown mourned her sad sire, and Cadmus sent to seek the ravished maid stern threatening as he went perpetual exile if his searching failed parental love and cruelty combined all earth explored in vain for who shall find the amorous thefts of jove the exile shuns his father's anger and paternal soil a suppliant bends before apollo's shrine to ask his aid what region he should choose to fix his habitation phoebus thus a cow whose neck the oak has never pressed strange to the crooked plough shall meet thy steps lone in the desert fields the way she leads choose thou and where upon the grass she rests erect thy walls 
Boeotia called the place. Scarce had the cave Castalian Cadmus left, when he and heifer, gently pacing, spied, untended, one whose neck no mark betrayed of galling service, closely treads the youth, slow moving in her footsteps, and adores in silence Phoebus, leader of his way. Now had he passed the Cephisidean stream and meads of Panope when stayed the beast. Her broad front lifted to the sky, reverse her lofty horns reclining, shook the air with lowings loud, back then her face she bent, and saw the comrades following close behind. Down low she couched and pressed the yielding grass, glad thanks to Phoebus Cadmus gave and kissed the foreign soil. The unknown hills and land saluted, then a sacrifice to Jove preparing, sent his followers to explore streams flowing from the living fountain clear. An ancient forest hallowed from the axe, not far there stood, in whose dark bosom gloomed a cavern. Twigs and branches thick inwove with rocky crags, a low arched entrance formed where pure and copious gushed transparent waves. Deep hid within a monstrous serpent lay, sacred to Mars, bright shone his crested head, his eyeballs glowed with fire, his body swelled, bloated with poison, o'er a threefold row of murderous teeth, three quivering tongues he shook. This grove the Tyrians with ill-fated feet now entered, and now in the waters threw with noisy dash their urns, uprears his head, the azure serpent from the cavern deep and breathes forth hisses dire. Their urns they drop, the blood forsakes their bodies, sudden fear chills their astonished limbs. He, writhing quick, forms scaly circles, spiral twisting round, bends in an arch immense to leap, and rears in the thin air erect, above half his height. All the wide grove o'erlooking, such his size could all be seen, than that vast snake no less whose huge bulk lies the arctic bears between. The Tyrians quick he seizes, some their arms vain grasping, flying some, and some through fear to fight or fly unable. These his jaws crash murderous, those his writhing tail surrounds, others his breath with poison loaded kills. Now loftiest Phoebus shortened shadows gave, when Cadmus, wondering much why still his friends tarried so long, their parting footsteps trace. His robe and hide torn from a lion's back, a dart and spear of shining steel his arms, with courage arms surpassing. Now the grove he enters and their breathless limbs beholds, their victor foe's huge bulk upon them stretched, licking with gory tongue their mournful wounds. My faithful friends, he cried, I will avenge your fate or perish with you. Straight a rock his right hand raised and with impetuous force hurled it right on. A city's lofty walls with all its towers to feel the blow had shook. Yet lay the beast unwounded, safely sheathed with scaly armour and his hardened hide. His skin alone the furious blow repelled. Not so that hardness mocks the javelin. Fixed firm in the bending of the pliant spine his weapon stood, and all the iron head deep in his entrails sunk. Mad with the pain, reverse he writhes his head, beholds the wound, champs the fixed dart. By many forceful tugs loosened at length, he tears the shaft away, but deep the steel within his bones remains. Now to his wonted fury fiercer flames this torture adding, big with poison swells his throat, and flowing round his venomed jaws white foam appears, deep harrowed with his scales loud sounds the earth, and vapours black breathed out his mouth infernal, taint with death the air. Now rolled in spires he forms an orb immense, now stretched at length he seems a monstrous beam, now rushing forward with impetuous force, as sweeps a torrent swelled by rain, his breast bears down the opposing forest. Cadmus back a step recedes, and on his lion's hide the shock sustains. Then with protended spear checks his approaching jaws. Furious he strives to wound the hardened steel. On the sharp point he grinds his teeth. Now from his poisonous mouth began the blood to flow, and sprinkling tinged the virid grass. But trivial still the hurt. For shrinking from the blow and twisting back his wounded neck, the stroke he still prevents deeper to pierce by yielding to its force. But pushing arduous on, Agena's son fixed in his throat the steel, and the sharp point forced through his neck, an oak opposed behind. The tree and neck the spear at once transfixed. Dragged by the monster's weight, low bends the tree, and groans and cracks as lashing blows his tail immense deals round. Now whilst the victor stands and wondering views the conquered serpent's size, sudden a voice is heard, from whence unknown, but plain the words he hears. Why viewst thou thus, Aegina's son, the foe by thee destroyed? 
thou one day like this serpent shalt be seen the ghast he stood the warm blood fled his cheeks his courage changed to terror freezing fear raised his stiff locks erect lo pallas comes pallas the known protectress of the brave smooth sliding from the higher clouds she comes bids him remove the soil and place beneath the serpent's fangs a future offspring's pledge the prince obeys and as with crooked share the ground he opens in the furrows throws the teeth directed thence beyond belief the clods of earth at once began to move then in the furrows glittered first the points of spears anon fair painted crests arose above bright helmets nodding shoulders next and breasts and arms with javelins loaded came thickening the harvest grew of shielded men thus shows the glad theatric curtain raised the painted figures faces first appear gradual displayed and more by slow degrees at length the whole stand forth their feet all fixed firm on the lower margin wondering he his new-made foe beheld and grasped his arms but one whom earth had just produced exclaimed arm not nor meddle in our civil broils he said an earth-born brother hand to hand with sword keen-edged attacking but from far a javelin hurled dispatched him short the boast of him who sent it his death wound infixed he breathes the air out he so late received so raged the rest and in the furious war the new-made brethren fall by mutual wounds and on their blood-stained mother dash the youths to short existence born their damp cold breasts five only stand unhurt echion one who threw by pallas prompted down his arms and peace proposed his brethren took his pledge these join the tyrian prince and social aid his efforts when the pointed walls he builds obedient to the delphic god's commands the theban walls now raised thou cadmus seemed blessed in thy exile mars and venus gave their daughter to thy wife this spouse so famed thee daughters brought and sons a numerous tribe and grandsons pledges dear of nuptial joys already risen to manhood but too true that man should still his final day expect nor blessed be deemed till flames his funeral pyre thy grandson's fate o cadmus first with grief thy bosom wrung amid thy prosperous state the alien horns which nodded o'er his brow and ye voracious hounds with blood full gorged your master's life stream yet by close research we find unlucky chance not vice his crime what sin in error lies the hills were drenched with blood of numerous slaughtered savage beasts and objects shortened shadows gave the sun exalted viewed each equidistant goal when the young theban hunter thus addressed his fellow sportsmen with a friendly call as wide they roved the savage lairs among our weapons comrades and our nets are moist with blood of spoil sufficient sport this day has given but when aurora next appears high on her saffron car and light restores then be our pleasing exercise resumed now phoebus distant far from west and east cracks the parched ground with heat desist from toil and fold your knotted snares his words obey his men and from their sportive labour cease near stood a vale where pointed cypress formed with gloomy pines a grateful shade and named gargaphie sacred to the girded maid its deep recess a shrubby cavern held by nature modelled but by nature art seemed equalled or excelled a native arch of pumice light and tophus dry was formed and from the right a stream transparent flowed of trivial size which spread a pool below with grassy margin circled diane here the woodland goddess wearied with the chase had oft rejoiced to bathe her virgin limbs as wont she comes her quiver and her dart and unstrung bow her armour-bearing nymph in charge receives disrobed another's arms sustain her vest two from her feet unloose her sandals crocale ismenian nymph than others more expert her tresses binds loose o'er her shoulders floating in a knot her own wild flowing still five more the streams in huge urns lifting hiale and nife fiale ranis secas lave her limbs here while the goddess in the limpid wave washes as customed lo actaeon comes his sportive toil till morning dawn deferred and roving through the vale with random steps by hapless fate conducted he arrives close to the sacred grove within the grot stream pouring when he stepped the naked nymphs then first by man beheld their bosoms beat filled the deep grove with outcries loud and round diana crowded screening as they could her limbs with theirs 
yet high above them towered the goddess and her neck their heads o'erlooked as blushed the clouds by phoebus's adverse rays deep tinged or as aurora in the morn so blushed the virgin goddess seen unrobed side where she stood though closely hemmed around by clustering nymphs and backward bent her face then anxious praying she could reach her darts in vain she seized the waters which she could and dashed them o'er his features as his locks the vengeful drops besprinkled thus in rage she cried now tell thou hast diana seen disrobed go tell it if thou canst no more with threatening stormed but on his sprinkled head the antlers of the long-lived stag are placed his neck is lengthened with a sharpened point his upright ears are formed to feet his hands to long and slender legs his arms are changed and round his body clings a dappled coat fear in his bosom she instills the youth the bold actaean flies and wondering feels his bounding feet so rapid in the race but soon the waters showed his branching horns and ah unhappy me he strove to cry his voice he found not sighs and sobs were all and tears fast streaming down his altered face still human sense remains where shall he turn his royal palace seek or in the woods secluded hide to tarry fear forbids and shame prevents returning while he doubts his hounds espy him quick-nosed tracer first and blackfoot give the signal by their yell tracer of crete and blackfoot spartan bred swifter than air the noisy pack rush on arcadian quicksight glutton ranger stout strong killbuck whirlwind furious hunter fierce flyer swift-footed and quick-scented snap ringwood late wounded by a furious bear and forester by savage wolf begot flock tending shepherdess with ravener fierce and her two whelps and sicyonian catch the thin-flanked greyhound racer yelper patch tiger robust milk-white with snowy coat and coal-black soot first in the race fleet storm courageous spartan swift and rapid wolf joined with his cyprian brother snatch well marked with sable forehead on a coat of white black coat and thick-haired shag warrior and wild twins from madame laconian sprung their sire dictaean babbler with his noisy throat but all to name were endless urged by hope of prey they crowd down precipices rush o'er rocks and crags through rugged paths and ways unpassed before his hounds he flies where oft his hounds he had pursued poor wretch he flies his own domestics striving hard to call actaean am i villains know your lord words aid him not loud rings the air with yells howlings and barkings black hair first his teeth fixed in his back staunch tamer fastened next and rover seized his shoulder tardy these the rest far left behind but o'er the hills athwart the chase they shortened now the pack joined them their lord retaining joined their teeth their victim seizing now his body bleeds a wound continuous deep he utters groans not human yet unlike a dying deer and fills the well-known mountains with his plaint prone on his knees in suppliant form he bends and low beseeching waves his silent head as he would wave his hands his witless friends the savage pack with joyous outcries urge actaean anxious seeking echoing loud eager his name is absent at the name his head he turns his absence irks them sore as lazy loitering not the noble prey obtained beholding joyful could he be at distance now but hapless is too near glad would he see the furious dogs their fangs on other prey than his torn limbs in fix on every side they crowd their dying lord a well-seemed deer they rend their ravenous teeth deep tear his members with a thousand wounds diane's insatiate anger less despised the hapless hunter yielded forth his breath report flies dubious some the goddess blame for disproportioned vengeance others warm applaud the deed as worthy one so pure and reasons weighty either party urge jove's consort only silent she nor blames the action nor approves but inward joys a Gino's house should such misfortune feel the hatred nourished for the tyrian maid her brother's offspring visits now fresh cause of wrath succeeds enraged the goddess learns that semele embraced by mighty jove is pregnant straight broke loose her angry tongue and loud she stormed advantage much i gain by endless railing at unfaithful jove this harlot will i find and if with truth they potent juno style me she shall die destruction shall o'erwhelm her if beseems my hand the sparkling sceptre of the sky if queen i am to jove if sister wife his sister doubtless am i if no more 
Content, perchance, is simile to joy in pleasures briefly tasted. And my wrongs, though deep, not lasting. No, she must conceive foul aggravation of her shameless deed. Her swelling womb unblushing proves her crime. By Jove she longs to be a mother hailed, which scarcely I can boast. Such faith her pride in conscious beauty places. Trust me not, or she mistaken proves. As I am child of hoary Saturn, she shall sink o'erwhelmed by her own Jove and dip in Stygian waves. She said, and starting from her regal throne, wrapped in a dusky cloud, descended. O'er the threshold stepped of Semele, nor chased her darkening veil, till like an ancient dame she stood displayed. White hairs her temples strewed, deep furrows ploughed her skin, her bending limbs quivered beneath her weight, her tremulous voice exhausted age betrayed. She stood to view old Beroe, from Epidaurus come, the nurse of Semele. With tedious tales she garrulous amused, when in her turn listening the name of Jupiter she heard, she sighed, and said, May he be truly Jove, but age is still suspicious. Chastest beds have been by these pretended gods defiled. For if the deity supreme he be, why comes he thus disguised? If true his love, why prove it not? Urge thou an anxious wish to clasp him in his might. In such a sort as lofty Juno he embraces, round begirt with all the ensigns of his power. Thus Juno artful, Semele's desires apt moulded to her mind. From Jove she prays a nameless boon, the ready god consents. Choose what thou wilt, nor least denial dread. To prove my faith I call the Stygian streams to witness terror of the god of gods. Joyed at her fatal prayer's too large success, and by her lover's prompt compliance doomed to sure destruction. This, said she, I wish, when with me next you love's delights enjoy, appear as when Saturnia fills your arms. Fain would the god have stopped her mouth, too soon the hasty words found entrance to his ears. Deep mourned he, equal now the fates forbid, the wish retracted, or the oath absolved. Sorrowing he seeks the lofty heaven, his nod dark rolling clouds collects, here form black showers, and hurricanes, and flashing lightnings mixed, thunders, and his inevitable bolt. Anxious he strives with all his power to damp the fierceness of his flames, nor armed him now with those dread fires that to the earth dashed down the hundred-handed foe too powerful they he chose a milder thunder less of rage of fire and fury had the cyclops given the mass when forged a second rated bolt clad in mild glory thus the dome he seeks of semele her mortal frame too weak to bear the ethereal shock fierce scorched she sunk beneath the nuptial grant the imperfect babe snatched from his mother's smoking womb was sowed if faith the tale deserves within his thigh there to complete the period of his growth Eno, his aunt maternal, then received the boy, in private reared him, till the nymphs of Nyssa's mountains in their secret caves sheltered and fed with milk the trusted charge. While the rash promise caused on earth those deeds, and twice born Bacchus's cradle safe was hid, tis said that Jove with heavenly nectar flushed, all serious cares dismissed, with sportive jests at ease conversing he and Juno sat, when he, the thrilling ecstasies of love are surely strongest on the female side, she differs, and the question both agree, Tiresias, who each sex had proved, shall judge. Two mighty snakes he spied upon the grass, twisted in Venus's wreaths, and with his staff hard smote them. Instant altered was his sex, wondrous, he woman of a man became, seven winters so he lived. The eight again he spied the same, and cried, If such your power that whoso strikes you must their gender change, once more I'll try the spell. Straight as the blow the snakes received, his pristine form returned. Hence was he chosen in the strife jocose as umpire, and the words of Jove confirmed. Much, say they, Juno raged, more than beseemed the trivial cause or sentence justly given, and veiled the judge's eyes in endless night. But Jove omnipotent him gave to know, for fate forbids to cancel others' deeds, what future times conceal, a light divine, an honoured gift to mitigate his pain. Famed far and wide through all Boeotia's towns, unerring answers still the prophet gave, to all who sought him. Blue Liriope first proved his faith, and ne'er deceiving words. Her once suffices in his winding stream entwined, and forceful in his waves enjoyed. The beauteous nymph's full womb in time produced a babe, whose features even from birth inspired the attendant nymphs with love. Narcissus named. For him inquiring whether doomed to see the peaceful period of maturest age, 
the fate foretelling prophet thus replied yes if himself he never knows the words were long absurd esteemed but well the event their justice proved his strange unheard of death and love of object never loved before end of section five Section 6 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso, Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The Third Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 2. Now sixteen summers had Narcissus seen, a boy in beauty but in growth a man. And crowds of youths his friendship sought, and crowds of damsels sought his love. But fiercely pride swelled in his snowy bosom, and he spurned his friend's advances and the lovesick maids. A chattering nymph, resounding echo, saw the youth when in his toils the trembling deer he drove. The nymph who ne'er her words retained, nor dialogue commenced, but then she bore a body palpable, and not, as now, merely a voice. Yet garrulous, she then that voice nor other used. T'was all she could, the closing words of speakers to repeat. Juno had this ordained for oft the dame the frailer nymphs upon the hills had caught in trespass with her jove but echo sly with lengthened speech the goddess kept amused till all by flight were saved soon juno saw the trick the power of that delusive tongue she cried i'll lessen and make brief thy words nor stayed but straight her threatened vengeance took now she redoubles all she can the words which end another's speech reporting back but only what she hears through pathless woods as roves narcissus echo sees and burns steals in his footsteps following close but flames more fierce more near approaching sudden thus the sulphurous daubing o'er the torches spread snatches the approaching flame how oft she wished with bland and soothing words to hail the youth but nature harsh forbids nor grants to make the first commencement what she grants she takes and anxious waits to catch the wished-for sounds and speak responsive chance the youth had led far from his social troop and loud he cried who's he that hither comes attentive she replied oh hither come amazed he stood round searching whence the voice and louder still here come exclaimed and echo answered come to every part his eyes in vain are bent and why laments he dost thou me avoid again he hears her dost thou me avoid still he persists the alternate voice deceives and come approach together let us join impatient now he utters ardent she exclaims in joyful accents let us join her wish in person urging from the grove she springs and wide extends her arms to clasp his neck narcissus flies and flying calls desist hold off thy hands may sooner death me seize than thou enjoy me nought the maid re-echoes but enjoy me close concealed by him disdained amid the groves she hides her blushing forehead where the leaves bud thick and dwells in lonely caverns still her flame clings close around her heart and sharper pangs repulse occasions cares unceasing waste her wretched form gaunt famine shrivels up her skin and all the moistening juice which fed her body flies in air her voice and bones alone are left her voice unchanged her bones to craggy stones are hardened still in groves she hides secluded nor on hills appears heard frequent only heard and naught but sound thus slighted he the nymph nor her alone but numbers else who o'er the mountains roved or sported in the waves nor less his pride when more mature keen smarting from his scorn to heaven one raised her hands and ardent prayed ordain that he may love but love like me one ne'er to be enjoyed ramnusia grants to prayers so just the assenting nod there stood a mudless pool whose waters silvery bright the shepherds touched not nor the mountain goats nor lowing herds which birds and fierce wild beasts dabbling disturbed not nor a withered branch dropped from a tree or hanging round the brink fed by the moisture virid grass arose and trees impervious to the solar beam screened the cool surface wearied with the chase and faint with heat here laid narcissus down charmed with the place and tempted by the pool here as he seeks to quench his burning thirst he burns with other fires and while he drinks caught by the image of his beauteous face he loves the unbodied form a substance thinks the shadow loves enraptured loves himself fixes with eager gaze upon the sight as on a face in parian marble wrought stretched on the ground his own bright eyes he views twin stars his fingers such as bacchus grace his tresses like apollo's downy cheeks unbearded yet his neck as ivory white 
the roseate blooming fading into snow each tray admiring which the hapless nymphs in him admired unwitting youth himself he wants at once beloving and beloved himself desiring by himself desired burning with love while by himself he burns oft stooping were his fruitless kisses given oft were his arms outstretched to clasp the neck so plainly seen beneath the waters no himself he could not clasp whom he beholds he knows not but for whom he sees he burns the error that his eye deceives provokes his rage o foolish youth why vainly grasp a fleeting shadow what thou seek'st is not and what thou lovest thou now destroyest thou seest a semblance only a reflected shade naught of itself with thee it came with thee it stays and with thee if thou couldst would go not hunger's power has forced to drag him thence nor cares of sleep oppress him thrown along the shaded grass he bends insatiate eyes towards the fallacious beauty by those eyes he perishes now half upraised his arms outspread to all the groves around he cried ye woods whose darkened shades so oft have given convenient privacies to lovers say saw you e'er one so cruelly who loved in ages heaped on ages you have stood remember ye a youth who pined as i pleased with the object i its form behold but what i see and what so pleases flies i find it not in such bewildered maze the lover stands and what my grief augments no mighty seas divide us lengthened roads nor lofty hills nor high embattled walls with portals closed asunder are we held by trivial drops of water it no less than i would give the embrace for when i bend my lips to kiss it in the limpid stream with rising lips to meet it anxious strives then might you think we touch so faint a line sunders us lovers come whate'er thou art come hither why thus mock me dearest form why fly my wooing thus my beauty sure nor youth are such as should provoke thy flight for numerous nymphs for me have burned some hope thy kindly sympathizing face affords and when my anxious arms i stretch thy arms advance to clasp me when i smile thou smilest and often have i noted when the tears streamed down my cheeks a rivulet on thine i nod thou answering noddest and those lips those beauteous lips whose movements plain i see words utter sure to mine though i forbid the sounds to hear in thee am i no more my shadow me deceives i see the whole love for myself consumes me flames self-raised myself torment what hope be wooed or woo wooing or being wooed where is my gain myself i wish and plenty makes me poor would that my body from itself could part strange wish for lovers what most dear they love absent to pray grief undermines my strength nor long my life can linger immature in youth i perish but in me no fears can death infuse of all my woes the end might i but leave this lovely object still existing now two images alas sink with one soul in death narcissus wails and raving turns to view the face again his tears the waters trouble and the face so beauteous scarce is seen grieved he exclaims when disappearing whither fliest thou stay stay i beseech thee cruel fly me not thy lover grant me still to view the form to touch forbidden food at least afford to this unhappy flame lamenting thus he from his shoulders tore his robe and beat with snow-white hands his bosom at the blow his bosom reddened so the cherry seems here ruddy blushing there as fair as snow of grapes unripe part purpling to the sun in varied clusters this he soon espied reflected in the placid pool no more he bore it but as gentle fire dissolves the yellow wax as phoebus's morning beams melt the light hoar so wasted he by love gradual consumed as by a secret fire no more the ruddy taints appear with white soft blended all his active strength decays and all that pleased so lately even his form so much by echo loved no more remains all echo saw and though of former slights still mindful grieved and when the hapless youth alas exclaimed responsive sighed alas when on his breast the blows resounded blows loud answering his were heard his final words gazing still earnest on the wonted wave were dearest form beloved in vain the words resounded from the grove farewell he cried and echo cried farewell wearied he threw on the green turf his head night closed his eyes their owner fond admiring now retired to regions far beneath the stygian lake reflects his form the naiad sisters wail shorn of their tresses which to him they throw the dryads also mourn their bosoms beat and echo answers every tearful groan 
a pile they build the high tossed torches bring and funeral beer but lo the corpse is gone a saffron tainted flower alone is found rising encircled with its snowy leaves the adventure spread through all the Achaean towns and much repute the unerring augur gained great now his prophesying fame alone pentheus despised him he the gods despised and only he he mocked each holy word sagely prophetic with his rayless eyes reproached him angrily his temple's hall with reverend locks the prophet shook and said happy for thee if thus of light bereft the bacchanalian orgies ne'er to see the day approaches nor far distant now my sight prophetic tells when here will come bacchus new-born of semele the son whose rites if thou with honour due not tenst in temples worthy scattered far and wide thy limbs dismembered shall the ground bestrew thy blood the forests shall disdain thy gore thy aunts nay e'en thy mother shall pollute for thou such honours as immortals claim shalt to the god deny then wilt thou find beneath this darkness i but see too well thus speaking echion's son the prophet pushed harshly away but his two faithful words time proved the threatened deeds accomplished all lo bacchus comes and all the country rings with joyous outcries crowds on crowds thick swarm matrons and wives new wedded mixed with men nobles and commons all the impulse bears to join the stranger's rites but pentheus thus offspring of mars o nation serpent born what madness fills your minds can piercing sounds of brass from brass rebounding winding horns and magic cheatings then possess such power you whom the warlike sword the trumpets clang and battle's edge dread bristling close with arms appall not yield ye thus to female howls wine's maddening fumes a filthy shameless crowd and empty symbols in amaze i see you venerable men who ploughed the seas and here a refuge for your exiled gods this second tyre have built without a blow yield it a spoil ye too robuster youths of hardier age and years more near my own whom warlike arms than thirsty more become and brows with helmets than with leaves compressed think whence you sprang and let the thought inspire your souls with all the dragon's fierceness he singly slew hosts he for his fountain fell you for your honour vanquish he destroyed the valiant you the feminine expel and all the glory of your sire regain if fate to thebes a speedy fall decrees may heroes o ye gods with battering force o'erturn her walls may the sword rage and flames crackling devour her wretched though our lot not criminal our fate though much bemoaned would need concealment not tears then might flow but not from shame now unresisting thebes yields to a boy unarmed who never joys in armies steeds nor swords but more in locks with myrrh moist dropping garlands soft and robes of various taints with gold and purple gay rest ye but tranquil and without delay him will i force to own his boasted sire untrue and forged those new invented rites had not acrisius bravery to despise the counterfeited deity and close the gates of argos on him and must now this wanderer come and pentheus terrify with all the power of thebes haste quickly haste he bade his servants hither drag firm chained this leader quick nor brook my words delay his grandsire athamas and all the crowd reprove while thus he rails with fruitless toil labour to stop him obstinate he stands more raging at remonstrance and his ire restrained increases goading more and more restraint itself in kindling more his rage so may be seen a river rolling smooth with murmuring nearly silent while unchecked but when by rocks or bulky trees opposed foaming and boiling furious on it sweeps impetuous raging fiercer more withstood with blood besmeared his men return their lord for bacchus anxious asks but bacchus they to find arrived too late but here they cried here we have seized his comrade one who joins his train and joins his rights the tuscans once the bacchanalian orgies followed bound behind his hands their prisoner they present pentheus surveyed the stranger while his eyes sparkled with rage terrific with constraint his torture so deferring thus he spoke wretch ere thou sufferest ere thy death shall give a public warning tell thy name confess thy sire declare thy country and the cause those rites thou celebratest in a mode diverse from others fearless he replied achates is my name my natal land tyrania from an humble stock i spring lands by strong oxen ploughed or wool-clad flocks or lowing herds my father left me none 
for poor was he his daily toil to catch with nets and lines the fish and as they leaped draw with his bending rod the prey to land his skill his sole estate ran unto me this art he taught receive said he my wealth such wealth as i possess heir to my toil and to my toil successor dying he to me bequeathed the waters nothing more these only as paternal wealth i claim but soon disliking on the selfsame rock to dwell i learned the art to rule the track ploughed by the keel with skilful guiding hand and learned the lenian sign the showery goat tagite and the hyades the bear the dwellings of the winds and every port where ships could shelter once for delos bound by chance the shore of chios's isle we neared and when our starboard oars the beach had touched lightly i leaped and rested on the land now night expired aurora warmly glowed and rousing up from sleep my men i bade supplies of living waters bring and showed what path the fountain led to i meanwhile a lofty hill ascending careful marked the wished-for wind approaching loud i called my fellows and with haste the vessel gained lo cried ophelthes chief of all my crew lo here we come and from the desert fields a prize obtained he thought he dragged along a boy of virgin beauty toward the sands staggering the youth with wine and sleep oppressed with difficulty followed closely i his dress his countenance and his gait remark and all i see displays no mortal man conscious i speak my comrades thus unknown to me what deity before us stands but sure i am that form conceals a god o thou whoe'er thou art assist us aid our undertakings who have seized thee spare unknowing what they did bold dictis cries than whom none swifter gained the topmost yards nor on the cordage slid more agile down prayers offer not for us him libus joins and brown melanthus ruler of the helm alcimedon unites epopeus too who ruled the rowers and their restings marked arduous they urged their sinews by his voice nay all have felt his join the lust of gain so blinded all their judgments still i cry ne'er will i yield my vessel to behold burthened with such a sacrilegious load preeminent is here my right i stand to those who strive to hoist him in opposed bold and outrageous far beyond the rest was lycabas from tuscan shore exiled for deeds of murderous violence he grasped my throat with force athletic as i stood and in the waves had flung me but saw stunned a cable caught and saved me loud the crew the impious deed applauded bacchus rose the boy was bacchus with the tumult loud roused from his sleep the fumes of wine dispelled his senses seemed restored what is to do what noise is this he cried what brought me here o mariners inform me tell me where you carry me fear not the pilot said say but the port where most thou didst choose to land thither we straight will steer the god replied to naxos then your course direct that isle my native soil i call to you that isle a friendly shore shall prove false men they swear by ocean and by all the sacred gods this to perform and order me to loose the painted vessel's sails full on the right stood naxos loudly one to me exclaims as toward the right i trim the sails to steer what now achates madman fool what now art thou distracted to the left we sail most nod significant their wishes some soft whisper in my ear astounded i let others guide exclaim and quit the helm guiltless of aiding in their treacherous guile loud murmurings sound from all and loudly one athalian cries in thee alone is placed our safety doubtless forward steps himself my station seizes and a different course directs the vessel naxos left behind the feigning god as though but then the fraud to him perceptible the waves beholds from the curved poop and tears pretending cries not this o seaman is the promised shore not this the wished-for land what deed of mine this cruel treatment merits where the fame of men a child deceiving numbers leagued misleading one fast flowed my tears with his our tears the impious mob deride and press the ocean with their strong propelling oars now by the god himself i swear and none to vows more ready listens that the tale though in appearance credence far beyond is strictly true firm fixed amid the waves the vessel stands as in a harbour laid dry from the ocean wondering they their oars with strokes redoubled ply loose to the wind more sails and with this double aid essay onward to urge their oars with ivy twined are clogged the curving tendrils crooked spread the sails with clustering berries loaded hang 
His temples girded with a branchy crown, when scrapes hang dangling, stands the god, and shakes a spear entwisted with the curling vine. Round seem to prowl the tiger and the lynx, and savage forms of panthers, various marked. Uplipped the men, by sudden madness moved, or terror only. Medon first appeared blackening to grow with shooting fins. His form flattened, and in a curve was bent his spine. Imlecabus addressed, What wondrous shape art thou receiving? Speaking, wide his jaws expanded, flattened down, his nose appeared. A scaly covering clothed his hardened skin. Lebis to turn the firm fixed oars attempts, but while he tries, perceives his fingers shrink, and hands, now hands no longer, fins he sees. Another round the cordage strives his arms to clasp, but arms he has not. Down he leaps, broad on his crooked back, and seeks the waves. Forked is their new-made tail, like Luna's form bent in the skies, ere half her orb is filled. Bounding all round they leap, now down they dash, besprinkling wide the foamy drops, now merge, and now re-diving plunge in playful sport. As chorus regular they act, and move their forms in shapes lascivious, spouting high the briny waters through their nostrils wide. Of twenty now, our ship so many bore, I only stand unchanged, with trembling limbs and petrified with fear. The god himself scarce courage in my mind inspires, when thus, pale terror from thy bosom drive, and seek the isle of Naxos. Thither come, I tend on smoking altars, Bacchus's sacred rites. Him Pentheus angry stopped. Thy tedious tale, formed to divert my rage, in vain is told. Here, men, swift drag him hence, dispatch his soul, driven from his body down to Stygian night, by pangs excruciating. Straight close pent, in solid dungeon is Achates throne, while they the instruments of death prepare, the cruel steel, the flames, spontaneous fly wide open the dungeon doors, spontaneous fall the fetters from his arms, and freed he goes. Stubborn, the son of Echion still persists, but sends no messenger, himself proceeds, to where Cytheron, for the sacred rites selected, rings with bacchanalian songs, and outcries shrill, as foams and high-bred steed, when through the speaking brass the warlike trump sounds the glad signal, and with ardour burns for battle, so the air with howlings loud re-echoing Pentheus moves, and doubly flames his rage to hear the clangour. Cleared from trees a plain extends, from every part fair seen, and near the mountain's centre. Round its skirt thick groves grow shady. Here his mother saw his eye unhallowed view the sacred rites, and first, by frantic madness urged, she first furious the thyrsus at her Pentheus flung exclaiming loud ho sisters hither haste here stands the furious boar that wastes our grounds my hand has smote him raging rush the crowd in one united body all close join and all pursue the now pale trembling wretch no longer fierce he storms but grieving blames his rashness and his obstinacy owns wounded dear aunt antinoe he cries help me oh let your own actaeon's ghost move you to pity she actaeon's name nought heeding tears his outstretched arm away, the other Eno from his body drags. And when his arms, unhappy wretch, he tries to lift unto his mother, arms to lift were none, but stretching forth his mangled trunk of limbs bereft. Look, mother, he exclaims. Loud howled Agave at the sight, his neck fierce grasping, tossed on high his streaming locks, her bloody fingers twisted in his hair, then clamoured loudly, Joy, my comrades, joy, the victory is mine. Not swifter sweep the winds through those leaves which early frosts have nipped, and lightly to the boughs attached remain, than scattered flew his limbs by furious hands. End of section 6the fourth book of the metamorphoses of ovid part one warned by the dreadful admonition all of thebes the new solemnities approve bring incense and to bacchus's altars bend alcathoe only minyas's daughter views his orgies still with unbelieving eyes boldly herself and sisters partners all in impious guilt refuse the god to own the progeny of jove the prophet bids each mistress with her maids to join the feast sacred the day from toil their breasts to clothe in skins, the fillets from their heads to loose. With ivy wreathe their brows, and in their hands the leafy thyrsus grasp. 
threatening he spoke in words prophetic how the fronted god would wreak his ire matrons and virgins haste throw by their baskets quit the loom and leave the unfinished threads sweet incense they supply invoking bacchus by his various names bromius laeus power in flames produced produced a second time god doubly born born of two mothers nicias they exclaim long-haired thionius and the planter famed of genial grapes Linnaeus, too they sing nyctelius elelchus and aloud iacus evan with the numerous names o liber in the grecian land thou holdst unwaning youth is thine eternal boy most beauteous form in heaven a virgin's face thou seem'st to bear when seen without thy horns stoops to thy arms the east where ganges bounds the dusky india deity revered thou impious pentheus sacrificed and thou the mad lycurgus punished with his axe by thee the tyrene traitors in the main were flung adorned with painted reins thou curbst the lynxes in thy chariot yoked abreast thy steps the satyrs and bacchantes tread and old silenus who with wine o'ercharged with a long staff his tottering steps sustains or on a crooked ass unsteady sits where'er thou enterest shout the joyous youth females and males immingled loud the drums struck by their hands resound and loudly clash the brazen cymbals soft the box and flutes deep and melodious sound now praise all thebes the gods approach in mildness and perform his sacred rites as bidden sole remain at home secluded Minyas's daughters they with ill-timed industry the feast profane busy they form the wool and twirl the thread or to the loom stick close and all their maids urge to strict labour one with dexterous thumb the slender thread extending cries while all idly those rites imaginary tend let us whom pallas deity more great detains our useful labours lighter make by varied converse each in turn relate her tale while others listen thus the time less tedious shall appear all pleased applaud the proposition and her sisters beg that she the tales commence long she demurs what story first of those she knew to tell for numerous was her store in doubt thy tale docetus babylonian to relate whose form the syrians think with scales is clothed the stagnant pools frequenting or describe thy daughter's change on waving pinions born who lengthened age obtained on lofty towers safe dwelling or of nais who the youths with magic works and potent witching words to silent fishes turned till she the same vile transformation suffered or the tree which once in clusters white its berries bore now blood besprinkled growing black this tale most novel pleased the most and as she spun her slender thread the nymph the tale began thisbe the brightest of the eastern maids and pyramus the pride of all the youths contiguous dwellings held in that famed town where lofty walls of stone we learn were raised by bold semiramis their neighbouring sight acquaintance first encouraged primal step to further intimacy love in time grew from this chance connection and they longed to join by lawful rites but harsh forbade their rigid sires the union fate had doomed with equal ardour both their minds inflamed burnt fierce and absent every watchful spy by nods and signs they spoke for close their love concealed they kept concealed it burned more fierce the severing wall a narrow chink contained formed when first reared what will not love espy this chink by all for ages past unseen the lovers first espied this opening gave a passage for their voices safely through their tender words were breathed in whisperings soft oft punctual at their posts on this side she and pyramus on that each breathing sighs by turns inhaling have they mutual cried invidious wall why lovers thus divide much were it did thy parts more wide recede and suffer us to join were that too much a little opening more and we might meet with lips at least yet grateful still we own thy kind indulgence which a passage gives and amorous words conveys to loving ears thus they loquacious though on sides diverse till night their converse stayed then cried adieu and each imprinted kisses which the stones forbade to taste soon as aurora's fires removed the shades of night and phoebus's rays from the moist earth the dew exhaled they meet as customed at the wall lamenting deep as wont in murmuring whispers bold they plan their guards evading in the silent night to pass the outer gates then when escaped from home to leave the city's dangerous shade but lest in wandering o'er the spacious plains they miss to meet 
At Ninus's sacred tomb they fixed their assignation, hid concealed beneath umbrageous leaves. There grew a tree, close bordering on a cooling fountain's brink, a stately mulberry, snow-white fruit hung thick on every branch. The plot pleased well the pair. And now slow seems the car of soul to sink, slow from the ocean seems the night to rise, till Thisbe, cautious by the darkness veiled, soft turns the hinges, and her guards beguiles. Her features veiled, the tomb she reaches, sits beneath the pointed tree, love makes her bold. Lo, comes a lioness, her jaws besmeared with gory foam, fresh from the slaughtered herd, deep in the joining found her thirst to slake. Far off the Babylonian maid beheld by Luna's rays the horrid foe, quick fled with trembling feet and gained a darksome cave. Flying she dropped and left her robe behind. Now had the savage beast her drought allayed, and backward to the forest roaming found the veiling robe, its tender texture rent, and smeared the spoil with bloody jaws. The youth, with later fortune his strict watch escaped, spied the plain footsteps of a monster huge, deep in the sand indented. O'er his face pale terror spread, but when the robe he saw with blood besmeared and mangled, loud he cried, One night shall close two lovers' eyes in death, she most deserving of a longer date. Mine is the fault alone, dear luckless maid. I have destroyed thee, I who bade thee keep nocturnal meetings in this dangerous place, and came not first to shield thy steps from harm. Ye lions, wheresoe'er within those caves ye lurk, haste hither, tear me limb from limb, fierce ravaging devour, and make my tomb your horrid entrails. But for death to wish a coward's turn may serve. The robe he takes, once Thisbe's, and beneath the pointed tree bearing it bathed in tears, with ardent lips oft fondly kissing, thus he desperate cries. Now with my blood be also bathed, drink deep. And in his body plunged the sword, that round his loins hung ready girt. Then as he died, hasty withdrew, hot reeking from the wound, the steel, and backwards falling pressed the earth. High spouts the sanguine flood, thus forth a pipe, the lead decayed or damaged, sends a stream contracted from the breach, upspringing high and loudly hissing as the air it breaks with jets repeated sprinkled with the blood the tree's white fruit a purple tinge received deep soaked with blood the roots convey the stain inly and tinge each bough with tyrian dye now this becomes with terror trembling still fearful she pyramus expecting waits him seek her beating bosom and her eyes anxious the peril she escaped to tell well marked her eyes the place and well the tree, the berries changed in colour, long she doubts the same or no. While hesitating thus, the panting members quivering she beholds, upon the sanguined turf, and back recoils, paler than box her features grow. Her limbs more tremble than when ocean fretful sounds, its surface briskly by the breezes swept. Nor long the pause, her lover soon is known, and now her harmless breast with furious blows she punishes, her tresses wild she rends, clasps the loved body and the gaping wound fills with her tears their droppings with the bloody mingling on his clay-cold face she pressed her kisses crying pyramus what chance has torn thee from me thus my pyramus answer me tis thy dearest thisbe speaks she calls thee hear me raise that dying face at thisbe's name his lids with death hard weighed he raised beheld her and forever closed him dying thus, her lacerated veil, the ivory scabbard emptied of its sword, she saw, at once the truth upon her mind flashed quick, alas, thy hand by love impelled has wrought thy ruin, but to me the hand in this at least shall equal force display, for equal is my love, and love will grant sufficient strength the deadly wound to give. In death I'll follow thee, with justice called thy ruin's wretched cause, but comrade too, Thou whom, but death seemed capable to part from me, shall find even death too weak will prove. Ye wretched mourning parents, his and mine, the dying prayers respect of him, of me. Grant that entombed together both may rest, a pair by faithful love conjoined, by death united close. And thou fair tree which shades have won the miserable course, and too soon with thy bowers wilt cover, bear the mark of the sad deed eternal tinged the thy fruit with mournful colouring monumental type of double slaughter speaking thus she placed the steely point while yet with blood it smoked beneath her swelling breast and forward fell her final prayer reached heaven her parents reached purple the berries blush when ripened full and in one urn the lover's ashes rest 
She ceased. A silent interval but short ensued, and next Liu Konui thus addressed her listening sisters. Even the sun himself, whose heavenly light so universal shines, to love is subject. His amours, I tell. This deity's keen sight the first espied, for all things penetrating first he sees. The crime of Mars and Venus, sore chagrined, to Vulcan he the adulterous theft displayed, and told him where they lay. Appalled he heard, and dropped the tools his dexterous hand contained. But soon recovered, slender chains of brass and nets and traps he formed, so wondrous fine they mocked the power of sight, for far less fine the smallest thread the distaff forms, or lines spun by the spider pendant from the roof. Curious he formed it. At the lightest touch it yielded, each momentum slight, however, caused its recession. This he artful hung, the couch enfolding. When the faithless wife and paramour upon the bed embraced, both in the lewd conjunction were ensnared. Caught by the husband's skill, whose art the chains in novel form had framed, the Lemnian god instant wide through the ivory doors, and gave admittance free to every curious eye. In shameful guise together bound they laid. But some light gods, not blaming much the sight, would wish thus shamed to lie. Loud laughed the whole, and long in heaven the tale jocose was told. The well-remembered deed the Cyprian queen retorting made the god remember too, and him who her concealed amours disclosed in turn betrayed. What now, Hyperion's son, avails thy beauty, or thy radiant flames? For thou, whose fires warm all the widespread world, burnst with a new-felt heat, thou whose wide view should every object grasp, with partial ken, Leucothoe only ceased, that nymph alone attracts those eyes, whose lustre all the world expect to view. Oft in the eastern skies, more early rising, art thou seen, and oft more tardy neath the waves thou sinkest. Long the wintry days thou stretchest, with delay thy object loved to see. Meantime pale gloom o'er casts thy orb, the dullness of thy mind obstructs thy brightness, and thy rays obscure terror in mortal breasts inspire. Not pale thou fadest as when nearer world to earth faint Luna's shadow o'er thy surface glooms. But love, and only love, the paleness gives. Her only now thy amorous soul pursues. Rhodos nor Clymene, nor Perse fair, of Colchian Circe mother, tempt thee now. Nor Clitie, whom thy cold neglect still spurns. Yet still she burns to clasp thee. Deep she mourns, stung more acutely by this fresh amour. Now in Leucothoe every former love is lost, Leucothoe, whom the beauteous nymph Eurynome, in odoriferous climes of Araby brought forth. Full-grown, matured, Leucothoe's beauteous form no less surpassed her mother's than her mother's all beside. Her sire, the royal Orchamus, who claimed a seventh descent from ancient Belus, ruled the Archaemenian towns. The rapid steeds of Phoebus passed beneath the western sky. Not grass ambrosia eating heavenly food which nerves their limbs faint with diurnal toil restoring all their ardour whilst the steeds this their celestial nourishment enjoy and night as customed governs in her turn the god the close apartments of his nymph beloved enters formed to outward view eurynome her mother her he saw the slender threads from spindle twirling fine illumined by the lamp and circled round by twice six female helpers Warm he gave as a loved daughter his maternal kiss, and said, Our converse secrecy demands, the tendant maids depart, nor hindrance give, loitering, a mother's secret words to hear. When he, the chamber free from spy or guard, exclaims, No female eye, behold the god, the lengthened year who spaces, who beholds each object earth contains, the world's great eye by which it all surveys. My tender words, believe, I dearly love thee, Pale she looked while thus he spoke, started and trembling dropped her distaff and her spindle from her hand, nerveless. But even her terror seemed to add fresh beauty to her features. Longer he delayed not, but his wonted form assumed, in heavenly splendour shining. Mild the maid won by his beauteous brightness, though at first his sudden shape surprised her, sunk beneath the force he urged with unresisting power. The jealous Clitie, who with amorous flame burned for Apollo, urged by harlot's rage, straight to the sire Leucothoe's crime betrayed, painting the nymph's misdeed with heightened glow. Fierce raged the father, merciless inhumed her living body deep in earth, outstretched high to the sun her arms, and praying warm for mercy, he by force, she cried, prevailed. 
o'er her untimely grave a lofty mound of sand her sire upreared hyperion's son through this an opening with his beams quick formed full wide for her her head entombed to lift once to the light again thy buried course no more thou now couldst raise the ponderous load of earth prevents thee and a bloodless mass exanimate thou liest not deeper grief tis said the ruler of the swift-winged steeds displayed when o'er the earth the hapless flames by phaeton were thrown arduous he strives her gelid limbs with all his powerful rays to vivid heat recall stern fate withstands his utmost urged endeavours bathing then her pallid course and all the earth around with odorous nectar sorrowing sad he cries yet shalt thou reach the heavens and soon began her limbs soft melting in celestial dew with moistening drops of strong perfume to flow slowly a frankincense's rooted twigs spread in the earth its top the hillock burst angry the god though violent love the pain of jealousy might well excuse the pain of jealousy the tale from clitier now abstains no more in amorous mood they meet rash now the deed her burning love had caused too late she found she flies her sister nymphs and pining on the cold bare turf she sits by day by night soul sheltered by the sky her dripping tresses matted round her brows food drink abhorring nine long days she bore sharp famine bathed with dew bathed with her tears still on the ground prone lying yet the god encircling motion still she ardent viewed turning her face to his tradition tells her limbs to earth grew fastened ghastly pale her colour changed to bloodless leaves she stood streaked ruddy here and there a violet flower her face o'erspreading still that face she turns to meet the sun though binding roots retain her feet her love unaltered still remains she ended all their listening ears well pleased the wondrous story heard some hard of faith its truth its probability deny to true divinities such power some grant and power to compass more to bacchus none such potence own the sisters silent now alcithoe begged to speak she shooting swift her shuttle through the extended threads exclaims of daphnis's love so known on ida's hill his flocks who tended whom his angry nymph to stone transformed such fury fires the breast of those who desperate love i shall not tell nor yet of scython of ambiguous form now male now female nature's wonted laws in constant proving thee o selmus too i pass once faithful nurse to infant jove now changed to adamant curities sprung from showery floods crocus and smilax both to blooming flowers transformed unnoticed these my tale from novelty itself shall please how salmasis so infamous became then list whose potent waves the luckless limbs in erve of those they bathe concealed the cause yet far and wide the fountain's power is known deep in the sheltering caves of ida's hill the naiad nymphs a beauteous infant nursed whom cyprus's goddess unto hermes bore his father's beauty and his mother's shone in every feature in his name conjoined he bore their appellations when matured by fifteen summers from paternal hills straying he wandered from his nursing ide in lands unknown he joyed and joyed to see strange rivers pleasure lessening every toil through lycia's towns he strayed and further still to bordering carrier where a pool he spied whose lowest depth a gleam transparent showed no marshy canes no filthy barren weeds nor pointed bulrush near the margin grew full on the eye the water shone yet round its brink a border smiled of verdant turf and plants forever green here dwelt a nymph but one who never joined the active chase the bow who never bent who never strove to conquer in the race of all the nymphs alone no comrade of diana fleet oft as tis said her sister nymphs exclaimed come salmasis thy painted quiver take or take thy javelin with soft pleasures mix laborious sporting but nor javelin she nor painted quiver took with sportive toil soft pleasures mingling soul intent to bathe her beauteous limbs amidst her own clear waves and through her flowing tresses oft to draw the box and comb while o'er the fountain bent she studies all her graces now her form clad in a robe transparent stretched she lies or on the yielding leaves or bending grass now flowers she culls and so it chanced to fall flowers she was gathering when she first beheld the charming youth no sooner seen than loved 
not forth she rushed at first though strongly urged forward to spring but all adjusted fair closely surveyed her robe her features formed and every part in beauteous shape composed then thus addressed him o most godlike youth and if a god the lovely cupid sure but if of mortal mould blessed is thy sire blessed is thy brother and thy sister blessed if sister hast thou and the fostering breast which fed thy infant growth but far above all in rapturous bliss is she who calls thee spouse should nymph exist thou deemst that bliss deserves if wedded grant a stone embrace to me if not let me thy nuptial couch ascend the naiad ceased a bashful glow suffused his face for naught of love to him was known yet blushing seemed he lovely thus warm glows the apple to the ripening sun exposed or tainted ivory or the reddened moon whom brazen symbols clash to help in vain to her warm praying for at least a kiss a chaste a sister's kiss her arms firm clasped around his ivory neck desist he cries desist or soul to thee the place i'll leave his flight she dreaded and replied i go dear youth and freely yield the spot to thee and seems indeed her steps from him to turn but still in sight she kept him lurking close sheltered by shadowy shrubs on bended knees of spy unconscious he in boyish play frisks sportive here and there dips first his feet then ankles deeper in the wantoning waves pleased with the temper of the lucid pool till hasty stripped from off his tender limbs his garments soft he flings more deeply struck stood salmasis more fiercely flamed her love his naked beauty seen her gloating eyes sparkled no less than seem bright phoebus's rays when shining splendid midst a cloudless sky a mirror's face reflecting gives them back delay ill brooking hardly she contains her swelling joy frantic for his embrace she pants and hard from rushing forth refrains his sides he claps and agile in the stream quick plunges moving with alternate arms bright through the waves he shines thus white appears the sculptured ivory or the lily fair seen through a crystal veil the naiad cries lo here i come he's mine the youth's my own and instant far was every garment flung midst of the waves she leaps the struggling youth clasps close and on his cold reluctant lips forces her kisses down she girds his arms and close to hers hugs his unwilling breast final around the youth who arduous strives in opposition and escape essays her limbs she twines so twines a serpent huge seized by the bird of jove and borne on high twisting his head the feet close bracing holds the wide spread wings entangled with his tail so twines the ivy round the lengthened bough so numerous polypus his foe confines seized in the deep with claws on every side firm grasped but hermes's son persisting still the naiad's wish denies she presses close and as she cleaves there every limb close joined exclaims ungallant boy but strive thy most thou shalt not fly me grant me o ye gods no time may ever sunder him from me or me from him her prayer was granted straight for now commingling both their bodies joined and both their faces melted into one so when in growth we bars in grafted see the bark enclosing both at once they sprout thus were their limbs in strong embrace compressed wrapped close no longer two in form yet two in feature nor a nymph-like face remained nor yet a boy's it both and neither seemed when hermes's son beheld the liquid stream where masculine he plunged the power possessed to enervate his body and his limbs effeminately soften high he raised his arms and prayed but not with manly voice o sire o mother dear indulge your son your double appellation bearing this sole urged petition whoso in these waves in strong virility like me shall plunge hence let him go like me in evate maid spoilt by the stream his strength each parent god nodding confirmed their altered son's request and tinged the fountain with the changing power she ceased the nymphs minyean still persist their toil to urge despising still the god his festival profaning sudden heard the rattling sounds of unseen timbrels burst full on their ears the pipe the crooked horn and brazen cymbals loudly clash perfumes of myrrh and saffron blended smell but more and what belief surpasses straight their looms virid to sprout begin the pendant threads branch into shoots like ivy part becomes the vine what now were threads curled tendrils seem shot from the folded web the branches climb and the bright red in purpling grapes appears 
now was the sun declining and approached the twilight season when nor day it seems nor night confirmed but a grey mixture forms of each an indetermined compound deep the roof appeared to shade the oily lamps ardent to glow the torches bright to burn with reddening flames while round them seemed to howl figures of beast ferocious filled with smoke the room the frighted maidens seek to hide and each in different corners tries to shun the fires and flaming light but while they seek a lurking shelter o'er their shortened limbs a webby membrane spreading binds their arms in waving wings the gloom concealed the mode of transformation from their former shape light plumage bears them not aloft yet raised on wings transparent through the air they skim to speak they strive but utter forth a sound feeble and weak then screeching shrill they plain men's dwellings they frequent nor try the woods and cheerful day avoiding skim by night their name from that untimely hour derived now were the deeds of heaven-born bacchus famed through every part of thebes and all around his aunt proud boasts the new-made god's great power she of the sisters all from sorrow spared save what to view her sister's sorrowing gave juno beheld her lofty thus her breast elate to view her sons her nuptial fruits with athamas and her great foster child the mighty bacchus more the furious queen bore not but thus exclaimed has the whore's son power to transform the tiring crew and plunge them headlong in the deep can he impel the mother's hands to seize her bleeding son and tear his entrails dares he then to clothe the miniered sisters with uncustomed wings and his saturnia's utmost power can find wrongs unrevenged to weep suffices such for me is this a goddess's utmost might but he instructs me wisdom may be taught even by a foe the wretched pentheus's fate shows all sufficient what may madness do why should not eno stung with frantic rage the well-known track her sister's trod pursue End of section 7part eight of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the fourth book of the metamorphoses of ovid part two a path declivitous with baleful yew dark shaded leads a dreary silent road down to the infernal regions sluggish sticks dank mists exhales here travel new-made ghosts with rites funereal blessed pale winter's gloom wide rules the squalid place the stranger shades wander unknowing which the path to tread straight to the infernal city where is held black pluto's savage court a thousand gates wide ope surround the town on every side as boundless ocean every stream receives from earth poured numerous so each wandering soul flocks to this city whose capacious bounds full space for all affords nor ever feels the increasing crowd of flesh deprived and bones the bloodless shadows wander some frequent the forum some the infernal monarch's court some various arts employ resembling much their former daily actions numbers grown in punishment severe here juno came braving the region's horrors from her throne celestial so did ire and hatred goad her bosom with their stings sacred she pressed the groaning threshold instant as she stepped fierce cerberus his triple head upraised and howled with triple throat the goddess calls the night-born sisters fierce implacable before the close-barred adamantine gates they sit their tresses twisting round with snakes the queen through clouds of midnight gloom they see and instant rise here dwell the suffering damned here tydeus stretched o'er nine wide acres yields his entrails to be torn thou tantalus art seen the stream forbid to taste the fruit thy lips o'er hanging flies thou sisyphus thy stone pursuing downwards or its weight straining aloft with oft exerted power ixion whirling too with swift pursuit thou followest and art followed pelides your husband cousins who in death dared steep and ceaseless draw the unavailing streams all juno viewed with unrelenting brow but viewed ixion sterner far than all and when on sisyphus again she cast her eyes beyond ixion angry cried what justice this of all the brethren he sharp torture suffers shall proud athamas a regal dwelling boast whose scornful taunts and scornful spouse have still my power condemned then straight her hatred's cause disclosed they see her journey's object and revenge's aim 
this her desire that cadmus's regal house perished should sink and athamas fierce urged by madness should some dreadful vengeance claim commands solicitations prayers at once the goddesses besiege and as she speaks angrily moved tisiphone replies shaking her hoary locks the twining snakes back from her mouth repelling hasty thus a tedious tale we need not what thou wilt believe accomplished fly this hateful gloom up to the wholesome breeze of heaven repair glad juno left the spot when near approached heaven's entrance there thomantian iris met and with her sprinklings purified the queen quick now tisiphone the savage fiend seizes her torch with gory droppings wet flings round her limbs a garment deeply dyed with streaming blood a twisting snake supplies a girdle thus arrayed she sallies forth followed by loud lament by terror fear and quivering featured madness when she pressed the threshold fame declares the pillars shook the maple doors with terror moved grew pale back shrunk the sun eno with trembling dread beheld these wonders athamas beheld and both prepared the haunted place to fly escape the fury hinders fierce she stands blocking the entrance wide her arms she spreads with viperous twistings bound and threatening shakes her tresses loud the serpent's noise disturbed sprawl o'er her shoulders some some lower fallen twine hissing round her breasts with brandished tongue black poison vomiting with furious gripe two from her locks she tore her deadly hand hurled them straight on the breasts of athamas and eno hungry with their fangs they seized fierce pains in fixing but external wounds their limbs betrayed not mental was the blow so direly struck venom's most mortal too from tartarus she bore the firm high churned from jaws of cerberus the poisonous juice of hydra urgent wish for roaming wide oblivion mental blinded wicked deeds weeping and furious fierceness slaughter fond on these commingled fresh drawn gore she poured and warmed them bubbling in a brazen vase stirred by a sprouting hemlock trembling they shudder while in their breasts the poison fierce she pours both bosoms feel it deep instilled their inmost vitals feel it then her torch whirled flaming round and round in triumph glares fires from the circling gathering powerful thus victorious in her aims and deeds desired to mighty pluto's shadowy realm she speeds and from her loins untwists the girding snakes mad bounded athamas amid the hall ho friends exclaiming here spread wide your toils here in this thicket where even now i saw with young twin cubs a lioness and mad pursued his consort for a savage beast snatching liarchus who with playful smile outstretched his infant hands to meet him torn rough from his mother's bosom round in air and round sling-like he whirled then savage dashed upon a rugged rock the tender bones loud howls the frantic mother frantic made by grief or by the scattered poison's power and raving with dishevelled tresses spread wide o'er her shoulders flies her naked arms young melisertes bear madly she shrieks evoe bacchus loud at bacchus's name revengeful juno laughed and said such boon thy foster son upon his nurse confers a lofty rock the firming waves o'erhangs whose dashing force deep in its base have scooped a cavern safely sheltering from the showers the adamantine summit high extends and o'er the wide main stretches swift this height active and strong with madness eno gained and fearless with the infant in her arms sprung from the cliff and sunk beneath the waves white foamed the surge around her venus grieved such sufferings undeserved her race should bear thus with bland coaxings ocean's god addressed lord of the azure deep whose high command sways next to heavens a vast demand i ask but pity my poor offspring whom thou seest plunged in thy ionian billows with their forms thy deities increase some influence sure in ocean i should hold from thence produced sprung from the froth that on the deep main swims whence grecian poets name me neptune nods assenting to her prayer and from their limbs abstracts the mortal portion on their forms breathes majesty and with their altered mien their names he changes too palaemon he now styled his mother as leucothoe known the princess's anxious comrades traced her steps with care the last with arduous search they found just on the giddy brink nor dubious deemed her fate a moment cadmus's house they wail with beating hands their tresses tear and robes and highly juno blame as one unjust too ireful for the hapless sister's fault 
juno fierce flaming these reproaches stung ye too she cried shall monuments become of the fierce ire ye blame deeds words pursued the nymph who most her hapless queen held dear exclaimed deep in the roaring main i'll plunge to join her fate and sprung to take the leap but motionless she stood fixed to the rock her wounding blows upon her bosom one strives to renew as wont her striving arms stiffened to stone she sees this toward the waves her hands extends a rocky mass she stands in the same waves far stretching lifted high the locks to rend the fingers might be seen stiffened and rigid with the hair become in posture whatsoever caught each nymph in that same posture stands thus part are changed the rest to birds transformed by wings upborne skim o'er the surface of the neighbouring sea cadmus the wondrous change which raised his child and his young grandson to the rank of gods yet knew not by his load of grief o'erwhelmed a chain of woes and supernatural scenes so numerous which he sees the founder quits his town suspicious that the city's fate and not his own misfortune on him showers born o'er the main his lengthened wanderings end when with his exiled consort safe he gains illyria's shores oppressed with grief and age the primal fortunes of their house with care they scan and in their converse all their woes again recounting cadmus thus exclaims was then that serpent by my javelin pierced when driven from tyre whose numerous teeth i sowed sacred to some divinity if he thus vengeful for the deed his anger pours may i a serpent stretched at length become he said and serpent-like extended lies scales he perceives upon his hardened skin and sees green spots on his black body form prone on his breast he falls together twined his legs commingling stretch and gradual end lessened in rounded point his arms remain still and those arms remaining he extends while down his face yet human tears flow fast o hapless wife approach he cries approach and touch me now while aught of me remains receive my hand while yet a hand i bear ere to a serpent holy turns my form more he prepared to utter but his tongue cleft sudden to his wishes words refused and often when his sorrows sad he tried to wail anew he hissed that sound alone nature permitted while her naked breast with blows resounded loud his wife exclaimed stay o my cadmus hapless man shake off this monstrous figure cadmus what is this where are thy feet and where thy arms and hands where are thy features thy complexion where whilst i bewail art thou celestial powers why not this transformation work on me she ended he advancing licked her face and creeped as customed to her bosom dear and round her wounded neck embracing twined now draw their servants nigh and as they come with terror start the crested serpents play smooth on their necks now too and cordial slide in spires conjoined then in the darksome shades the joining woods afford them close they hide mankind they fly not nor deep wounds inflict harmless their pristine form is ne'er forgot still though in altered shapes the pair rejoiced their grandson's fame to hear whom vanquished ind low bending worshipped greece adoring praised in lofty temples sole acrisius stands like bacchus sprung from jove's celestial seed opposing and from argos's gates propels the god his birth denied against him arms nor perseus would he own from heaven derived conceived by danae from a golden shower yet soon so mighty is the force of truth acrisius grieves he e'er so rashly braved the god his grandson driving from his court disowned now one in heaven is glorious placed the other laden with the well-known spoil of the fierce snaky monster cleaves the air on sounding pinions high the victor sails o'er libya's deserts and the gory drops fall from the gorgon's head the ground receives the blood and warms it into writhing snakes hence does the country with the pest still swarm thence borne by adverse winds he sweeps along through boundless ether driven now here now there as watery clouds are swept from lofty skies the earth far distant viewing round the globe he skimmed three times he saw the arctic pole and thrice the warmer crab off to the west the adventurous youth was born back to the east as often now the day in darkness sank when he nocturnal flight mistrusting lights in atlas's kingdom neath the hesperian sky a short repose requests till phosphor bright should call aurora forth she ushering in the chariot of the day japetus's son all men in huge corporeal bulk surpassed he to the extremest confines of the land and o'er the ocean swayed 
whose waves receive apollo's panting steeds and wearied car a thousand bleating flocks a thousand herds strayed through the royal pastures neighbouring lords not near him ploughed their lands trees grew whose leaves with splendour glittering threw a golden shade o'er golden branches and o'er fruit of gold thus perseus friendly host if glorious birth thee pleases here one born of jove behold if deeds of merit more attraction move mine thy applause may claim at present grant an hospitable shelter here and rest but atlas fearing these oraculous words long since by themis on parnassus given the time o king will come thy golden tree shall lose its fruit the glory of the spoil a son of jove shall boast and dreading sore around his orchard's massy walls he rears a dragon huge and fierce the guard maintains whatever strangers to his realm approach far thence he drives and thus to perseus too haste quickly haste from hence lest soon i prove thy glorious deeds but feigned feigned as thy birth then forced to threats he added strove to thrust the hero forth who struggling efforts urged resisting while he begged with softening words proving in strength inferior who in strength could vie with atlas since my fame he cries such small desert obtains a gift accept and back his face averting holds displayed on his left side medusa's ghastly head a mountain now the mighty atlas stands his hair and beard as lofty forests wave his arms and hands high hilly summits rear or topped above by what was once his head his bones are rocks then so the gods decree enlarged to size immense in every part the weight of heaven and all the stars he bears his blustering vassals aeolus had pent in ever during prisons phosphor bright most splendid midst the starry host of heaven that monitor of labour now was risen when perseus bound again on either foot his winnowing wings girt on his crooked sword and cleft the air on waving pinions borne o'er numerous nations far beneath him spread he sailed till ethiopia's realms he saw where cepheus ruled there ammon power unjust andromeda had sentenced guiltless maid to what her mother's boastful tongue deserved her soon as perseus spied fast by the arms chained to the rugged rock where but her locks waved lightly to the breeze and but her eyes trickled a tepid stream she might be deemed a sculptured marble him the unknown sight astonished dazzled and inflamed with love his senses in the beauteous view soul wrapped scarce he remembers on his wings to wave alights exclaiming o whom chains like these should never bind nor other chains than such as lovers intertwist declare thy name thy country tell and why thou bearest those bonds silent awhile the virgin stood abashed converse with man to hold her blushing face her hands if free had long before concealed quick starting tears twas all she could her eyes veiled swimming then her name and country told and all the conscious pride her mother's charms inspired in full acknowledged lest for crimes her own just suffering perseus might conceive all yet untold when loud the billows roared upheaved the monster's bulk far above the waves he stood upreared and then right onward plunged his ample bosom covering half the main loud shrieks the virgin sad her father comes and sad her raving mother wretched both the mother most deservedly help in vain from them she seeks with tears and bosoms torn her fettered limbs they clasp they can no more then perseus thus for tears and loud laments long may the time be but effective aid to give the time is short suppose the nymph i ask i perseus sprung from mighty jove by her whose prison in a golden shower fecundative he entered perseus who the gorgon snaky haired o'ercame who bold on waving pinions winnows through the air him for a son in preference should ye choose arduous he'll strive to these high claims to add if heaven permits some merits more his own agree she's mine if by my arm preserved the parents promise who in such a case would waver beg his help and promise more that all their kingdom shall her dower become lo as a vessel's sharpened prow quick cleaves the waves by strenuous sweating arms impelled the monster comes his mighty bosom wide the water's sideway breasting distant now not more than what the balearic sling could with the bullet gain when high in air the sod repelling upward springs the youth soon as the main reflected perseus's form the ocean savage raged as jove's swift bird when in the open fields a snake he spies basking his livid back to phoebus's rays exposed behind attacks him plunges deep his hungry talons in his scaly neck to curb the twisting of his sanguine teeth 
with rapid flight thus perseus shooting cleaves the empty air lights on the monster's back burying his weapon to the crooked hilt full in the shoulder of the raging beast mad with the deepened wound now rears aloft the savage high in air now plunges low beneath the waters now he furious turns as turns the boar ferocious when the crowd of barking dogs beset him fiercely round with rapid waft the venturous hero shuns his greedy jaws now on his back thick armed with shells he strikes where opening space he sees now on his sides now where his tapering tail in fish-like form is finished bites the steel high spouts the wounded monster from his mouth the waves with gore deep purpling drenched the wings droop nagging and no longer perseus dares to trust their dripping aid a rocky spies whose summit o'er the peaceful waters rose but deep was hid when tempests moved the main supported here his left hand firmly grasps the craggy edge while through his sides and through the dying savage fields the weapon drove loud shouts and plaudits fill the shore the noise resounding echoes to the heavenly thrones cassiope and cepheus joyful greet their son and grateful own him chief support and saviour from her rugged fetters freed the virgin walks the cause the great reward of all his toil his victor hands he laves in the pure stream then with soft leaves defends a spot to rest the serpent bearing head lest the bare sand should harm it twigs marine he likewise strews and rests medusa there the fresh green twigs as though with life endowed felt the dire gorgon's power their spongy pith hard to the touch became the stiffness spread through every twig and leaf the nereid nymphs more branches bring and try the wondrous change on all than joy to see the change succeed spreading the transformation from the seeds with them throughout the waves this nature still retains the coral hardness still assumes from contact with the air beneath the waves a bending twig and hardened stone above three turfy altars to three heavenly gods he builds to hermes sacred stands the left the right to warlike pallas in the midst the mighty jove's is reared to pallas bleeds an heifer to the plume-heeled god a calf almighty jove accepts a lordly bull then claims andromeda the rich reward without a dower of all his valorous toil now love and hymen wave their torches high precursive of their joys each hearth is heaped with odorous incense every roof is hung with flowery garlands pipes and harps and lyres and songs which indicate their festive souls resound aloud each portal open thrown displayed appears the golden palace wide by every lord of cepheus's court arrayed in splendid pomp the nuptial feast is graced the banquet ended while the generous gift of bacchus circles and each soul dilates perseus the modes and customs of the land curious inquires lincides full relates the habits laws and manners of the clime his information ended now he cried relate o perseus boldest of mankind by what fierce courage and what skilful arts the snaky locks in thy possession came then perseus tells how lies a lonely vale beneath cold atlas every side strong fenced by lofty hills whose only pass is held by forcus's twin-born daughters mutual they one eye possessed in turns by either used his hand deceiving seized it as it passed twixt them alternate dexterous was the while through devious paths and deep sunk ways he went and craggy woods dark frowning till he reached the gorgon's dwelling passing then the fields and beaten roads there forms of men he saw and shapes of savage beasts but all to stone by dire medusa's petrifying face transformed he then the horrid countenance marked bright from the brazen targe his left arm bore reflected while deep slumber safe weighed down the gorgon and her serpents he divorced her shoulders from her head he adds how sprung chryseor and winged pegasus the swift from the prolific gorgon's streaming gore relates the perils of his lengthened flight what seas what kingdoms from the lofty sky beneath him he had viewed what sparkling stars his waving wings had brushed thus ceased his tale all more desiring then uprose a peer and why medusa of the sister's soul the serpent twisted tresses wore inquired the youth the story that you ask full well attention claims i what you seek recite for matchless beauty famed with envying hope her crowds of suitors followed nought surpassed amongst all her beauties her bright lovely hair those who had seen her thus have this averred but in minerva's temple ocean's god the maid defiled the virgin goddess shocked her eyes averted and her forehead chaste veiled with the aegis 
then with vengeful power changed the Gorgonian locks to writhing snakes. The snakes thus formed, fixed on her shield she bears. The horrid sight her trembling foes appalls. End of section 8 Section 9 of Metamorphoses This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso Ovid Translated by J. J. Howard The Fifth Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid Part 1 These wonders, while the son of Danae tells, circled around by Cepheus's noble troop, sudden the imperial hall with tumults loud resounds, not clamour such as oft we hear the bridal feasts in songs of joy attend, but what stern war announces. Much the change, the peaceful feast to instant riot turned, seemed like the placid main, when the fierce rage of sudden tempests lash its surges high. First Phineas stepped, the leader of the crowd, soul of the riot, and his ashen spear armed with a brazen point he brandished high. Lo here, he shouts, lo, here I vengeful come on him who claims my spouse, not thy swift wings, nor cheating Jove, changed to a golden shower, shall save thee from my arm. And poised to fling, the dart was held, but Cepheus loud exclaimed, Brother, what dost thou? What dire madness sways to wicked acts thy soul? Is this the meed his gallant deeds deserve? Is this the dower we for the valued life he saved bestow? List but to truth, not Perseus of thy wife bereft thee, but the angry Nereid nymphs, the horned Ammon, and the monster huge, prepared to glut his hunger with my child. Then was thy spouse snatched from thee, when remained of help no hope, to all she lost appeared. Thy savage heart perhaps had even rejoiced to see her perish, that our greater grief might lighten part of thine. Couldst thou her see fast chained before thee? Uncle, spouse betrothed, and yet no aid afford, and stormst thou thus? She to another now her safety owes, and wouldst thou snatch the prize? So high if seems to thee her precious value, thy bold arm, should on the rock where chained she lay, have sought and have deserved her. Now permit that he who sought her there, through whom my failing age is not now childless, grant that he enjoy peaceful what through his merits he no less than our firm compact claims. Not him to thee, but him to certain loss I preference gave. Nought Phineas answered, but his furious eyes, now Perseus, now the king alternate view. Doubtful or this to pierce or that, his pause was short, his powerful arm by fury nerved, at Perseus hurled the quivering spear. In vain, fixed in the couch it stood, quick bounded up the indignant youth, and deep in Phineas's breast had plunged to the point returning, but he shrunk behind an altar, which, O oh shame, preserved the impious villain. Yet not harmless sped the weapon, full in Rhetus's front it stuck, who lifeless dropped, broke in the bone the steel. He spurned and sprinkled all the feast with gore, then raged with ire ungoverned all the crowd, and hurled in showers their weapons. Some fierce cried, Cepheus, no less than Perseus, death deserved. But Cepheus left the hall, adjuring loud the hospitable gods, justice and faith, that he was guiltless of the sanguine fray. Minerva comes, her sheltering aegis shields her brother's body. In his breast she breathes redoubled valour. Attis, Indian bred, whom fair Limnate, Ganges' daughter, bore, is told amid the water's crystal caves scarce sixteen years had seen his beauteous form in gorgeous dress more beauteous still appeared a purple garment fringed around with gold enwrapped him round his neck were golden beads and pins and combs of gold his lovely locks with myrrh sweet smelling held well skilled the youth to hurl the javelin to its distant mark but more to bend the bow him perseus smote the flexile bow just bending with a brand snatched flaming from the altar Crushed, his face a horrid mass of fractured bones appears. His beauteous features Lycabus beheld in blood convulsed, his dearest comrade he, and one who proud his ardent love displayed. Grieved to behold the last expiring breath of at his parting from the furious wound, he seized the bow the youth had bent, and cried, The battle try with me, not long thy boast of conquest o'er a boy, a conquest more by hate than fame attended. Railing thus, the piercing weapon darted from the string. Now Phineas, fearful hand to hand to meet the foe, his javelin hurled, the point ill-aimed on Ida's glanced, who vainly kept aloof with neutral weapon. Phineas stern he viewed, with threatening frown exclaiming, Though no share in this mad broil I took, now Phineas feel the power of him whom thou hast forced a foe. 
and take reciprocally wound for wound. Then from his side the weapon tore to hurl, but fast the life stream gushed, he instant fell. Here by the sword of Clymenus was slain Odites, noblest lord in Cepheus's court. Protena fell by Hepsius. Hepsius sunk beneath Lincides' arm. Amid the throng was old Amathian too, friend to the just and fearer of the gods. Though ancient years forbade his wielding arms, what aid his words could give, he spared not, cursed the impious war in loud upbraidings. As with trembling arms he grasped the altar, Chromus's gory sword his neck divided. On the altar dropped the head, and there the trembling dying tongue faint imprecations uttered. Midst the flames he breathed his spirit forth. By Phineas's hand, Broteus and Ammon fell. The brother twins, unconquered in the fight, the Cestus showered. Could but the Cestus make the falchion yield, but Perseus felt it not. Its point hung fixed amidst his garment's folds. On him he turned the falchion, glutted with Medusa's gore, and plunged it in his breast. Dying, he looks around, with eyes rolling in endless night, for Attis, and upon him drops. Then, pleased thus joined in death, he seeks the shades below. Matthian's son, Cyanian Phorbas, now, and fierce Amphimedon, in Libya born, rush in the fight to mingle. Both fall prone, the slippery earth wide spread with smoking blood. The sword attacks them rising. In his throat, Phorbas receives it, and the others side. But Erethus, of Actor born, who reared an axe tremendous, not the waving sword of Perseus meets, a cup of massive bulk, with both his hands high heaving, fierce he hurls full on his foe. He vomits gory floods, falls back, and strikes with dying head the earth. Then Polydamon falls, sprung from the blood of Queen Semerimus, Lysites brave, the son of Spercius, Abarus, who dwelt on frozen Caucasus, and Helison with unshorn tresses, Phlegius, Clytus too, those with the rest beneath his weapon fall, and on the rising heaps of dead he stands. And fell Ampicus, Ceres' sacred priest, his temples with a snow-white fillet bound. Thou, O Gepetides, whose string to sound such discord knew not, but whose harp still tuned the works of peace in concord with thy voice, wast bidden here to celebrate the feast, and cheer the nuptial banquet with thy song. Him, when at distance Petalus beheld, handling his peaceful instrument, he cried in mocking laughter, Go and end thy song amid the Stygian ghosts, and instant plunged through his left temple his too deadly sword. Sinking, his dying fingers caught the strings, and chance directed gave a mournful sound. Not long the fierce Lycormus saw his fall without revenge. A massy bar of oak from the right gate he tore, and on the bones behind the neck the furious blow was aimed. Prone on the earth, like a crushed ox, he fell. Pelates of Cynephius strove to rend a like strong fastening from the opposing door. The dart of Corythus his tugging hand transfixed, and nailed him to the wood confined. Here Abbas with his spear deep pierced his side. Nor dying fell he, by the hand retained, firm to the post he hung. Melanius fell, the arms of Perseus aiding. Dorillus, the wealthiest lord in Nasamonia's land, fell too beside him. Rich was he in fields, in wide extent no lands with his could vie, nor equal his in hoarded heaps of grain. Obliquely in his groin the missive spear stuck deep, a mortal spot, his Bactrian foe his rolling eyes beheld, and dying breath in sobs convulsive flitting, and exclaimed, This spot thou pressest now of all thy lands possess, and turning left the lifeless course. Avenging Perseus hurls at him the spear, torn from the smoking wound. The point received full in the nostrils pierces through the neck. Before, behind, exposed the weapon stands. Now fortune aids his blows. The brother pair, Clanis and Clitius, fall, by different wounds. Hurled by his nervous arm, the ashen spear transfixed the thighs of Clitius. Clanis died, biting the steel that pierced his mouth. Now fell Mendesian Celadon, and Astrius born by Hebrew mother to a doubtful sire. Now died Ethion, once deep skilled to see the future fates, now by his skill deceived. Thoactes, whom the monarch's armour bore, and base Argertes, murderer of his sire. Crowds, though he conquers, thickening crowds remain, for all united wage on him the war. In every quarter fight the press, conspired to aid a cause to worth and faith opposed. The sire with useless piety, the queen and new-made bride the hero's party take, and fill the hall with screams, the clang of arms and groans of dying men their screamings drown. The household deities polluted once, the fierce Bellona bathes with gore again, with double fury lighting up the war. 
now phineas followed by a furious throng surrounds him single thicker fly their darts than wintry hail on every side his sight they cloud and deafening whiz his ears around by crowds oppressed retreating perseus leans his shoulders against a massive pillar's height and safe behind dares all the furious fight caonian molpius rushes on his left ethemon nabathean on his right thus a fierce tiger urged by famine hears combined the lowings of two different herds far distant in the vale in doubt he stands on this or that to rush and furious burns on both at once to thunder perseus so to left and right inclined at once to bear pierced first the thigh of molpius straight he fled unfollowed for ethemon fiercely pressed he furious aiming at the hero's neck with ill-directed strength his weapon broke against a column back the shivered point sprung and his throat transfixed slight was the wound to doom to death unable perseus plunged his mortal falchion as the trembling wretch his helpless arms extended in his breast but now his valour perseus found oppressed by crowds unequal and aloud exclaimed since thus you force me from my very foe more aid i'll ask my friends avert your eyes then showed the gorgon's head go elsewhere seek said thessalus for those such sights may move the deadly javelin poising in his hand in act to throw a marble form he stands in the same posture near him ampyx reared against the brave lincides breast his sword his upraised hand was hardened here or there to wave unable nilius now displayed seven argent streams upon a shield of gold false boasting offspring from the seven-mouthed nile and cried lo perseus whence my race derived down to the silent shades this solace bear by such a hand to die the final words were lost his sounding voice abrupt was stayed his opened mouth still seemed the words to form incapable to utter eric stormed at these exclaiming not the gorgon's hairs freeze ye but your own trembling dastard souls rush forth with me and on the earth lay low the youth who battles thus with magic arms fierce had he rushed but firmly fixed his feet held him to earth a rigid fastened stone a statue armed these well their fate deserved but one acontius while in aid he fought of perseus sudden stood to stone congealed as stared the gorgon luckless in his face him saw astyages but thought he lived and fierce attacked him with a mighty sword shrill tinkling sounds the blow astonished stands astyages astonished seems the stone for while he stares he too to marble turns long were the tale of each plebeian death to tell two hundred still unhurt remain by gorgon's head two hundred stiffened stand when phineas seems the strife unjust to mourn but what to act remains around him crowd the forms of numerous friends his friends he knows their aid entreats and calls on each by name still doubting seizes those his grasp can reach and finds them stone averse he turns his eyes raises his conscious arms and hands oblique and suppliant begs go perseus conqueror go remove that dreadful monster bear away that stone creating visage gorgon's head whate'er it be i pray thee bear it hence nor hate nor lust of empire raised our arms against thee for my wife alone we ward thy cause by merit best mine but by time bravest of men me much it grieves i e'er thy claim opposed existence only give all else be thine to him as thus he begged fearing his eyes to whom he suppliant spoke to turn thou dastard phineus perseus cried what i can grant i will and what i grant to souls like thine a mighty boon must seem dispel thy terror rest from steel secure yet must a during monument remain still in the dwelling of my spouse's sire conspicuous so my bride may daily see her imaged husband speaking thus he held the gorgon's head where pallid phineas turned so turning stiffened stood the neck so turned appeared the inverted eyes the humid balls to stone concreted still the timid look and suppliant face and tame petitioning arms and guilty awestruck look in stone remained now victor abentiades reseeks his soil paternal with his well-earned bride and in his undeserving grandsire's aid avenging war on Pretus, he declares Pretus then all acrisius's cities held from each possession forced his brother fled but arms and battled to towns like ill-possessed the head snake curled obliged at once to stoop yet not the youth's bold valour amply proved by all his brave achievements nor his toils thee polydectes moved who ruled the isle the poultry isle seraphus 
stubborn still inexorable hatred thou maintainst endless against him burns thy rage unjust nay from his true deserts thou wouldst detract and swearest medusa's death a fiction formed then perseus thus if true i speak or no experience close my friends your eyes as forth he held the gorgon bloodless stood the face of polydectes turned a marble form thus far minerva aided side by side her brother golden-born then swiftly flew wrapped in a cloud opaque and distant left seraphus on she flies to right she leaves Sithnos and giaros and cross the main the shortest route she hastens speeds to thebes and seeks the heliconian nymphs whose mount alighting feels her first the learned nine thus she bespeaks fame tells a new-made spring burst from a blow the swift-winged horse's hoof inflicted lo the cause i hither come that steed i saw spring from his mother's blood fain would i this new prodigy behold urania gave reply o maid divine what cause soe'er has with thy presence graced our dwelling proves to us a grateful boon fame speaks not false our fountain surely sprung soul from pegasus speaking thus she leads the virgin goddess to the sacred streams who long the spring admired the spring produced from the hoof's blow around surveying views the groves of ancient trees the grots the plants of ever varied tint and happy calls the learned nymphs who such a spot possessed then thus a sister o divinest maid our choir to join most worthy did not aims of loftier import tempt thy warlike soul right hast thou spoke our habitation well and well our arts thy highest praises claim blessed were our lot if still from danger free but nought a villain's daring power restrains and terror soon our virgin minds appalls even now the dread pyrenius to my eyes stands present to its wonted calm not yet restored my mind with furious thracian bands doubtless he conquered and the phocian fields and held the sway unjust parnassus's fane we sought the usurper there beheld us pass and feigning reverence for our power divine worshipped and then addressed us whom he knew here o ye muses rest nor dubious stand but straight beneath my sheltering roof avoid the cloudy heaven and rain for fast it showered oft mighty deities have entered roofs less pompous by his invitation urged and by the tempest we exceed and step within the hall the pelting showers now ceased oster by boreas vanquished fled the clouds black lowering and the face of heaven left clear anxious we wish to go pyrenius fast his dwelling closes and rough force prepares wings we assume and from his force escape he standing on the loftiest turret's top like us his flight about to wing exclaims the path you lead that path will i pursue then madly from the tower's most lofty wall dashed on his face he fell and dying strewed his shattered bones upon the blood-stained ground as spoke the muse thus loud and strong was heard of fluttering pinions in the air the sound and hailing voices from high branches came jove's daughter then around inquiring looked the sound she hears so like the human voice from human voice she deems them birds the sound emitted magpies were they magpies nine their doom lamenting on the bowers they sat aping in voice their neighbours all around then to the wandering goddess thus the muse explained these vanquished in the arduous strife of song to us submitting swell the crowd of feathered flyers in pelenian lands most rich was pierus their sire to him evipe of peonia bore the nymphs nine times invoking great lucina's aid vain of their number proud the sister crew in folly journeyed through thessalia's towns and through the towns of greece when here arrived thus to the test of power their words provoke at length desist to cheat the senseless crowd with harmony pretended thespian maids with us contend if faith your talents give for such a trial ye in voice and skill surpass us not our numbers are the same if vanquished yield the medusian fount and hyantian agonipe we if conquered all amanthea's regions seed far as peonius snows the nymphs around the contest shall decide deep shame we felt thus to contend but deeper shame appeared to yield without contention to their boast the nymphs elected to adjudge the prize swear by the floods and on the living rock seated await to hear the rival songs then one impatient who should first commence or we or they arises sings the war of gods and giants to the rebels gives false praises and the high celestial's power much underrating tells how typhon raised from earth's most deep recesses struck with fear all heaven 
each god betook him straight to flight far distant till the egyptian land received each wearied foot where nile's dissevered stream pours in seven mouths how earth-born typhon here they tell pursued them and each god concealed in feigned resemblance cheated there his power jove so she sung a leading ram became when still the libyans form their ammon horned the crow apollo hid a goat the son of simile became diana skulked in shape a cat a snow-white cow concealed the form of juno venus seemed a fish and neath an ibis hermes safely crouched thus far she moved her vocal lips thus far her lyre her voice attended then they call for our aeonian song but that to hear perchance your leisure suits not pressing deeds unlike our songs must more your time demand pallas replies be hesitation far and all your song from first commence relate so saying in the forest's pleasing shade she rested while the muse proceeding spoke end of section nine Section 10 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The Fifth Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 2. To one the sole contending task we give. Calliope. She rises neatly bound her flowing tresses with an ivy wreath. With dexterous thumb the trembling strings she tries. Then to their quivering sounds this song subjoins. Ceres at first with crooked plough upturned the glebe. She first mild fruits and milder corn gave to the earth, and rules to tend them gave. All gifts from her proceed. To her the song I raise. Would that my best exerted power a song to suit thy least deserts could form, O goddess, worthy of our loftiest praise. The vast Sicilian isle, with pressure huge thrown o'er them, deep the limbs gigantic ways of huge typhius who the heavenly throne had dared to hope for struggling oft he tries his efforts daily bent to lift his load but hard pelorus on his right hand lies orsonia facing while pachine rests heavy to left wide o'er his giant thighs spreads lilybeum etna presses down his head beneath whose crater laid supine from his hot mouth he ashes sends and flames thus with his body labouring to remove the ponderous load of earth whole towns o'erwhelm and lofty hills o'erturn trembles the ground and hell's dread monarch fears a chasm should gape and through the opening wide his realm display the trembling ghosts with light uncustomed scared the shock to meet expecting starts the king quick from his cloudy throne and in his car borne by his sable steeds with care surveys cecilia's deep foundations wide around exploring all then with his toils content no ruined part detected flings aside each apprehension strolling now at ease him venus from the erycinian hill espied and to her feathered son who lay clasped in her arms exclaimed o cupid son my sole assistant sole defence and aid seize now that weapon which o'er all has sway that piercing dart and deep within the breast of the dark god whose lot was given to rule the nether regions of the triple realm bury it all the gods thy might confess even jove himself the ocean powers allow thy rule and he whom ocean's powers obey why then should tartarus alone evade thy thrall why not my empire and thine own with that complete of all the world's extent a third is staked nay more our utmost power heaven our own seat condemns thy potent sway and mine alike impaired behold'st thou not minerva with the quiver-bearing maid deserting me thus will the blooming child of ceres if we grant it still remain inviolate a virgin thither tend her anxious hopes but thou if dear thou hold'st our mutual realm the virgin goddess link in union with her uncle venus spoke his quiver he unlooses from the heap of darts by her directed one selects than which none bore a keener point than which none flew more certain trusty to the string bends to his knee the yielding horn then sends through pluto's heart the bearded arrow sure not far from enna's walls a lake expands profound in watery stores pagusa named not even caista's murmuring stream e'er heard the songster swans more frequent woods o'er top the waters rising round on every side and veil from phoebus's rays the surface cool a shade the branches form the moist earth round produces purple flowers 
perpetual spring here reigns while straying sportive in this grove here proserpine the violet cropped and here the lily fair with childish ardour warmed her bosom filling and her basket high proud to surpass her comrades all around in skilful culling she herself was seen was chosen and by dis was snatched away love urged him to the deed the frighted maid loud on her mother and her comrades called but chief her mother with lamenting shrieks then as her robe she rent the well-culled flowers slipped through the loosened folds in this so great her girlish innocence her tears increased swiftly the robber speeds his car along urging his steeds exertions each by name above their high manes and necks the rusty reins rattling as o'er the wide palician lake where the cleft earth with sulphur boils he whirls and where the bacchiads from the double sea of corinth wandering raised their lofty walls twixt two unequal havens midst the stream pisian arethusa and the lake of cyanea seen close round embraced by narrowing horns this cyanea was once of all cecilia's nymphs the fairest deemed who gave the lake her name she to the waist upraised amidst the waters stood and knew the god and here thy speed must stay exclaimed nor e'er of ceres hope the son-in-law gainst her consent to be beseechings bland not rugged rape thy purposed hope might gain if lofty things with low i durst compare anapis loved me but the nuptial couch i pressed entreated not as thus in dread she said her arms extended wide and stopped his course the angry son of saturn flames swelling with rage exhorts his furious steeds throws with a forceful arm and buries deep his regal sceptre in the lowest gulf wide gapes the stricken earth an opening gives to hell and headlong down the car descends now equal cyane the goddess mourns so forced and her own sacred stream despised a cureless wound her silent breast contains and all in tears she wastes lost in those waves where lately sovereign goddess she had ruled soft grow her limbs and flexile seem her bones her nails their hardness lose the tenderest parts melt into water long before the rest her tresses green her fingers legs and feet quickly this change the smaller limbs perceive to cooling rills transformed next after these her back her shoulders breasts and sides dissolve and vanish all in streams a limpid flood now fills the veins that once in purple flowed nought of the nymph to fill the grasp remains meantime the trembling mother through the earth and o'er the main the goddess vainly sought aurora rising with her locks of gold nor hesper sinking saw her labours cease with either hand at etna's flaming mouth a torch she lighted restless these she bore in dewy darkness then renewed again her labour till fair day made blunt the stars from sol's first rising till his evening fall wearied at length and parched with thirst no stream her lips to moisten nigh by chance she spied a straw thatched cot and knocked the humble door an ancient dame thence stepped the goddess saw and brought her who for water simply craved a pleasing draught where roasted grain had boiled swallowing the gift presented rudely came a brazen fronted boy and facing stood then laughing mocked to see her greedy drink angry grew ceres all the offered draught yet unconsumed she drenched him as he jeered with barley mixed with liquid straight his face the spots imbibed and what but now as arms he bore as legs he carries to his limbs thus changed a tail is added shrunk in size small is his power to arm shorter he seems than the small lizard swift away he fled as wandering weeping tried the dame to clasp his changing form and gained a sheltering hole well suits his star-like skin the name he bears long were the tale to tell what tracts of land what tracts of sea the wandering goddess passed earth now no spot unsearched affording back to sicily she turns with close research each part exploring till at length she comes to cyane who all the tale had told if still unchanged much as she wished to speak nor lips nor tongue can aid her nought remains speech to afford yet plainer sign she gives the zone of proserpine upon her waves light floating in the sacred stream it fell dropped as she passed the place well ceres knew the sight and then as then her loss first known tore her dishevelled tresses beat her breast with blows on blows redoubled still unknown the spot that holds her every part of earth blaming ungrateful worthless of her fruits but chief trinacria in whose isle was found the vestige of her loss for this she breaks with furious hand the glebe upturning plough and angry to an equal death she dooms the tiller and his ox forbids the fields back to return the entrusted grain the seeds all rotting 
now that fertile land renowned through the wide earth lies useless all the grain dies in the earliest shoots now scorching rays now floods of rain destroy it noxious stars now harm now blighting winds and hungry birds the scattered seed devour the darnel springs the thistle and the knotgrass thick which choke the sprouting wheat and make the harvest void now arethusa from the elean waves exalts her head her dropping tresses flung back from her forehead parting shade her ears and thus o goddess mother of the maid so sought through earth mother of all earth's fruits cease now thy toilsome labour cease thine ire against the land that proved to thee so true thine ire unmerited unwilling she oped for the spoil a passage hither i no suppliant for my native isle approach an alien here sojourning pisa's land my country near there ellis first i sprung a stranger now in sicily i dwell this soil more grateful far than is my own this soil where i my household gods have placed i arethusa and have fixed my seat preserve mild goddess why i changed my land why to ortigia through the wide waves borne i came a more appropriate hour will ask when you from care relieved can grant your ear with brow unclouded through the opening earth i flow and borne through subterraneous depths here lift again my head again behold the long lost stars hence was my lot to see as passed my stream close by the stygian gulf your proserpine sad still her face appeared nor fear had wholly left it yet she reigns a queen the mightiest in the realm of shade the powerful consort of the infernal king like marble at the words the mother stands stupid with grief and long astounded seems sorrow by heavier sorrow now surpassed then in her chariot mounts the ethereal sky and stands indignant at the imperial throne her locks wild flowing and her face in clouds lo here a suppliant jove she cried i come to beg for her my daughter and thine own for if no favour may the mother find the daughter's claim may move let not thy child deserve thy care the less as born of me lo my lost maid so long so vainly sought at length is found if finding we may call a surer loss if finding we may call the knowledge where she is her ravished charms i'll pardon let him but my child restore what though a robber might my daughter wed thine sure is worthy of a different mate then jove our daughter our dear mutual pledge as yours so mine demands our mutual care but rightly still affairs if we design what you lament will no injustice prove love only sure a son-in-law like him can ne'er degrade will you consent but yield grant naught beyond tis no such trivial boast jove's brother to be called how then if more i claim preeminence from chance alone still if so obstinate your wish remains for separation go let proserpine to heaven return on this condition strict her lips no food have touched so will the fates he ceased glad ceres certain to regain her daughter knew not what the fates forbade her fast was broken thoughtless as she strayed around the garden from a bending tree she plucked a fair pomegranate and seven seeds from the pale rind she picked and ate none saw save one ascalaphus the luckless deed whom Orphne, famed avernus's nymphs among to acheron long since tis said produced beneath a dusky cave he cruel told and his discovery stayed the hoped return much wept the queen of pluto but she changed the vile informer to an hideous shape sprinkled with streams of phlegathon his head feathered appears with beak and monstrous eyes spoiled of his shape with yellow feathers clothed large grows his head bent are his lengthened nails scarcely he moves the pinions which are shot light from his lazy arms a filthy bird becoming constant presager of woe an owl inactive omen dire to man well he by his informing tongue deserved his doom but Achaloides, from whence your wings and bird-like feet whilst still you bear your virgin features was it that you mixed when proserpine the vernal flowers would cull amidst her numerous train the nymph you sought through earth's extent in vain that ocean too your anxious search might scape not straight you prayed for waving wings to winnow o'er the deep and favouring gods you found of golden hue quick shooting wings your arms you saw bespread but lest your inbred song which every ear had charmed and lest your highly gifted voice your tongue should fail to use a virgin face and speech yet human are indulged you still now jove as umpire twixt the angry pair his mourning sister and his brother bids the year revolving either side oblige 
now will the goddess mutual in each realm six months with ceres dwell in heaven and six reign with her spouse in hell straight were perceived the goddess's countenance and demeanour changed for now her forehead which had still retained to pluto even a sad and sorrowing gloom gladdened so phoebus long in cloudy shade enveloped shines their umbrous veil dispersed now ceres calm her daughter safe regained inquires o arethusa say the cause which hither brought thee why a sacred fount hushed were the waves and from the lowest depths the goddess raised her head and as she told the old amours the flood of ellis knew pressed out the water from her tresses green once with the nymphs that on achaia's hills rove was i seen none closer beat than i the thickets none than i more skilful spread than snaring net yet though no fame i sought for beauty though robust i bore the name of beauteous whilst the constant theme of praise my features fair to me no pleasure gave what other nymphs inspire with joyful pride corporeal charms did but my blushes raise to please i thought a crime once tired with sport the stymphaladian forest i had left warm was the day i with redoubled heat glowed from my toil a gliding stream i found by ripplings undisturbed silent and smooth it flowed so clear that every stone was seen on the deep bottom gently crept the waves to creep scarce seeming o'er the shelving banks the stream-fed poplar and the willow hoar a grateful shadow cast the brink i reached dipped first my feet then waded to my knee not yet content i loosed my zone and hung upon a bending osier my soft robe then naked plunged amid the stream the waves beating and sporting in a thousand shapes my arms around in every posture flung a strange unusual murmur seemed to sound deep from the bottom terror struck i gained the nearest brink when whither dost thou fly o arethusa whither dost thou fly alpheus from his water's horse exclaimed bestless i fled for on the opposing bank my garment hung fiercer the god pursued fiercer he burned all naked as i ran prepared more ready for his force i seemed such was my flight and such was his pursuit as when on trembling wings before the hawk fly the mild doves as when the hawk fierce drives the trembling doves before him long the chase i bore orchomenus and surfus soon i passed and passed silene and the caves of menelus and erymanthus's frosts to ellis ere his speed could cope with mine in strength unequal i sustained no more the toilsome race he starter flagged less soon but still o'er plains i ran o'er mountains thick with forests clad o'er stones and rugged rocks and pathless spots behind me phoebus shone i saw if fear deceived me not far spread his shade before me what could less deceive i heard his footsteps and his breath full strong blew on my banded tresses wearied faint with the long flight i cried dictina chaste lost am i help a quiver bearing nymph one who thy bow has oft entrusted born and oft thy quiver loaded full with darts moved was the goddess from the darkest clouds she won selected and around me threw the river god about the misty vale pride anxious and unwitting deeply groped within the hollow cloud unconscious twice the spot he compassed where diana thought my safety surest twice he then aloud ho arethusa arethusa called what terror seized my soul not less the dread of lambs when round the sheltering fold they hear the wolves loud howling or the trembling hare close in a bramble hid who sees approach the wide-mouthed hostile hounds and fears to move further he passed not for beyond the place no footsteps he discerned but guarding watched around the mist so closely thus besieged my limbs a cold sweat seized cerulean drops fell from my body when my feet i moved a pool remained fast dropped my hair in dew and speedier than the wondrous tale i tell changed to a stream i flowed but soon the god knew his loved waters laid the man aside and straight assumed his proper watery form with mine to mingle dian cleft the ground sinking through caverns dark i held my way and reached ortigia from the goddess named there first ascending viewed the upper skies here arethusa ceased then ceres yokes the coupled dragons to her car their mouths curbed by the reins and through the air is borne midway twixt heaven and earth at pallas's town arrived triptolemus the carus ends by her commissioned bad to spread the seed entrusted part on ground untilled before and part on land which long had fallow laid o'er europe now and asia's lands the youth sublimely sails and reaches scythia's clime where lyncus ruled 
beneath the monarch's roof here entered and to him who curious sought how there he journeyed what his journey's cause his name and country thus the youth replied athens the famed my country and my name triptolemus but neither o'er the main born in a ship nor travelling slow by land i hither came my path was through the air i bring the gift of ceres scattered wide through all your spacious fields quickly restored in fruitful crops the wholesome food will spring the barbarous monarch envious he should bear so great a blessing takes him for his guest and when with sleep weighed down attacks him raised to pierce his bosom was the sword just then the wretch by ceres to a lynx was turned then mounts again the youth and through the air bids him once more the sacred dragon's steer our chosen champion ended here her lays and all the nymphs unanimous exclaimed the heliconian goddesses have gained vanquished the others railed when she resumed is not your punishment enough deserved foiled in the contest must you swell your crime with base revilings patient now no more to punish we begin what anger bids we now perform loud laughed the scornful maids our threatening words despised and strove to speak and clapped with outcries menacing their hands when from their fingers shooting plumes they spy and feathers shade their arms her sister's face each sees to harden in an horny beak to beat their bosoms trying with raised arms in air suspended on those arms they move the new-shaped birds the sylvan tribes increase magpies the scandal of the grove thus changed their former eloquence they still maintain in hoarse garrulity and empty noise End of section 10section eleven of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the sixth book of the metamorphoses of ovid part one minerva pleased attention to the muse while thus she spoke afforded praised the song and praised the just resentment of the maids then to herself the vengeance others take merely to praise were mean i too should claim like praise for like revenge nor longer bear my power condemned by who unpunished live and on arachne fair maeonian maid she turns her vengeful mind whose skill she heard rivalled her own in labours of the loom no fame her natal town no fame her sire on her bestowed her skill conferred renown idmon of colophon her humble sire soaked in the phocian dye the spongy wool her mother late deceased from lowest stock had sprung and wedded with an equal mate yet had she gained through all the lydian towns for skill a mighty fame though born so low though small high papi was her sole abode oft would the nymphs the vine-clad tmolus leave to view her wondrous work oft would the nymphs in admiration quit pactolus's waves nor pleasure only gave the finished robe when viewed but while she worked she gave delight such comely grace in every turn appeared whether she rounded into balls the wool or with her fingers mollified the fleece and combed at floating light in cloudy waves or her smooth spindle twirled with agile thumb or with her needle painted plain was seen her skill from palace learnt this to concede unwilling she even such a tutor scorned exclaiming come let her the contest try if vanquished let her fix my well-earned fate palace an ancient matron's form conceals grey hairs thin strew her temples and a staff supports her tottering limbs while thus she speaks old age though little prized much good attends experience always grows with lengthened years spurn not my admonition great thy fame midst mortals for the wonders of the loom great may it be but to immortals yield bold nymph retract and pardon for thy words with suppliant voice require pallas will grant sternly the damsel views her quits the threads unfinished scarce her hand from force restrains and rage in all her features flushing fierce thus to the goddess well disguised she speaks weak dotard spent with too great gift of years cursed with too long existence hence be gone such admonition to thy daughters give if daughters hast thou or thy sons have wives enough for me my inbred wisdom serves hope not that aught thy vain advice has swayed my purpose still my challenge holds the same why comes your goddess not why shuns she still the trying contest then the goddess lo she comes and flung her aged form aside minerva's form displaying every nymph and every dame migdonian lowly bent in veneration 
while arachne's soul stood steadfast unalarmed but yet she blushed a sudden flush her angry face deep tinged but sudden faded pale a ruddy glow thus taints the early sky when first the morn arises quickly from the solar ray paling to brightness on her purposed boast still stubborn bent she obstinately courts her sure destruction for the empty hope of conquest in the strife so madly urged no more jove's maid refuses gives no more her empty admonitions nor delays the contest each her station straight assumes tighten each web each slender thread prepare firm to the beam the cloth is fixed the reed the warp divides with pointed shuttle swift gliding between which quick their fingers throw quick extricate and with the toothy comb firm pressed between the warp the threads unite both hasten now their garments round them girt their skilful hands they ply their toil forgot in anxious wish for conquest there appeared the wool of tyrian dye and softening taints lost imperceptible so seems the arch colouring a spacious portion of the sky struck by the rays of phoebus when the showers recede a thousand varying tinges shine the soft transition mocks the straining eye so like the shades which join though far distinct their distant taints in slender threads they twist the pliant gold and in the web display each as she works an ancient story fair minerva paints the rock of mars so famed in cecrop's city and the well-known strife to name the town twice six celestials sat on their high thrones great jupiter around in gravity majestic every god bore his celestial features jove appeared in royal dignity the ocean power standing she pictured with his trident huge smiting the rugged rock from the cleft stone leapt forth a steed and thence the town to name the privilege he claimed herself she paints shielded and armed with keenly pointed spear helmed was her head her breast the aegis bore struck by her spear the earth a hoary tree she shows producing loaded thick with fruit the wandering gods the gift admire the prize to her awarded ends the glorious work more that the daring rival of her art should learn experimental what reward her mad attempt might hope four parts she adds and every part a test of power presents bright the small figures in her colours shine this angle thracian rhodope contains with hemus both their mortal bodies now to frozen mountains changed whose lofty pride assumed the titles of celestial powers another corner held the wretched fate felt by pygmaea's matron juno bade her vanquished rival soar aloft a crane and on her people wage continual war antigone she paints audacious she with jove's imperial consort durst contend by jove's imperial queen she flits a bird nor aids her ilium aught nor aids her sire leomedon upborne on snowy wings a stork she rises loud with chattering bill she noises in the sole remaining part was childless cynarus in close embrace grasping the temple's steps his daughters once and as he lies extended on the stone in marble seems to weep around the piece she spreads the peaceful olive all complete her work is ended with her favourite tree arachne paints europa by a bull deceived the god a real bull appears and real seem the waves she backward turned views the receding shore and seems to shriek loud to her lost companions seems to dread the dashing waves and timid shrinks her feet she draws asteria by the god o'erpowered clothed in an eagle leader fair she lays beneath his wings when he a swan appears she adds how jove beneath a satyr's shape concealed the beauteous child of nycteus filled with a twin offspring in amphitryon's form alcmena thou wert pressed a golden shower danae deceived a flame aegina caught a shepherd's shape mnemosyne beguiled and fair deus trusts a speckled snake thee neptune too she painted for the maid aeolian to a threatening bull transformed thou as enipeus didst the alloyed twins beget beneath the semblance of a ram theophany was cheated ceres mild of brain inventress with her yellow locks in shape a courser felt thy ardent love medusa mother of the flying steed nymph of the snaky tresses in a bird concealed you forced melantho in a fish to these the damsel all well-suiting forms dispensed and all well-suiting scenes attend and there apollo in a herdsman's guise wanders and now he soars a plumy hawk now stalks a lordly lion as a swain macarian isse felt his amorous guile erigone to bacchus's flame was duped beneath a well-seamed grape 
saturn produced the centaur doubly shaped in form as steed her webs extremes a slender border girt where flowery wreaths and twining ivy blend not pallas not even envy's rankling soul could blame the work the bright immortal grieved to view her rival's merit angry tore the picture glowing with celestial crimes a box and shuttle grasping in her hand thrice on the forehead of the Edmonian maid she struck no more arachne hapless bore but twisted round her neck with desperate pride a cord the deed minerva pitying saw and checked her rash suspension impious wretch still live she cried but still suspended hang cursed to futurity for all thy race thy sons and grandsons to the latest day alike shall feel the sentence speaking thus the juice of hecate's baleful plant she throws instant be sprinkled by the noxious drops her tresses fall her nose and ears are lost her body shrinks her head is lessened more her slender fingers root within her sides serving as legs her belly forms the rest from whence her thread she still derives and spins her art pursuing in the spider's shape all lydia rung the wondrous rumour spread through every phrygian town the tale employed the tongues of all mankind the nymph was known ere yet amphion's nuptial bed she pressed to niobe she when a virgin dwelt in lydian sipulus she still unmoved arachne's neighbouring fate not heeded still proudly refused before the gods to bend and spoke in haughty boasting much her pride by favouring gifts was swollen not the fine skill amphion practised not the lofty birth each claimed not all their mighty kingdom's power so raised her soul of all though justly proud as her bright offspring justly were she called most blessed of mothers but her bliss too great seemed to herself and caused a dread reverse now manto sprung from old tiresias skilled in future fate impelled by power divine in every street with wild prophetic tongue exclaimed ye theban matrons haste in crowds your incense offer and your pious prayers to great latona and the heavenly twins latona's offspring all your temples bound with laurel garlands this the goddess bids through me commands it all of thebes obey and gird their foreheads with the ordered leaves the incense burn and with the sacred flames their pious prayers ascend lo midst a crowd of nymphs attendant far conspicuous scene comes niobe in gorgeous phrygian robe inwrought with gold attired beauteous her form beauteous as rage permitted angry shook her graceful head and angry shook the locks that o'er each shoulder waved proudly she towered her haughty eyes round from her lofty stand wide darting cried what madness this to place reported gods above the gods you see why to latona's altars bend ye low nor incense burn before my power divine my sire was tantalus of mortal soul celestial feasts he shared a pleiad nymph me bore my grandsire is the mighty king whose shoulders all the load of heaven sustain jove is my father's parent him i boast as sire-in-law too all the phrygian towns bend to my sway the hall of cadmus owns me sovereign mistress thebes high towering walls raised by my consort's lute and all the crowd who dwell enclosed his rule and mine obey where'er within my palace turn mine eyes treasures immense i view brightness divine i boast to all seven blooming daughters add and seven fair sons through whom i soon expect if hymen favours seven more sons to see and seven more daughters need ye further seek whence i have cause for boasting dare ye still latona from titanian chaos sprung the unknown chaos she to whom all earth in bearing pangs the smallest space denied this wretch to my divinity prefer not heaven your goddess would receive not earth not ocean exiled from the world she weeped till delos sorrowing wanderer like herself exclaimed thou dreary wanderest o'er the earth i o'er the main and sympathizing thus a resting spot afforded there become of two the mother only can she vie with one whose womb has sevenfold hers surpassed blessed am i who can slightly ere arraign to happiness my claim blessed will i still continue who my bliss can ever doubt abundance guards its surety far beyond the power of fortune is my lot upraised snatch them in numbers from me crowds more great must still remain my happy state contemns even now the threats of danger grant the power of fate this nation of my womb to thin of part deprived impossible i shrink to poor latona's too 
how scant removed from mothers childless quit your rights quick haste and tear those garlands from your flowing hair aside the garlands thrown and incomplete the rites relinquished what the thebans could they gave their whispering prayers the matron dame addressed with ire the angry goddess flamed and thus on synthesis lofty top bespoke her double offspring o oh, my children see your parent proud your parent to be called to no celestial yielding save the queen of jove supreme lo doubted is my claim to rites divine and from the altars burnt to me from endless ages driven i go save by my children succoured nor this grief alone me irks for niobe me mocks her daring crime increasing proud she sets her offspring far above you me too she spurns to her in number yielding childless calls my bed and proves the impious stock which gave her tongue first utterance more latona felt prepared to utter more beseechings bland for her young offspring when apollo cried enough desist to plain delay is long till vengeance dian joined him in his ire swift gliding down the sky and veiled in clouds on cadmus's roof they lighted wide was spread a level plain by constant hoofs well beat the city's walls adjoining crowding wheels and coursers feet the rolling dust upturned here of amphion's offspring daily some mount their fleet steeds their trappings gaily press of tyrian dye heavy with gold the reins they guide mid these is minas primal born of niobe as round the circling course his well-trained steed he sped and strenuous curbed his foaming mouth loudly ah me exclaimed as through his bosom deep the dart was driven dropped from his dying hands the slackened reins slowly and sidelong from his courser's back he tumbled sipulus gave unchecked scope to his when through the empty air he heard the rattling quiver sound thus speeding clouds beheld the guider of the ruling helm the threatening tempest fearing looses wide his every sail to catch the lightest breeze loose flowed his reins the inevitable dart the flowing reins quick followed quivering shook fixed in his upper neck the naked steel far through his throat protruding prone he fell o'er his high courser's head his smoking gore the ground defiling hapless phidemus and tantalus his grandsire's name who bore their customed sport laborious ended strove with youthful vigour in the wrestling toil now breast to breast they strained with nervous grasp when the swift arrow from the bended horn both bodies pierced as close both bodies joined at once they groaned at once their limbs they threw with agonies convulsed prone on the earth at once their rolling eyes the light forsook at once their souls were yielded forth to air alfino saw and smote his grieving breast flew to their pallid limbs and as he raised their bodies in the pious office fell for phoebus drove his fate winged arrow deep through what his heart enclosed sudden withdrawn on the barbed head the mangled lungs were stuck and high in air his soul gushed forth in blood but beardless damasichthon by a wound not single fell as those struck where the leg to form begins and where the nervous ham a yielding joint supplies the deadly dart to draw essaying in his throat full driven up to the feathered head another came the sanguine flood expelled it gushing high cutting the distant air with outstretched arms ilioneus the last besought in vain exclaiming spare me spare me all ye gods witless that all not joined to cause his woe the god was touched with pity touched too late already shot the irrevocable dart yet light the blow was given and mild the wound that pierced his heart and sent his soul aloft the rumoured ill the mourning people's groans the servants tears soon made the mother know the sudden ruin wondering first she stands to see so great heaven's power then angry flames indignant that such power they dare to use the sire amphion in his bosom plunged his sword and ended life at once and woe heavens how removed this niobe from her who drove so lately from latona's fane the pious crowds who marched in lofty state through every street of thebes an envied sight now to be wept by even her bitterest foes prostrate upon their gelid limbs she lies now this now that her trembling kisses press her livid arms high stretching unto heaven exclaims enjoy latona cruel dame my sorrows feed on all my wretched woes glut with my load of grief thy savage soul feast thy fell heart with seven funereal scenes triumph victorious foe conqueror exult victorious said i how 
to wretched me still more are left than joyful thou canst boast superior i midst all this loss remain she spoke the twanging bowstring sounded loud terrific noise save niobe to all she stood audacious callous in her crime in mourning vesture clad with tresses loose around the funeral couches of the slain the weeping sisters stood one strives to pluck the deep-struck arrow from her bowels falls and fainting dies her brother's clay-cold corse pressed with her lips another's soothing words her hapless parents strive to cheer struck dumb she bends beneath an unseen wound her words reach not her parent till her life is fled this vainly flying falls that drops in death upon her sister's body one to hide attempts another pale and trembling dies six now lie breathless each by varied wounds one soul remaining whom the mother shields wrapped in her vest her body o'er her flung exclaiming leave me this my youngest last least of my mighty numbers one alone but while she prays the damsel prayed for dies of all deprived the solitary dame amid the lifeless bodies of her sons her daughters and her spouse by sorrows steeled sits hardened no light gale her tresses moves no blood her reddened cheeks contain her eyes motionless glare upon her mournful face life quits the statue even her tongue congeals within her stony palate vital floods cease in her veins to flow her neck to bow resists her arms to move in graceful guise her feet to step and even to stone are turned her inmost bowels still to weep she seems wrapped in a furious whirlwind distant far her natal soil receives her there fixed high on a hill's utmost summit still she melts still does the rigid marble flow in tears now every theban male and female all dread the fierce anger of the powers of heaven and with redoubled fervour lowly bend and own the twin producing goddess's power then as oft seen they ancient tales recount reminded by events of recent date thus one relates long since some clowns who tilled the fertile fields of lycia felt the ire of this high goddess whom they durst despise obscure the fact itself for lo the race who suffered yet most wondrous was the deed myself have seen the marsh the lake have seen famed for the prodigy my aged sire to toil unable on the lengthened road me thither sent and heard of choicest beeves thence to conduct to my unpractised steps a guiding native of the land he gave while we the pastures traversed lo we found an ancient altar midst a spacious lake erected black with sacrificing dust with waving reeds surrounded here my guide halted and softly whispered bless me power and i like softly whispering bless me cried then asked if nymph or fawn or native god the altar owned when thus my guide replied no mountain god o youth this altar claims but her whom once imperial juno's rage stern interdicted from firm earth's extent whom scarce the wandering delos would receive ardent beseeching when the buoyant isle light floated there at length latona laid betwixt a palm and bright minerva's tree spite of their fierce opposing stepdame's power her twins produced even hence in childbed driven she fled from juno in her bosom bore tis said the twin celestials now the sun with fervid rays had scorched the arid meads when faint with lengthened toil the goddess gained the edge of lycia's monster breeding clime parched and exhausted from the solar heat and infants milking her exhausted breast by chance a lake far distant she espied deep in a vale's recess of waters pure there clowns the bulrush gathered there they plucked the shrubby osier and the marsh fond grass approached the goddess on her knees low bent the earth she pressed and forward leaned to drink the cooling liquid this the rustic mob forbade when she to those who thus opposed water withhold water whose use is free nature to all unsparing gives to take of light of air and of the flowing stream i claim but public gifts yet suppliant beg those public gifts to share not here i come my wearied arms and limbs within the waves to lave my thirst alone i wish to slake even now my speaking lips their moisture want scarce my parched throat a passage to my words can yield as nectar with a limpid draught life with the water give me for to me water is life with water life i seek let these too move you who their tender hands stretch to your bosoms for by chance the babes their little hands held forth 
the goddess's words thus bland beseeching who could e'er withstand yet these persisted obstinate refused to grant her wish and with opprobrious speech and threats reviled her should she there remain nor rested thus the lake with hands and feet muddy their trouble with malicious leaps they agitate the pool and upward stir from the deep bottom clouds of slimy ooze anger her thirst diverted rage denied more supplication from the indignant dame their threatening words no more the goddess brooked but raising high to heaven her hands she cried be this your home for ever gracious heard her prayer was granted now they joy to plunge beneath the waters now they deep emerge their bodies in the hollow fen now raise their heads and skim the surface of the pool often they rest upon the margin's brink and oft light springing in the cool lake plunge now still their rude contentious tongues they use still squabbling lost to shame beneath the waves beneath the waves they still abusing strive to utter hoarsely still their voices heard through their wide bloated throats their railing words their jaws more wide dilate deprived of neck their head and back injunction seem to meet green shine their backs their bellies hugely swollen are white and frogs they plunge within the pool thus as the man the fate destructive told of lycia's clowns to mind another called the satyr's fate who vanquished in the strife of skill on pallas's pipe latona's son severely punished wherefore thus he cries rent from myself o penitent i bow the pipe he shrieks should not such rage provoke exclaiming thus o'er his extremest limbs stripped was his skin he won continuous wound blood flowed from every part the naked nerves bare started and the trembling veins full throbbed by skin uncovered every beating part inward the breast's translucent fibres plain displayed to sight him every forest form each brother satyr and each sylvan god and every nymph with famed olympus wept and every swain the woolly flock who fed or on the mountain watched the horned herd washed by their falling tears the fertile earth is soaked absorbs them in her inmost veins then formed to water spouts them high in air rapid twixt banks declivitous they seek the ocean marcia is the river called the clearest stream through Phrygia's land which flows end of section eleven section twelve of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the sixth book of the metamorphoses of ovid part two thus far the crowd and then lamenting turn to present griefs amphion's race extinct unanimous they wail but hated still remains the mother's pride for her alone weeped pelops rent his garments bare exposed his breast and shoulders lay and fair displayed the ivory joint this shoulder at his birth in fleshy substance and carnation tinge equalled the right when by his sire his limbs disjointed lay the gods tis said quick joined the severed members every fragment found save what combined the neck and upper arm the part destroyed with ivory they replace and pelops perfect from the gift became the neighbouring lords assemble every town their kings entreat condolence to bestow and all to thebes repair first argos sends sparta mycenae calydon not yet by stern diana hated corinth famed for beauteous brass orchomenus the fierce messene fertile patre pylos ruled by nelius treason yet unused to own the sway of pythios cleona the low and all those towns the two seed isthmus holds and all those towns the isthmus views without athens incredible with absent soul war all her energy demanded born o'er ocean fierce barbarian troops the walls mopsopian threaten thracian tereus these with arms auxilio routed bright his name shone from the conquest him in riches great mighty in power and from the godlike mars his lineage tracing procne's nuptial hand close to pandion bound their marriage bed nor grace nor hymen nor the nuptial queen attended furies held the torches snatched from beers funereal furies spread the couch and all night long an owl ill-omened bird perched on the roof that crowned the marriage dome joined with such omens with such omens bore procne a son to Tereus. wide through thrace congratulations sound glad thanks to heaven the parents give and hail the happy day which gave pandion's daughter to the king and gave the pair a son 
so ignorant still mankind of real happiness remain now through five autumns had the cheerful sun the whirling year renewed when procne bland her spouse besought if grace within thy sight claim my deserts or suffer me to see in her own clime my sister or to ours my sister bring a quick return thou well our sire mayst promise this high boon obtained my sister's presence to my sight thou'lt seem a deity in goodness on the main he bids them launch the vessel in the port cecropian enters urged by oar and sail and treads piraeus's shore soon as he gained his audience soon as hand with hand was clasped his ill presaging speech he opened first the journey's cause narrating fond desire of procne and the promised quick return of philomela should the sire comply lo philomela enters splendid robes attire her still more splendid shine her charms such they describe within the forest's rove dryad and naiad nymphs such would they seem their shape like hers adorned like hers attired instant was tereus at the sight inflamed so instant would the hoary harvest burn the torch applied so burn the withered leaves or hoarded hay well might her charms inspire such love in any him his inbred lust more goaded more his country's warmth which burns intense he flames from nature and from clime first to corrupt the tendons he designs and faithful nurse and philomel to tempt with gifts immense his kingdom's mighty price or forceful snatcher and the rape defend with all the powers of war nought but he dares impelled by love's unbridled power his breast the raging fire contains not irksome seems delay and eager to the anxious wish of procne turns his converse her desires his wishes aiding eloquent he spoke for love inspired him often as he pressed more close than prudent all his earnest speech procne he said dictated heavens how dark the gloom that blinds the view of human souls tereus for tenderest piety esteemed more as for vice he labours praise he gains for every crime now philomela begs his prayer assisting flings her winning arms around pandion's neck and suppliant sues a sight of procne for her woe she begs but deems she begs delight her tereus views anticipates his joys her every kiss her arms around her parents neck entwined but goad his passion fuel fresh they add food for his flame and when her sire she clasps he longs that sire to be parent not more his impious purpose would the wretch delay the king by both their warm beseechings won consents she joyful to her father gives glad thanks and hapless deems completely blessed herself and sister both most deeply cursed now phoebus's toil nigh spent his courser's feet sweep down the slope of heaven the royal feast and golden goblets filled with bacchus's gift the board bespread from hence in slumbers soft each sought repose all but the thracian king though far removed still burning all her face her hands and gesture he recalls and paints at pleasure all her beauties yet unseen feeding his flame and sleep repelling far twas morn pandion pressing warm the hand of tereus as they parted while the tears gushed sudden thus bespeaks his friendly care dear son to thee i give her pious claims compel me suppliant let me thee adjure by faith by kindred and by all the gods thy care paternal shall protect the maid and the soft solace of my anxious years speedy restore for each delay is long quick philomela quick my child rejoin thy sire if filial duty sways thee much thy sister's absence pains me speaking thus he pressed with kisses soft the maiden's lips and dripping tears with each behest let fall their hands he asks as pledge of faith and joins their hands in his presented tender begs his salutations to his daughter dear and his young grandson scarce the last adieu choked with deep sighs he breathes his boding mind foreseeing future woes now philomel safely on board the painted vessel placed the land far left as with their labouring oars the surges move exulting tereus cried victorious lo my utmost wishes born safe with me scarce his burning soul defers his hoped-for joys his eyes are never turned from the loved face thus jove's protected bird rapacious bears with his sharp talons pierced and hair defenceless to his lofty nest no flight remains the spoiler calmly views his prey now ended is their voyage now wearied they quit their ship and joyful touch their native beach and now the thracian king pandion's daughter to a lofty stall conducts by ancient trees the spot well screened there he enclosed the pale the trembling maid of all things fearful as with tears she pressed her sister's face to see his purpose dire disclosing 
Forth the helpless Mador came, loudly exclaiming to her sire, and loud her sister's help invoking equal vain. But chief she begs celestial powers to aid. Trembling she lies, so seems a shuddering lamb wounded, and from the hoary wolf's fierce jaws just scaped, not sure his safety yet he deems. So seems a dove, her plumes in blood deep drenched, with fear still shivering, still the hungry claws dreading, that lately pierced her. Soon restored her mental powers, while scattered hung the locks rent in her anguish. High her arms she raised, livid with blows, as those that mourn the dead, exclaiming, O barbarian, wretch supreme, in cruelty and vice, whom not the charge parental, sealed with pious tears, could move. Her sister's charge entrusted, not her state, virgin defenceless, not the sacred vows, conjugal plighted, in confusion all commixed, by thee, adulteress, here I lie, against my sister, thou a double spouse to both. This scourge is sure to me not due. Why, villain, not my hated life destroy? Perfect in deeds atrocious, would my breath before the horrid act suppressed had been. Then had I guiltless sought the shades. But still if powers celestial view this act, if sway on earth they hold, if all not sinks with me, thy fate henceforward from me dread, myself shall unabashed thy acts proclaim. If power is granted when in public walks I roam, if here in woods imprisoned all the woods shall with my plaints resound, the conscious rocks I'll move, may heaven me hear, and if in heaven a god abides me here, roused by her words the fierce king's anger burns, no less his fear than anger moves him, strongly spurred by each, his weapon from the pendant sheath he drew, dragged by the hair, her limbs he forced to yield to fetters, twisting rough her arms behind. Glad Philomel to him her throat presents, death from the glittering sword expecting, grasped in pincers fierce her tongue he tore away, Grieved and indignant, as her father's name she strove to utter, trembling still appeared the bloody root, trembling the tongue itself murmured as on the gore-stained earth it lay. As leaps the serpent's severed tail, the tongue, quivering in death, still to her feet advanced. This deed of horror done, tis said that oft, incredible the fact, repeated force upon her mangled form the wretch employed. Now dares he, all those acts atrocious done, return to Procne, eager as he comes, for Philomel she asks, false tears and groans he gives the hapless nymph he feigns deceased his tears convince now from her shoulders torn her robes with gold bright glittering sable vests her limbs enfolded high an empty tomb she raised and pious obsequies performed to manes pretended for her sister's fate she mourned whose fate such mourning ill deserved through twice six signs had phoebus journeyed on the year completing what alas remains for philomela guards prevent her flight of stone erected, high the massive walls circle her round. Her lips so mute refuse the deed to blazon. Keen the sense of grief sharpens the soul. In misery the mind ingenious sparkles. Skilful she extends the Thracian web, and on the snow-white threads in purple letters weaves the dreadful tale. Complete a servant with expressive signs that present to the queen she bids to bear. To Procne was it born, witless the slave of what he carried. Savage Tereus's spouse the web unfolded, read the mournful tale her hapless sister told and wondrous sat in silence grief her rising words repressed indignant choked her throat refused to breathe the angry accents to her plaining tongue to weep she waits not in turmoil confused justice and flagrance undistinguished lie her mind soul bent for vengeance on her spouse now is the time Sithonia's matrons wont the rites triennial of the jovial god to tend those rites to conscious shade alone confided. Rodope, the brazen sound shrill tinkling, hears by night. By night the queen the palace quits, attired as Bacchus's rites demand, and weaponed with the back and arms. A vine her forehead girds, the nimble deer clothes with his skin her sides, her shoulder bears a slender spear. Thus maddening, Procne seeks the woods in ire terrific, crowded round by all her followers. Racked by inward pangs, the furious rant of Bacchus veils her woes. The lonely stable seen at length, she howls aloud, Evoy, ho, and bursts the door. Drags thence her sister, her thence dragged, invests in bacchanalian robes, her face in shrouds in ivy foliage, and astonished leads the trembling damsel o'er the palace steps. The horrid dome, when Philomela saw, perforce she entered, through her frame she shook. The blood her face deserted, Procne sought a spot retired, and from her features flung the sacred trappings, and her sister's face, sorrowing and blushing to the light unveiled then ran to clasp her she the sight not bore her eyes she raised not 
her dejected brows bent to the ground thus by her sister seen to encroach her on her bed her hands still spoke when oaths she wished to utter and to call the testing gods her foul disgrace by force to prove accomplished furious procme burns nor curbs her ire her sister's streaming tears reproving checks and cries no period now for tears we ask the sword but if than sword vengeance more keen thou hopest for sister dear behold me for most horrid deeds prepared shall i with flaming torches blaze on high his hall imperial and the villain king heave in the conflagration shall i rend as thine his tongue or from his sockets tear his eyeballs or what other member maim or this or instant send his guilty soul through thousand wounds to judgment what thou speak'st be mighty i for mightiest acts prepare to fix i hesitate as procne speaks lo infant itis to his mother runs his sight her mind determines cruel turn her eyes exclaiming see how like his sires appear his features more she spoke not fixed was straight her dread resolve now fiercer burned within her smothered rage yet when the boy approached and round her neck his infant arms threw and his kisses printed on her lips with bland caresses mingled even the soul of procne melted mollified her rage tears hard constrained flowed from unwilling eyes soon as the mother's feelings softening seemed to melt in extreme fondness procne quits the sight and to her sister's face reverts again her visage then on each in turn full bent her view she cries must one me melt with blandished soothings must the other mute with tongue dismembered stand must he exclaim o mother she o sister never more to what a spouse pandion's daughter see art thou degenerate wife conjoined thy sin a spouse like terius to have used too well more she delays not infant itis drags swift as the indian tiger sweeps the fawn through shady forests then the lofty dome for rooms remote well searched in one arrives where she the infant pierces twixt the breast and side the weapon enters while his hands suppliant his fate foreseeing he extends and mother oh my mother loudly cries nor moved her countenance fell the single wound was deadly philomela with her steel the throat divided and the quivering limbs dissevered whilst of animation still some glimmering sparks remain of these they part in brazen cauldrons boil part on the spit crackling they turn with gore the secret rooms offensive float her unsuspecting spouse procne to feast invites delusive feigns her country's customs where it was given but one the husband should be nigh all menial slaves far distant on his ancestral seat high lifted terius sat and feasted there and in his bowels deep he there entombed bowels his own so blind are human souls call itis to the feast he cries no more could procne veil her savage joy full bent the slaughter to announce she loud proclaimed thou seek'st who with thee rests around he looks wondering where rests he philomela rushed her tresses sprinkled with the ireful blood as grieved he itis calling loud and flung with savage fury itis's gory head full in his father's face nor ever mourned lost speech so much her well-earned joy to show more grieved lost power without cry loud the king o'erturned the table from the stygian vale invoked the vipered sisters hard he strove to tear his bosom and from thence disgorge the dire repast the half-digested mass of itis's limbs now weeping wild he mourns himself his offspring's tomb now fierce pursues pandion's daughters with his unsheathed sword from him escaping on light wings upborne the athenians seemed light wings their limbs upbore one sheltering in the woods protecting roofs the other seeking still the murderous deed marked on her breast remains still on her plumes the taint of blood is seen rapid in rage and hope of vengeance tereus too is changed and flits a bird a plumy crest he bears high on his head the lengthened sword he bore a beak enormous grows a lapwing now with fierce armed face he flies untimely sought pandion when the mournful tale he heard the stygian shades ere yet the lengthened date of years commanded next the athenian realm erechtheus ruled the sceptre dubious held by right or forceful arms proud could he boast four sons and daughters four to him were given beauteous the maids in beauty equal too of these aeolian cephalus was blessed with thee as spouse o procris tereus long boreas withstanding with the power of thrace long orithea by the god beloved was loved in vain while soft beseechings more and prayers the power to strenuous force preferred but now those soothings bland so vainly tried fierce swollen with rage his most accustomed feel too much that passion knows this wind he cries 
well i deserve it all my proper arms relinquished savage fierceness strength stern rage and threatening force with humble softening prayers fool have i sued in each attempt have failed more apt to me is force by force i drive the lowering clouds before me ocean's waves forceful i turn forceful the knotted oak root from its deep foundation hard the frost i bind and beat the sounding earth with hail i win in open sky for there our field lies in display my blustering brethren meet oppose such might that midmost sky resounds echoing our forceful conflict flashing flames from the cleft bodies of the hollow clouds elicited i too earth's secret womb fierce entering in her deepest caverns strain my strength till trembling wide through all her frame the ghosts below are troubled these the aid my nuptial wish should seek no longer pray erethias for my sire my sire by force the monarch shall be made so spoke the god or thus or more in fury as he shook his plumes whose motion sweeped through earth's extent and made the wide main tremble lofty hills his dusty mantle covers as the plains rapid he brushes shrouded deep in mist in his dark wings the furious lover clasps his orithea trembling pale with fear flying his flames were fanned and fiercer blazed nor checked the ravisher his lofty flight till seen the town of sicones whose walls received him there the thenian nymph became the freezing monarch's bride a mother there a double birth she brought whose shoulders bear the father's pinions all their semblance else their mothers not at first tis said appeared the feathers calais and zithis boys were yet unplumed when yet with ruddy hair their beards appeared not from each shoulder shot the feathers bird-like at the self-same time their manly cheeks were thick with yellow down now when their youth matured to man appeared through seas unploughed before they sought the fleece splendid with glittering wool with all the train of minii in the first built vessel born End of section 12section thirteen of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the seventh book of the metamorphoses of ovid part one now in the pagasian vessel born ploughed the wide sea the argonauts and saw the fate of phineas whose old age the curse of hunger felt and felt perpetual night the youths from boreas sprung quick sped to flight the virgin featured birds his hapless face far distant neath great jason's rule much toil they bore ere on the oozy banks they stayed of rapid faces here the king they seek and here demand the golden fleece and here an answer big with fearful labours learn the grecian crew meantime the royal maid burns with fierce fires with reason struggling long still her hot flame to quench unable cries aloud medea vainly i oppose some unknown god controls perhaps tis love if love tis not no sentiment more near to love can come why else my sire's commands so harsh appear but harsh in truth they are but why his failing dread why dread his death but barely seen what cause such fear can give o hapless maid would from my virgin breast those flames to fling were given if mine the power more wisdom would i use but me this force before unknown unwilling drags this love persuades opposed to reason plain i see the better track approve it most yet swerved i tread the worse why royal virgin burn thus for a stranger guest why longst thou thus a foreign partner in the marriage bed to clasp thy country well can thee supply whate'er thou lovest in the god's decree his death or safety rests yet may he live pray mayst thou for him sure love unconcerned but what has jason done savage indeed were those his youth his birth and brilliant deeds not touched how savage too the soul must be his beauty touched not were there naught beside my bosom sure it moves but were my aid denied the furious bulls with flaming breath his fate would compass or the foes that spring from earth his harvest slay him in the fight or last he'd fall the ravenous dragon's prey if this i suffer from the tiger sprung believe me steel and marble in my breast deem me to wear why not his death behold why not mine eyes with the dread sight pollute why not the bulls the earth-born foes in sight and sleepless dragon with redoubled ire heaven wills it better but let deeds not prayers my time employ how shall i then betray my parents realm an unknown stranger aid with all my power 
who by my power preserved loosed to the wind his sails another's spouse becomes me left for punishment behind if this to do another nymph to me born to prefer let him in great be slain but no his face denies it his great soul and graceful form forbid the fear of fraud or benefits forgot yet shall he plight his solemn faith first call the testing gods to witness what he vows what fear i more all's safe medea hasten spurn delay jason remaining life to thee shall owe joined to his state the annual torch shall flame to thee preserver through the grecian towns by crowds of mothers hailed shall i for this my sister leave my brother and my sire my gods and natal land yes fierce my sire my country barbarous and my brother young with all my wishes warm my sister joins and dwells within my breast the mightiest god much i relinquish not but much i seek the glorious title of the grecian youth deliverer gained the sight of lands and towns whose fame even here has journeyed manners mild and cultured arts and jason for my spouse for whom all earth's possessions were too small to change his spouse become supremely blessed dear to the gods the loftiest stars i'll reach what are those rocks they tell which mid the waves meet in encounter fell charybdis what hostile to ships now sucking in the tide now fierce discharging what the savage bounds which compass greedy scylla mid the main sicilian or the wide-spread ocean born him whom i love embracing sheltering close in jason's bosom clasped by him no fear my soul could harbour or if fear i felt for him alone i'd treble for my spouse spouse dost thou say medea hidst thou thus with specious names thy crime behold the load of guilt thou goest to bear while power remains the sin avoid she said and duty shame and rectitude before her eyes appeared and vanquished love addressed his wings to flight now to an ancient altar hecate owned by shady trees dark veiled from day she came her flames abated and her eager pulse subsided here isonides she saw and bright her love reblazed warm flushed her cheeks deep all her visage glowed the smallest spark thus low in embers hid its vigour shows helped by the feeding blast increasing burns and stirred in all its wonted fury glows just so the languid passion which but now all but extinct appeared the hero seen fresh at his beauteous presence flamed by chance more beauteous jason on that morn appeared well might a lover all her love excuse she looks his countenance with her eyes devours as then first seen and madly fond she deems his features more than mortal bashful turned her forehead not from his and when her guest addressed her when he gently took her hands and craved assistance in an humble tone the nuptial promise giving plenteous flowed her tears exclaiming what i should perform plainly i see not ignorance me misleads but love my gifts shall aid you you but keep the promise pledged sacred the hero swears by her the triformed goddess whom that grove acknowledges divine and by the god whence sprung the sire in law he hopes to claim the god who all beholds by all his deeds achieved and by his perils all he swears his words believed immediately he receives the magic plants their use well taught and seeks the roof rejoicing now the morn had driven the glimmering stars far distant crowding pressed the people in the sacred field of mars the king himself amidst them seated high in purple clad with ivory sceptre graced lo come the brazen-footed bulls who breathe through nostrils fenced with adamant hot flames parched by their breath the herbage blackened burns loud as the blazing forges chimney roars or loud as lime in earthy furnace laid bursts into heat by watery sprinklings touched so loud within their flaming chests contained the struggling fires loud bellowed scorched their throats the sound transmitted boldly eason's son marched onward fiercely as the youth approached his foes dark lowered and bent their steel-tipped horns poured with their clefted hoofs the dusty ground and filled with smoky bellowings all the air pale grew each grecian face advancing on the fiery blasts he feels not such the power the mighty charms possess but boldly strokes their dewlaps pendulous and to the yoke subjected makes them drag the ponderous plough and with the iron cut the uncustomed soil the colchians wondering gaze the grecians loud applaud and with fresh courage fill his soul then from his brazen helmet plucked he sows the serpent's teeth deep in the furrowed ground the ground the teeth with powerful venom tinged softened and swelled them and a novel shape imparted thus within the parent's womb an human shape the infant mass receives 
completed perfect in the dark recess nor till mature to air external given so when the manly forms were perfect made within earth's pregnant bowels up they sprung thick in the fruitful field more wondrous still their arms they clashed when born then when the greeks their keenly pointed spears preparing saw to hurl at jason's head low sunk their souls and pallid grew their cheeks medea even whose art ensured his safety trembling feared when single she the youth beheld assailed by foes in hosts bloodless her face became and tremor seized her limbs then lest the herbs presented first should fail in power she sings an helping magic song and all her arts latent calls forth amidst the hostile crowd a mighty rock he flings their martial rage from him diverted on each other turns by mutual wounds the earth-born brothers fall in civil discord perish joyed again the grecians clasp the conqueror in their arms thou too medea wished thine arms to fill with him victorious shame at first repressed thy open fondness though thou wast embraced now reputation awes thee now prevents that bliss what honour gives silent to joy and poor glad thanks to all thy magic arts and gods their authors those thou darest indulge now soul remains by powerful herbs to lull the wakeful dragon whose high crested head a triple tongue contains whose crooked fangs dreadful the golden fleece protecting guards him when be sprinkled with the juices pressed from plants lithian and repeated thrice the words which placid sleep inspire which still the ruffled ocean and arrest the course of rapid torrents sleep before unknown stole o'er his eyelids and the disonian youth seized on the golden prize proud with the spoil a second spoil possessing she who gave the power to conquer as his wife he bears and lands triumphant on thessalia's shores mothers of thessaly and aged sires for sons restored glad offerings bring bright flames the high heaped incense votive victims decked with gilded horns are slain but aeson far the grateful crowd avoids now near his fate bent by a weight of years hence jason spoke o spouse to thee my life and safety owed to me thou all hast given the high swollen sum of all thy favours might belief surpass this more attempt if this thou canst and what thy magic power defies my years curtail and to my sire's existence add the term fast flowed his tears while speaking while he spoke his pious duty moved medea quick her sire aeta so deserted sprung to thought and showed the two contrasting souls but veiled her secret thoughts she thus replies what impious accents hear i from thy tongue o spouse religious can i then transfer of thy existence part not hecate's power fateful would sanction this nor stands thy wish in equity yet jason will i try more than thou seek'st to give with all my skill thy sire's existence to prolong thy years unshortened should the triformed goddess aid propitious my designs three nights were now deficient ere the full formed horns could meet the lunar orb to fill complete her round the solid sphere of light from earth beheld medea wanders forth loose all her robes naked her feet bareheaded while her hair wild o'er her shoulders floats and thus arrayed untended while deep midnight silence reigns she bends her devious way men beasts and birds in bonds of sleep were chained the hedges still no murmur breathed nor waved the silent trees hushed was the humid sky the stars alone twinkled to them her arms extending thrice she turned around thrice from the flowing stream her tresses sprinkled thrice with yelling noise the silence broke then with her bended knee the hard earth pressing cried o night thou friend of secret deeds ye glittering stars whose rays with luna's soul's diurnal light succeed and thou o hecate triple formed who know'st my undertaking and approaching aidst with incantations and with magic powers and thou o earth whose bosom witching plants affords ye winds ye skies ye mountains lakes and flowing streams o all ye gods who dwell in shady woods and all ye gods of night hither approach by whose high power at will rivers i cause between their wandering banks back to their springs to flow the stormy deep hush by my song or lash it into rage clouds form or clouds dispel raise furious blasts or furious blasts allay smite with my song the dragon's furious jaws the living rocks i shake uproot the oak the earth upturn move forests bid the trembling mountains leap loud roar the ground and from the tombs the ghosts affrighted walk thee luna too i draw from heaven 
by all the threatening clash of brass deterred not pale the brighter car becomes my spells once uttered by my poisons charmed pallid aurora seems you plants for me blunted the ardour of the flaming bulls pressed with the yoke their necks impatient bent and dragged the crooked plough you bade the race snake-borne upon themselves their warring rage to turn in sleep the roaring dragon's eyes you steeped the guard eluded sent the prize to glad the towns of greece now have i need of renovating herbs to make old age glow once again in all its youthful bloom this will you grant for sure those stars in vain not sparkle nor in vain the chariot comes drawn by the dragon's wing the chariot comes swift sweeping through the air active she mounts strokes the reined dragon's manes and shakes the thongs on high they saw the salian tempe far beneath she views then toward the chalky land her snakes directs on Ossa's top explores for plants and seeks what lofty pelion bears othrys and pindus and olympus huge what please her part she with their root up drags part with her crooked brazen sickle mows apidanus amphrysos on their banks many afforded nor in epeus scaped peneus and spercaeus and the rushy shores of baebe some contributed she plucked in anthedon the living grass whose power then glaucus's form unchanged was yet unknown now had nine days now had nine nights elapsed borne on her dragon wings and in her car wandering the fields among ere back she turned unfed her dragons save by odorous smells yet had they shed their scales with youth renewed arrived without the palace gate she stays and there soul sheltered by the sky all touch of man denying altars too she rears of turf sacred to hecate stood the right to youth the left when these with vervain bound and forest bowers here sacrifice she makes hard by two trenches scoops from out the ground smites with her weapon in the sable throat a sheep presented in the open ditch empties the blood then bowls of wine she pours and bowls of smoking milk with mystic words invokes the powers terrestrial begs the king of shades and begs his ravished spouse to aid nor of his soul the aged king defraud these when with lengthened prayers and murmurings long appeased she bids them toward the altars bring the feeble eson his exhausted limbs bound in deep slumber by her magic power coarse-like she lays extended on the grass then jason bids and his attendant crew far thence depart nor with their view profane her acts mysterious as she bids they go medea then the flaming altars round in bacchanalian guise her flowing locks circles and in the ditches blackening gore her splintered torches dips with blood imbued burns them upon her altars thrice with fire with sulphur thrice and thrice with flowing streams the sire she lustrates heated now in brass her powerful medicines bubble high and white that swelling froth appears there boils she all the roots in vales emonian dug and seeds and flowers and juices dark gems unto these sought in the distant east she adds and adds what on the sand the refluent ocean leaves more still the night-long moon collected dew she brings the dismal screech owl's flesh and wings the entrails of the wolf ambiguous wont his savage face in human guise to wear nor wanted there the scaly skin which clothes the amphibious snake sinifian long and small the beak and head a crow nine ages bore she adds now was the foreign dame prepared by help of these and nameless thousands more the promised boon to give the whole she stirs deep from the bottom with a bough long rent from the mild olive lo the withered branch the boiling cauldron stirring sudden shoots in virid freshness shortly leaves bud forth and soon it bends beneath a load of fruit where'er the fire above the hollow brass the bubbling foam high raised and boiling drops sprinkled the ground the ground with verdure smiled flowers and soft herbage sprung medea sees and with her weapon opes the senior's throat his aged blood exhausted sees and pours her juices copious part his mouth receives and part the wound when he's on these had drank their hoary whiteness lost his beard and hair an ebon tinge received his leanness fled his pallid ghastly face no more was seen his hollow veins with added blood were filled and all his limbs in lusty plumpness swelled the wandering eson such himself beheld as the last forty years he ne'er had passed bacchus from heaven surveyed the mighty change wondrous and hence that power was given he found his nurses to restore to youthful years the boon from tithers asking he obtained nor cease the frauds yet of the phasian dame fierce hatred against her by her spouse she feigns and flies to peleus's court a suppliant there his daughters hail her guest the sire bent down with age 
crafty Colke and these beguiles soon with her well-dissembled friendship's form. Amid her mighty benefits she tells Eason's old age removed, relating all on this she chiefly dwells. Hope sudden springs within their virgin breasts. Pelias their sire, such art they trust may yet revivify. That art they sue for, highest claimed reward to her they promise. Mute at first she stands, and feigning doubt in hesitation holds, and anxious poise their eager minds. At last, she says, when promising, that in the deed more faith ye may confide, a leading ram, the oldest in your fleecy flocks, a lamb my medicine shall transform. Instant was dragged the woolly beast, whose wreathing horns around his hollow temples curled, whose withered throat the steel Thessalian stabbed, the scanty blood the steel scarce spotting. Then the enchantress steeps his mangled body in the cauldron deep, with juices powerful. Smaller grow his limbs, shed are his horns, and vanished are his ears and from the cauldron tender bleatings sound. Instant leaps forth to all the wandering crowd the bleating lamb, which, frisking, flies and seeks the swelling teats. With admiration struck, now Peleus's daughters faith unshaken give. More urgent press their wish. Thrice had the sun, merged in the Iberian sea, unyoked his steeds. And the fourth night the glittering stars had shone, when o'er the fire, pure water from the stream, and powerless plants, the false Medea placed now all in sleep relaxed a death-like sleep the monarch's limbs were stretched and with their king his guards lay dormant so her magic words and magic tongue had doomed medea leads across the steps the daughters bidden by her his couch they compass why o feeble souls thus hesitate she said your swords unsheath pour out his far-spent gore that i may fill with youthful vigorous blood his emptied veins your father's life and years are in your hands if sways you piety if empty hopes wavering deceive you not, then well deserve by duty to your sire. Quickly expel with weapons his old age. Let issue forth his now congealing blood with brandished steel. Exhorted thus, most pious she who feels first impious acts, a wicked deed performs, lest wicked she were called. Yet on the blow not one would bend her sight. With eyes averse their savage hands the unseen wounds inflict. Flowing with gore, he from the bed upraised his limbs, and from his posture strove half torn to rise and stretching forth his pallid arms mid all their threatening swords daughters he cries what do ye why against your parents life thus arm ye sink their spirits drop their hands his throat medea severing stayed the words he more had uttered and the mangled corse deep in the boiling brazen cauldron flung she now but through the air on dragon wings high born their furious vengeance had not scaped o'er shady pelion high she flew and o'er the cave of chiron othrys and the spot for old Tarambus's strange adventure known upborne on wings by kindly aiding nymphs here when the solid earth the encroaching main wide deluged flying safe deucalion's flood he scaped aeolian pitane to left she quits and sees the dragon huge to stone an image turned and ida's grove where changed by bacchus's power the steer a stag became to screen the theft and where beneath the sand, a little sand, Corythus's father lies, and fields which Mera's new herd howlings fill, Eurypolis's famed town, where Coan dames, what time the troops of Hercules them left, with horns were crowned, and Phoebus's favoured roads, Jalician Telchines, whose hateful eyes, all vitiating, Jove detesting, whelmed beneath his brother's waves. She passes next Cartheia's walls in ancient Caia's isle, where wandering saw Alcimardus the sire, a placid dove his daughter's body bare. And Hyrie's lake she sees, and Tempe's pool Sicneian, which the swan so sudden formed, frequented. Phileus there, a willing slave, birds and fierce beasts to his capricious boy oft brought. E'en lions tamed, a furious bull he bade him bring, a furious bull he brought. But now in colour at his craving soul, the bull refused, though as the last gift claimed. Indignant, cried he, soon you'll wish him given, and from the high rock plunged. All thought he fell, but formed a swan. Lightly he poised in air on snowy wings. Hyrie, her son thus saved, knew not, by constant weeping soon dissolved. The lake becoming that still bears her name. Near this is Pleuron. Ophian Combe here wafted on wings, her murderous sons escaped. Thence she beholds Latona's favourite isle, Caloria, where to birds the royal pair were changed. Selene, on the right, is placed where, like the savage herd, Menephron sought his mother's bed. Far hence she spies in tears Suffices, for his nephew's fate who mourned, changed by Apollo to a sea-calf huge. 
and saw Eumelus's dome who wept his child a bird become at length on dragon wings pyrenean corinth she regained where tell the ancient tales in primal ages men from shower-fed mushrooms sprung here first was flamed in colchian venom's fierce the new-made bride then i the sea in blazing spires beheld the royal dome and with her children's gore her impious sword was stained thus on herself revenged from royal jason's wrath she fled born hence her snakes titanian reached the walls of pallas's city where most just of men o phineas thou and periphas the old with polyphemon's niece as birds are seen soaring aloft in air on new-formed wings here aegeus's roof received her for this deed alone to blame not satisfied as host in marriage bonds he makes her more his own now theseus comes son to his sire unknown whose brave achievements all the two seed land in peace had settled for his death she mixed the baneful aconite long since from shores of scythia brought which thus old tales relate from cerberus's venomed jaws was first produced through a dark den with gloomy opening lies a path steep shelving where alcides dragged fierce cerberus to light resisting strong glancing asconce his eyes from day whose rays sparkled too bright in adamantine chains with rabid anger swollen a triple yell filled all the air he o'er the virid plain sprinkled white foam increasing fast this shoots the fruitful soil fresh virulence imparts and rancor grows its power from hardest rocks it lively springs and aconite hence named this did old aegeus by his crafty spouse deceived to theseus as a foe present unwitting theseus in his hand received the cup presented when the sire espied upon his ivory hilted sword a mark which proved his offspring from his lips he dashed the poison wrapped in clouds by magic raised the sorceress from their furious vengeance fled the sire though joyed his son in safety found trembles astonished at the narrow scape and horrid crime premeditated burns on every altar fires to every god piles costly gifts full on the brawny neck of oxen falls their horns with garlands bound the sacrificing axe ne'er till that day had athens town such joyous feasting seen nobles and commons crowd around the board and thus by wine inspired sublime they sing the mighty theseus marathon admires stained by the vanquished cretan bull's black gore thy aid the swains of chromian own thou gavest that now secure they till their fields the land of epidaurus saw the club-armed son of vulcan slain by thee by thee beheld suffices shores the fierce procrustes die ceres as eleusis hailed circeon's fall sinus thou slewst gifted with strength ill-used his strength high trees could bend and oft he dragged close down to earth the loftiest tops of pines thus rent the bodies of his victims wide safe now extends the road to lelex's walls skyron low laid earth to the robber's limbs wide scattered rest refuses to his bones ocean a tomb denies long widely tossed age hardens into rock his last remains his name the rock still bears should we thy age and actions count thy famous deeds by far thy years outnumber o most brave of men for thee the public vows ascend to thee in bacchus's bowl we drink the royal hall resounds with all the grateful people's praise nor through the city glooms one sorrowing spot end of section thirteen section fourteen of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the seventh book of the metamorphoses of ovid part two and yet so seldom pleasure comes unmixed but still some cares with joy will intervene while aegeus gladdened that his son secure arrived minos for furious war prepares strong though his troops and though his navy strong his utmost strength was in paternal rage and with just arms androgeus's death to avenge he wars yet first auxilia strength he gains and powerful sweeps the seas with flying ships first anaphe joins him and astipalia urged by promise this and that by threats constrained lo mycenae somolus's chalky fields bright sithnos skyros flat seraphus's isle the marble paros and the fort betrayed for gold demanded by the impious nymph scythonian still for gold she anxious seeks though changed a bird on sable pinions borne with sable feet she flutters as a door but oliaris and didyme unite and giarus andros tenus all refuse 
with peperethus in bright olives rich to aid the nosian fleet thence to the left steering inopia's regions minas sought inopia called of old aegina now by iacus his mother's honoured name in crowds the people rush and pant to view so highly famed prince to meet him go first telamon then peleus next in age and phocus third and last even iacus with years oppressed steps tardy forth and asks the visit's cause the hundred cityed king deep sighs his grief paternal all renewed and thus replies my arms o king assist assumed just vengeance for a son to claim partake this pious war peace to his manes i seek but asopiades replies in vain you ask my city cannot aid no lands by neighbouring sight more closely bound than ours and athens hence our league the king angry departs exclaiming much your league may cost you but to threaten war more safe he deems than wage it there and waste his force still from inopia's walls the fleet was seen not distant far when sped by swelling sail an attic ship arrived the friendly port entered on board was cephalus who bore his country's message well the royal youths the hero knew though long time past beheld and gave the friendly hand and welcome led to their paternal dome the graceful chief enters retaining still evincing marks of pristine beauty in his hand he bears a branch of native olive in the midst senior he stands and younger on each side clytus and beauties pallas's sons complete their friendly salutations next the words the athenians bade him cephalus reports their aid demands their ancient league recounts the oaths their fathers swore and adds all greece might perish in their ruin when their cause with eloquence the messenger thus urged on his bright sceptre as his left hand leaned take o athenians iacus exclaimed not ask our aid unhesitating draw what force this isle possesses and with yours employ it with you shall my strongest power march forth strength want we not our numerous troops abundant for ourselves and friends suffice praised be the gods such is our happy state your wish defies evasion still may grow said cephalus your prosperous city's state and yours what transport seized me as i walked to see each youth so fair so equal aged of all who met me yet in vain i looked for many features known when last your walls received me iacus with deep-drawn sighs and sorrowing voice thus answers better fate completed what a mournful sight began would i in full could all the facts relate now unconnected must i speak or tire your ear with words superfluous whom you seek whom you remember bones and ashes rest but small their numbers heavens how small to those my people who have sunk in death beside a dreadful plague the angry juno shed unjust upon the natives of the land detested that her rival's name it bore while human seemed the scourge the noxious cause of slaughter yet concealed with physic's skill we strove in vain death mocked the power of art at first thick darkness heavy pressed the earth pregnant with heat rolled on the lazy clouds four times the full-orbed moon had joined her horns four times diminished had she disappeared still the hot south wind blew his deadly blasts our lakes and fountains from the infected air contagion sucked millions of vipers swarmed in our uncultured fields our running streams tainting with poison first the sudden plague its power displayed on sheep on dogs on fowls cattle and forest beasts with deadly power the hapless ploughman wandering at his work sees his strong oxen in the furrow sink the woolly flocks with sickly bleatings waste in body while their wool spontaneous falls the steed so fiery on the dusty plain so famed the palm contemns and all despised his ancient honours at his manger groans prey to disease inglorious his fierce rage the boar forgets the stag neglects his speed not rush the bears upon the stronger herds a general languor reigns in woods in fields in ways the filthy carcasses are seen the stench pollutes the air and wondrous dogs nor birds rapacious nor the grisly wolves touch the dead spoil rotting they melt away poisoning the gale and spreading wide the pest now the disease a heavier scourge attacks the hapless swains and in the lofty walls of cities rules first the scorched vitals burn the hidden fire the blushing skin betrays and breath laborious drawn the furred tongue swells the parched mouth widely gapes the infectious air inhaling copious on the couch none lie none bear their covering robes their bodies swollen on the bare earth they fling nor coolness find their bodies from the ground the ground from them burns hot 
nor aids them now physician's skill in them the dire pest seizes and their art fails to assist themselves who boldly comes with kindly hand his dying friend to aid sinks straight in death beside him fled all hope of health and in the grave alone an end beheld of their disease some wild indulge their fondest passions void of every care for every care is vain of modest shame regardless in promiscuous throngs they crowd to rivers fountains and capacious wells their hot thirst unextinguished but with life to rise unable many in the stream sink and there perish still their followers drink so irksome to the wretched sufferers seem their couches thence they spring and some too weak to lift their limbs roll desperate to the ground each quits his home to each his home appears the fatal spot and while obscure the cause each deems the house contagious oft were seen beings half dead slow crawling o'er the ways till power to crawl was lost others with moans stretched on the ground rolling their half-closed eyes in final motion raising high their arms to heavens or hanging stars breathe out their last caught here by death and there ah me what then my mind employed what but to loathe my life and pray with my dear countrymen to die whatever side mine eyes were bent i saw my people strewn thick as the mellow fruit shook from the branches or the acorns lie observe that temple lofty where it towers to jove tis sacred who to that high fane their useless incense brought not there how oft wife for her husband parent for her child before the inexorable altar breathed their dying gasp mid deprecating prayers and half their incense unconsumed remained how oft the oxen to the temple dragged while now the priest his voice addressed and poured the goblet o'er their foreheads have they dropped by stroke unlooked for when myself to jove wished sacrifice to offer up for me my country and my sons the victim loud dire lowings uttered and without a blow fell sudden scarce with blood the wounding knife was stained the morbid inwards mocked our wish to learn the truth and pleasure of the gods the deep fixed plague had to the bowels pierced before the sacred portals have i seen the courses spread before the altars too as death would come in his most hideous form some with the cord life's passage choke and seek death lest they death should meet madly they rush and voluntary meet approaching fate the bodies plunged in death funereal rites customed received not nor the numerous dead could all the gates receive or uninhumed above the earth they lie or on the pyre unhonoured by due rites the bodies flame all sense of reverence lost for piles they fight and burn their dead in fires which others own to mourn a nun unwept the shadows roam of young and old alike of sons and sires the ground for graves too small for fires the woods aghast this whirlwind of distress to view o jove i cried if false they not report that once you in aegina's arms were clasped if not o mighty sire ashamed to own yourself my parent give my people back or give me death with them a rattling sign he gave and prosperous thunders rolled i spoke these omens i accept and pray these signs may indicate your happy will as pledge i take them nigh by chance an oak there stood thick set with spreading boughs jove's sacred tree sprung from dodona's stock here i beheld grain gathering ants each burthened with his load in his small mouth as o'er the rugged bark in lengthened file they marched the numerous crowds admiring best of fathers i exclaimed so many subjects grant me to refill my desert walls trembled the lofty oak of wind no breath yet moved the sounding boughs with terror shook my limbs and upright reared my hair then kisses to the ground i gave and kissed the oak scarce hope i dared to feel yet still i nourished hope within my soul night comes my body worn with cares to sleep obedience yielded still before mine eyes the oak appeared branches the same it bore and on its branches seemed the swarms the same so moved the boughs and on the grass below shook the corn carrying crowd sudden they grew large and more large they seemed as from the ground themselves they raised and stood in form erect their slender make their numerous feet their hue of sable disappeared and all their limbs and human shape confessed sleep fled mine eyes and fled my vision as by heaven not marked complaining far without the hall i heard a murmuring loud and human seemed the sounds though stranger to mine ears musing if still i slept not lo quick telamon approached wide through the doors and cried o oh, sire behold what hope what faith surpasses forth i come such men as in my dream my fancy saw i see i know them man by man again 
they come and kings salute me unto jove my votive thanks i pay my city share amongst my subjects new and all my lands of those who tilled them empty myrmidons from whence they sprung i call them you have seen their bodies still their habits are the same a frugal race as wont patient of toil on gain still bent tenacious of that gain these equal all in courage and in years shall follow you to battle when the east which blew you here so prosperous for the east had brought him to the southern gales shall yield with these and such like speeches all the day they sit conversing evening they devote to banquets and the night to soft repose sol raised his golden head but eurus still prevailed and bound their sails now pallas's sons to cephalus their chief in years repair and to the king with pallas's sons he goes but still deep wrapped in sleep the king was laid phocus received them at the gates employed were telamon and peleus troops to choose for the new war the athenian chief he leads within the palace to the fairest rooms when all were seated phocus marked the dart the hero bore shaped from a wood unknown pointed with gold and said with prefaced words to range the forests and fierce beasts to slay is all my joy yet long in doubt i've stood what tree this dart has formed for ash too pale too smooth for cornel though from whence it comes so ignorant ne'er before mine eyes beheld a fairer weapon pallas's son addressed the youth the javelin's use you'll more admire than beauty thrown where'er its market gains unruled by erring chance and bloody back instant returns then phocus curious asks more full its story how and whence it came and who the author of so prized a gift him cephalus informs but shame denies to tell the whole and what the present's price full to his mind his consort's loss recalled tears sudden gushed o goddess born he cries this dart improbable howe'er my tears has often caused and long will make them flow if fate long life should grant my dear loved spouse this dart destroyed oh that this fatal gift had still been unpossessed procris allied to stolen orithea if orithea's fame your ears has reached was as her sister fair nay matched in form and manners she might more the robber tempt her sire erechthens joined to me the maid us love more firmly bound blessed was i called and blessed i was indeed and still were blessed but heaven else willed my fate now had the second month connubial joys beheld when chasing dusky darkness far aurora ruddy saw me on the heights hymettus flowery rears as there my toils for antlered stags i spread and there by force she clasped me truth i wish to guide my tongue nor yet displease the goddess when i swear though bright her roseate cheeks though wide she sways of night and day the confines though she quaffs nectarian liquid still i procris loved still in my bosom procris reigned and still procris my tongue repeated oft i urged the sacred couch the new-felt joys the rites so recent and the plighted faith just given to her deserted when the goddess flamed exclaiming ingrate cease thy doleful plaints enjoy thy procris if i right foresee thou'lt rue that wished enjoyment angry thus she fled me slow returning much i mused the goddess's words recalling fear me thrilled lest procris had her nuptial oaths profaned her age her beauty much suspicion moved her virtue bade me chase my fears as vain yet was i absent and from whence i came proved how adulterous females might indulge suspicious love fears all studious i seek what found would rack with torture and i burn to bribe with gifts and try her modest faith aurora aids my fears my shape transforms conscious i felt it to minerva's town to all unknown i hastened and my house entered the house in faultless guise i found chaste all appeared and anxious all were seen for their lost master by a thousand arts erechtheus's daughter i at length beheld and seen was staggered near my purposed proof relinquished of fidelity most hard the cheat to tell not to refrain most hard from conjugal salutes sad she appeared but naught more lovely could in sadness seem burning in wishes for her absent spouse image o oh focus what her beauteous face could boast a face that woe itself became why should i tell how oft her virtuous soul repulsed my tempting offers why repeat how oft she cried for one myself i keep for one where'er he stays my joys preserve whose mad suspicion would not this allay this proof of faith but i not so content strive for my own confusion lavish gifts i proffer for the joys of one short night more and more rich i heap them till her breast wavers then loud exclaim 
lo here behold adulteress one unluckily disguised unluckily betrothed to thy lawful spouse perfidious by those eyes convinced i stand nought she with silent shame o'ercome she fled the house deceitful and her hated spouse with me offended all the race of men detesting on the mountain tops she roved diana's sports close following fiercer love flamed in my bosom thus deserted left i sued for pardon and my fault i owned swore that myself so tempted so had erred by such high offers bribed confessing thus her wounded modest pride grew more composed and shortly i regained her long in peace we lived and cordial spent the smiling years herself a gift she prized not more she gave and hound she from diana's hand received who said accept the fleetest of his race and gave this javelin which you see me bear if of the first the fate you seek to know attend the adventure will your wonder move the son of laius had the words explained before his time to every mind obscure and the dark prophetess down headlong flung laid lifeless all her riddling tales forgot her fostering themis saw and unrevenged to lie not suffered straight another plague on thebes was loosed and all the country swains feared by the savage beast their flocks to lose and feared their own destruction with the youths adjacent i assembled round the fields our toils we fix the toils the rapid beast or leaps high bounding above the loftiest ropes stretched o'er the nets with active spring he flies the hounds uncoupled in the chase he mocks and like an agile bird before them plays with outcries loud for lelap's aid they call my procris's gift so named long had he tugged to extricate him from the chain to free his captive neck scarce was he loosed so swift he shot in vain our eyes his progress marked in the light dust his feet were printed he wrapped from the view was vanished swifter flies the darted spear not nor the leaden ball hurled from the whirling sling nor reedy darts shot from the cretan bow a central hill high towering all the subject plains o'erlooks thither i climb and there behold the chase a novel scene now seems the beast safe caught now from the grass blight springing flight right on crafty he shuns and doubles round the field cheating his chaser's mouth and circling turns his foe's quick speed eluding swift he flies with equal swiftness followed now to grasp his prey seems lelaps in his grasp deceived his empty jaws seize air now to my aid i call my javelin poise it for the blow and bend mine eyes the thongs to fix secure again i lift them to behold the chase and see astonished in the spacious plain two marble statues this to fly appears that barking seems to follow so decreed doubtless the gods that in the arduous course unconquered each his glory might retain thus far he spoke then silent sat what crime said phocus has the javelin then performed and thus the javelin's fault the hero tells since joys supreme my sorrows first forewent let me o phocus first those joys recount o youth how it delights me to retrace those happy moments when supremely blessed in her the primal years were joyous spent she equal happy in her darling spouse each mind of mutual care a portion bore and love's connubial joys each equal shared jove's proffered couch with my embrace compared procris had spurned nor could the loveliest nymph me tempt though venus's self had deigned to sue in either breast an equal ardour flamed in youthful guise i wont the woods to scour for sport betimes ere yet the sun had tinged with early beams the lofty mountains tops nor took i servants nor the coarser fleet nor hounds sharp scented nor the knotted snares this dart my sole dependence when my arm with slaughtered spoil was satiate tired i sought the cooling shade and sought where aura breathed in frigid vales her breezes midst the heat refreshing air i sought and aura called my labour's recreation thus i sung i will the words remember aura come come my delight within my bosom creep most grateful friend come and as wont remove my inward flames by chance more tender words so swayed my destiny to these i joined and thus i spoke o thou my greatest joy refreshing cherishing my strength and power for thee these woods and lonely spots i love here does my wishing mouth thy breath inhale these words ambiguous busy ears received and aura aura oft invoked they deem a favoured nymph a nymph by me beloved the rash informer with the imaged wrong my procris seeks his whispering tongue relates the words o'erheard love credulous believes oppressed with grief she sudden sunk when heard the tale and long she unrecovered laid 
then hapless wife o wayward fate she cries my broken faith bewails and with my crime imagined troubled fears what not exists a name without a being much she grieves as real were her rival yet full oft staggered she doubts and hopes herself deceived trusts not the informer and her husband's fault unless beheld refuses to believe when next aurora bade the darkness fly i sallied forth and sought the customed wood then tired with conquest on the grass i stretched and come dear aurora ease my pain i cried sudden a mournful sigh betwixt my words i heard but still proceeded dearest come again the falling leaves a rustling sound causing a savage beast i thought lay hid and hurled my faithful dart procris was there and as her tender breast the blow received alas she cried my faithful spouse's voice i knew and with distracted speed i ran half dead i found her all her robes disdained with flowing blood and dragging from the wound ah me her fatal gift my guilty arms her body dearer far than mine support my vest i rend the cruel gash to bind and check the gushing blood i fearful pray she will not leave me guilty of her fate she now her strength fast wasting dying fast these words to utter tried suppliant i beg by all the oaths that formed our nuptial ties by all the gods and goddesses above by all my actions which have given you joy by that strong love which thus my fate has caused which now in death my bosom still retains let not this aura to my bed succeed she said too late i learned too late i told the error of the name for what availed she sinks her small remaining strength is fled her last blood flows while aught she seems to view on me she bends her eyes her hapless soul my lips inhale yet pleased her brow appears in death more calm from what i just explained thus grieving cephalus concludes and all his audience with him weep when lo appear king iacus his sons and troops new raised whom cephalus in warlike strength receives end of section fourteen section fifteen of metamorphoses this librivox recording is in the public domain metamorphoses by publius ovidius naso ovid translated by j j howard the eighth book of the metamorphoses of ovid part one now leading phosphor's shining day disclosed the darkness flying and the eastern gales lulled into calm the vapory clouds arose the placid south befriending rapid born the hero cephalus and aiding troops ride unexpected in their wished-for port minos meanwhile the lilygian coast lays waste and on alcathoe's town his power essays here nisus ruled whose reverent locks of silvery brightness in the midst contained one with rich purple splendid sacred pledge of fortune to his kingdom six times seen were luna's horns arising fresh renewed still hovered conquest doubtful o'er the war on wavering pinions twixt opposing hosts a regal tower its vocal walls high reared where once latona's son his golden lyre rested the music still the stones retained oft here the beauteous daughter of the king ascended and the latent music drew forth to the ear by smallest pebbles struck thus she in peaceful times and here she oft when war was raging ventured hence she saw the rough encounters of the furious field so long the tedious warfare well she knew the leaders names their arms their prancing steeds and knew their garments and their cretan bows far beyond all europa's son she knew more than became her state this minos well could prove whose head in crested helmet hid most beauteous helm appeared whose arm adorned with brazen shield refulgent well became the brazen shield whose hand the tough lance whirled and back withdrawn the virgin wondering praised such strength and skill combined to fit the dart when to the spreading bow his strength he bent she vowed that phoebus in such posture stood his arrows fitting when his brazen cask relinquished all his features shone displayed as purple robed his snow-white steed he pressed in painted housings gay and curbed his jaws white firming then the lost nicaean maid scarcely herself in frantic rapture spoke blessed called the javelin that his hands it touched blessed called the reins he curbed arduous she burns could she through hostile ranks her virgin steps to bend arduous she burns from loftiest towers to fling her body in the cretan camp the brazen portals of the city's walls wide to the foe she'd ope what could she not that minos willed as resting here she viewed the white pavilion of the gnosian king dubious she cried 
or should i grieve or joy this mournful war to witness grieve i must that minos so beloved should be my foe but had the war not been his lovely face had ne'er to me been known now war may cease should i become the hostage i retained as minos's comrade and the pledge of peace fairest of forms if she who brought thee forth resembled thee well might an amorous god burn for her beauty oh thrice blessed were i if borne through air on lightly waving wings the cretan monarch's camp i might explore and there my rank and love disclosed demand what dowry he would ask to be my spouse my country's towers alone he should not seek perish the joys of his expected bed ere i through treason gain them yet full oft a moderate victor's clemency affords great blessings to the vanquished doubtless he just warfare wages for his murdered son strong in his cause and in his armies strong which aid that cause he must the conquest gain why if this fate my country waits should war and not my love unbar to him the gates so may he conquer slaughter toil and blood his own dear blood avoided how i dread lest some rash hand might that loved bosom wound none but the ignorant sure the savage spear at him would hurl the scheme delights my soul fixed my resolve my country as my dower will i deliver finish so the war but what are resolutions watchful guards the passes keep of every gate the keys my father careful holds hapless i dread my father only he alone withstands my wishes would that so the gods had doomed i had no parent but to each himself a god may surely be and fortune spurns lazy beseechers with such love inflamed another maid had long ere now destroyed all barriers to her bliss and why then i should any dare more boldly fearless i through swords and flames would pass but swords and flames oppose me not in this my sole desire comprised in one small lock of nisus's hair than gold that prize more dear that purple lock most blessed would make me and my sole desires encompass speaking thus the gloomy night imperial nurse of cares approached more bold her daring project with the darkness grew now primal slumbers ruled o'er weary breasts tired with their toil diurnal silent she her father's chamber enters and o oh, dire the daughter from her parents head divides the fateful lock her wicked prize possessed forth from the gate she issues and the spoil so cursed with her bears as through the hosts such boldness gave the deed she seeks the king whom thus astonished and aghast she hails to wicked deeds love sways behold me here scylla from royal nisus sprung to thee my household gods and country i betray thee sole reward i seek pledge of my faith this purple lock receive and with this lock receive my parents head then in her hand the impious gift presented minos spurned the parricidal present deeply shocked a deed so base to witness and exclaimed may all the gods from every part of earth thee banish scandal of our age may land and sea alike reject thee such a soul so monstrous ne'er with me shall touch the shores of crete my land and cradle of high jove he said and on his captive foes imposed most just his equal laws his men bade loose their cables from the beach and with their oars his vessels bright with brass urge on the deep launched on the main when scylla sees the fleet nor from its leader gained the hoped reward her wicked deed had sought tired of her prayers in desperate rage she storms wild throws her hair stretches her hands exclaiming where oh where fliest thou the author of thy fortune left o oh, prized above my country above my sire o oh, cruel whither fliest thou whose success at once my merit and my fault displays will not the gifted conquest move thy soul will not my love thee move will not the thought that all my hopes centre in thee alone by thee deserted whither shall i fly back to my natal town ruined it lies or if still standing fast the gates are barred against my treason to my father's arms whom i betrayed each citizen me hates deservedly neighbours my example dread banished an exile from each spot of earth crete only open lies thence dost thou drive me also ingrate dost thou fly me so europa never bore thee but some cert inhospitable or some tigress fell bred in armenia or charybdis vexed with tempests jove was ne'er thy sire nor feigned a bull's resemblance to delude her false that fable of thy origin a bull real and savage thee begot whose love no heifer moved o father nisus now exact thy vengeance joy o town betrayed by my transgression for the woes i feel most merited i grant guilty i die 
yet should the deadly blow be given by one my impious fault has injured not by thee victor through crimes thou with avenging hate now persecutest this flagitious deed against my country and against my sire was all for thee the daltress who beguiled in wooden cavity the furious bull whose womb an ill-assorted birth produced well for a spouse befits thee do my words reach to thine ears or no to the brisk winds thou ingrate waft my bootless planings on and waft thy vessels wondrous now no more pacife to thy embrace a bull preferred for more unpitying is thy soul joyful ah hapless me away thou fliest thy cleaving oars dash on the sounding waves me and my country far from thee recede o wretch forgetful of my favouring aid thou strivest in vain to fly me gainst thy wish thee will i follow on thy crooked ship hanging embracing dragged through drenching seas scarce ending in the waves she furious leaped vigorous by love and gained the flying fleet and clasped unwelcome guest the nosian poop here soon her father spied her in the air he winged his way now clothed with yellow plumes of falcon and down darted with his beak so curved to wound her as she clung in dread her grasp she loosed and as she seemed to fall the light air bore her from the waves below plumed she became and formed a feathered bird cyrus they called her from the ravished lock to jove now minos all his vows performs an hecatomb of bulls as from the fleet he lands on Knossos's shores his royal hall with all his spoils on high up hung adorned meantime the probrim of his bed increased the two-formed monster in a novel birth at length the mother's beastly crime proclaimed minos the shameful witness from his couch far to remove determines in a dome intricate winding he resolves to lodge from every eye concealed the birth entrusts the work to daedalus in cunning arts most famed to build he all the various marks confuses puzzles bent on either side the various paths confound the searching eye so in the fields the soft meander plays here refluent flowing there with dubious course meeting himself his wandering stream he sees and urges now to whence he first arose now to the open outlet of the main thus daedalus the numerous paths perplexed with puzzlings intricate so much entwined himself could scarce the outer threshold gain here was the double monster man and bull enclosed till by the third allotted tribe the ninth year vanquished with athenian blood twice gorged before then was the secret gate so often sought in vain found by the aid a virgin lent to trace the winding clue instant for Dias, theseus loosed his sails with minos's ravished daughter on that shore cruel he left her the deserted nymph wildly lamenting bacchus soon embraced and gave her needful aid her fame to fix immortal in the skies her sparkling crown moved from her forehead mid the stars he placed through the thin air it flies and as it mounts to blazing stars the glittering jewels change still as a crown it shines its station midst where stout alcides ophiuchus grasps meantime long exile and the land of crete detesting burning with the patriot's wish his native soil to visit daedalus by sea escape prevented thus exclaimed let earth and ocean both my flight obstruct still open lies the air through air we'll go minos controlling all controls not air he speaks and bends to unknown arts his skill improving nature's gift quills fixed in rows he places small at first in length and size gradual enlarged as if a hill's steep side growing produced them so time passed the pipe of rustic origin by small degrees increasing reeds composed firm fixed with thread their middle part he binds and close with wax cements their bottom all complete he bends the composition in a gentle curve resembling real wings young icarus alone was present ignorant that the work would his destruction cause with playful tricks he fingers now the feathers now his hands soften the yellow wax his sportive wiles his father's wondrous essay oft delay now was the last completing stroke imposed upon his undertaking first the sire on artificial wings his body poised and in the beaten air suspended hung then his young offspring icarus he taught this i my son advise a middle course to keep be cautious lo if thou shouldst skim heavy with ocean spray thy wings would droop if high the sun would scorch them steer thy course twixt each extreme nor would i wish thine eyes to view buotes or the northern bear nor yet orion's naked sword my track cautious pursue 
with anxious care he gives rules thus for flight and to his shoulders fits the new-formed pinions tears his ancient cheeks bedewed and thus his admonitions flowed and his paternal hands as thus employed beneath the office trembled warm salutes he gave the boy nor knew he gave the last then on his feathers borne explores the way timid for him who follows so the bird tempts from her lofty nest her new-fledged brood in the thin air he bids him close pursue tries in each shape to teach the fatal skill shakes his own pinions bending back to view his sons the angler as with quivering reed he drew his prey to land the shepherd swain as o'er his staff he leaned the ploughman clown their flight astonished saw and deemed them gods that so at will could cleave the liquid sky now samos juno's favoured isle they passed delos and paros all to left to right labyrinthus lay and rich in honeyed sweets calymne when the heedless boy o'erjoyed in his bold flight the precepts of his guide contemning soared to heaven a loftier range the neighbouring sun's fierce heat the fragrant wax which bound his pinions softened soon the wax dissolves and now his naked arms he waves but destitute of power his course to steer no air his arms can gather loud he calls his father's name as in the azure deep he drops the deep which still his name retains the hapless parent not a parent now loud calls on icarus where art thou son where shall i seek thee icarus he said and spied his feathers floating on the waves then cursed his hapless art as in the earth he deep entombed him all the land around bears from the youth entombed its present name the whirring partridge from a branchy holm beheld him as beneath the turf he placed his son's lamented body and with joy fluttered his feathers while his chirping song proclaimed his gladness then the only bird known of his kind in elder days unseen but lately clothed with feathers through the crime flagitious daedalus of thee to thee thy sister witless how his fate was doomed her son committed for instructing art when twice six annual sons the youth had seen his docile mind best fitted then to learn he well the indented bones remarked which form the fish's spiny back and in like mode sharp steel indenting first the saw produced for public service two steel arms he joined fixed to one orb above each widely stretched one steady rests the other circling turns him daedalus with envy viewing forced headlong from sacred palace's lofty tower his death feigned accidental but the maid divine to all ingenious minds a friend received him in his fall changed to a bird on pinions bore him through the middle air his vigorous powers in force remain the same but change their seat rapid he flies and quick he races on the ground his name remains unaltered still the cautious bird declines to trust his weight aloft nor forms his nest on lofty boughs or summits of high trees nigh to the earth he skims beneath the hedge his shelly brood deposits of his fall still mindful towering heights he always shuns now daedalus with lengthened flight fatigued Sicilia's realm received whose king humane great cocalus moved with his suppliant prayer armed to assist him now by theseus freed athens no more the mournful tribute paid with garlands every temple gay they hang invoke the warlike maid the mighty jove and every deity their altars all with promised blood they honour with rich gifts and fragrant incense now had wandering fame through all the grecian towns spread the renown of theseus and the rich Achaia's tribes his aid implored when mighty perils pressed even calydon though meleager brave possessing sought his help with suppliant words the cause a furious boar by dian sent avenging instrument of slighted power aeneas from plenteous harvests full success rejoicing primal fruits to ceres gave to bacchus poured libations of his wine to yellow-haired minerva offered oil the rites invidious from the rural gods commencing all the bright celestials shared latona's daughter only in her fane nor flames nor offerings on her altar saw rage fires even heavenly breasts not unrevenged she cried shall this be suffered honoured not not unappeased by vengeance will i rest then through the aeneian fields the maid despised sends the fierce boar to ravage such is size the bulls that in apirus's pastures graze more huge appear not in cecilia's meads far less are seen redder his sparkling eyes fire mixed with blood high rears his fearful neck thick clustering spears the threatening bristles seem hoarse as he grunts 
down his wide shoulders spreads the boiling foam his tusks the tusks outvie of india's hugest beast the lightning's blast driven from his mouth burns all the verdant leaves now o'er the corn but yet in budding ears he tramples immature he reaps the crop the loud lamenting tiller's hopes destroyed the harvest intercepting in the shoot in vain the barns the granaries in vain their promised loads expect prostrate alike are thrown the fruitful clusters of the vine with shooting tendrils and the olive's fruit with branches ever blooming on the flocks he rages these not shepherds not their dogs could save nor could the furious bull his herd wide fled the people safety none durst hope save in their city's walls till thirst of fame fired meleager with his chosen band of valiant youths and first were seen the twins of tinderus for wondrous skill renowned this at the cestus that to curb the steed jason whose art the primal ship designed theseus in happy concord with his friend pirithus joined thestius's two valiant sons lynceus alpharius's offspring idas swift lucippus fierce acastus unexcelled to dart the javelin cineus now no more clothed in a female figure phoenix sprung from old amintor actor's equal sons hippothoas dryas and from elis's town dispatched came phileus nor was absent there brave telamon nor great achilles sire nor stout eurytion with Pheretus's son nor hyante and iolaus brave echion in speed unconquered nestor then in primal youth lelex narasian born panopeus hylius hippasus the fierce nor those whom hippocoon sent in aid from old emeclae nor ulysses's sire and Seus of parasia mopsus sage amphiarius then by his false spouse's guile betrayed not with them atalanta came the grace and glory of arcadia's woods a shining buckle from the ground confined her garment's border simply bound her hair one knot confined her ivory quiver slung o'er her left shoulder sounded as she stepped her hand sustained a bow and thus arrayed appeared her form her lineaments disclosed what scarce might feminine in boys appear or hardly boyish in a virgin's face the chief of caledon the maid beheld beheld and loved while heaven his love opposed the secret flames inhaling deep he cried o blessed youth if youth to gain thy hand worthy were deemed nor bashful shame nor time would more allow a mightier deed now claimed their utmost efforts for the furious war darkened with trees thick growing rose a wood from earliest ages there the biting axe had never sounded in the plain it reared facing the sloping fields the youths arrived some spread the knotted toils some loosed the hounds some strive the footprints of the boar to trace their danger anxious seeking low beneath a hollow vale extended where the floods fresh showery torrents gathered lazy laid the flexile willow and the waving reed the fenny bulrush osier and the cane diminutive the stagnant depth concealed aroused from hence the boar impetuous rushed amidst his host of foes so lightnings dart when clouds concussive clash his rapid force levels the grove the crackling trees resound where'er he pushes loud the joyful youth exclaim each grasping with a nervous hand his weapon brandished while its broad head shakes forward he darts the dogs he scatters wide and each opposing power his strokes oblique their baying drives to distance echion's arm hurled the first dart but hurled the dart in vain lightly a maple's trunk the weapon grazed the next but over urged the force that sent had pierced the rough back of the wished-for prey jason's the steel it whizzed beyond him far then mopsus prayed o phoebus if thy rites i e'er performed if still i thee adore grant my sure weapon what i wish to touch the god consented what he could he gave the boar was struck but struck without a wound diana from the flying weapon snatched the steely head and pointless fell the wood more chafes the beast like lightning fierce he burns fire from his eyeballs flashes from his chest clouds of hot smoke through his wide nostrils roll forced from the close-drawn string as flies a stone hurled at embattled walls or hostile towers with foes thick crowded so the deadly beast rushed on the heroes with unerring shock eupolamus and pelagon who stood the right wing guarding on the earth he threw their fellows snatched them from impending fate not so onesimus of hippocoon the offspring scaped the death inflicting blow torn through the ham just as for flight he turned his slackened nerves could bear his weight no more 
then nestor too long ere the trojan times perchance had perished but beside him stood a tree whose branches nimbly he attained a mighty effort aided by his spear safe in his seat he viewed the foe he fled beneath him fiercely threatening death below he whets his tushes on a stumpy oak and bold in sharpened arms ranches the thigh with crooked fangs of othrus's mighty son now the twin brothers ere in heaven displayed bright constellations both fair dazzling shone mounted on steeds whose lilied hue surpassed the unsullied snow both shook their brandished spears the trembling motion sounded high in air deep both had pierced but mid the darkening trees their bristly foe sought refuge where nor steed nor dart could reach him telamon pursues ardent and heedless of his steps a root checks his quick feet and prone the hero falls while peleus aids his brother chief to rise the beauteous atalanta to the string fits the swift dart and from the bended bow speeds it the arrow fixed beneath his ear raises the monster's skin and drops of blood his bristly neck in sanguine joys the maid to see the blow but meliga far in joy surpassed her he the first beheld the trickling blood he to his comrades first the wound displayed exclaiming yon fair nymph the honours so deservedly won shall bear the warriors blush with shame and each exhorts his fellow shouts their souls more valiant swell in heaps confused their numerous javelins fly clashing in crowds each javelin fails to wound lo now ancaeus furious to his fate blind rushing rears his double axe and cries behold o youths how much a manly arm outstrikes a female's to my prowess yield the palm of conquest let latona's maid with all her power protect him yet my force spite of diana shall the monster slay proud his big boasting tongue thus speaks then grasps his two-edged weapon firmly in his hands and raised on tiptoe meditates the blow the watchful beast prevents him through his groin to death sure passage drives his double tusks and Chaos drops his bowels gushing full roll on the earth and soak the ground in gore ixion's son pirithus on the foe rushed in his nervous hand a powerful spear brandishing theseus loudly to his friend exclaimed o dearer far than is myself half of my soul at distance wait the brave at distance may engage valour too rash destroyed ancaeus as he spoke he hurled his massive cornel spear its brazen head well poised its sender's anxious wish appeared fair to accomplish when a leafy arm branched from a beech opposed it in its flight next aeson's son his javelin threw but chance glanced from its mark the weapon and transpierced an undeserving hound the dart was drove through all his belly and deep fixed in earth but different fortune on the arms awaits of meliga javelins too he sent deep in the ground the foremost pierced the next firm in the monster's back quivering stood fixed nor stays he whilst he raging furious whirled in giddy circles round and poured his foam mad with the new-felt torture close at hand the hero plies his work provokes his foe to fiercer ire and in his furious breast buries the glittering spear a second shout loudly proclaims his thronging comrade's joy each to the victor crowding hand in hand congratulating grasps him each amazed views the dire savage as his mighty bulk or spreads a space of land scarce think they yet their safety sure him touching each his spear extends and dips it in the flowing gore his foot upon the head destructive fixed the conquering youth thus speaks nonacria fair receive the spoil my fortune well might claim fresh glory shall i gain with thee to share the honours of the day then gives the spoils the chine with horrid bristles rising stiff and head fierce threatening still with mighty tusks she takes the welcome gift for much she joys from him to take it envy seized the rest and sullen murmurs through the comrades ran above the rest were thestius's sons their arms outstretching clamoured thus with a mighty noise let not thy beauteous form thy mind deceive when from thy eyes the donor of the spoil besotted with thy love shall far be moved woman restore the prize nor hope to hold our intercepted claims speaking they rob her of the gift him of the right to give nor passive stood the warlike youth his teeth he gnashed with swelling rage as fierce he cried learn ye base robbers of another's rights what difference threats and valiant actions show then in plexippus's unsuspecting breast he plunged his impious sword nor suffered long toxeus to doubt who hesitating stood now vengeance brooding for his brother's fate now dreading for himself a like swift blow again he warms the weapon reeking still hot from plexippus's bosom in his blood 
End of section 15. Section 16 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The Eighth Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 2. To every temple of the favouring gods Althea bore donations for her son. Victorious, when the breathless bodies came of both her brethren, loud the sounding blows of grief were heard, and all the city rung with lamentable cries. Her golden robes were straight to sable changed, but when the hand which struck the blow was known, her every tear was dried, and vengeance only filled her soul. A log there lay when Thestius's daughter groaned in childbed pangs, which on the greedy flames the triple sisters flung, and while their thumbs twirled round the fatal thread, this was their song. O newly born, to thee and to this bough like date of life we give. Then ceased their words, and from her presence vanished. Sudden snatched the mother from the fire the burning brand, and quenched it instant in unsparing streams. Long in most secret darkness had she hid this fatal wood, and thus preserved her son had safely years mature attained but now forth she produced it from its close recess fragments of torches on the hearth she heaped and blew the sparklings into deadly flames and thrice she raised her hands the branch to heave on the fierce fire and thrice her hands withdrew sister and mother in one bosom fought to adverse acts impelling oft her face dread of her meditated crime bleached pale oft to her eyes her furious rage supplied a fiery redness now her countenance glowed with threatenings cruel now her softening looks to pity seemed to melt and when fierce ire had filled her soul and parched up every tear fresh tears would gush thus rocks a vessel driven by winds and adverse currents both their force at once obeys and can to neither yield thus wavered thestius's daughter dubious thus affection swayed her now her rage is calm now her calmed rage with fourfold fury burns at length the sisters or the parents tie the prevalence obtains impiously good with blood her own she soothes the brethren's shades now when the fires destructive fiercely glared she cried here funeral pile my bowels burn and as the fatal wood her direful hand held forth the hapless mother at the pyre sepulchral stood exclaiming furies three avenging sisters hither turn your eyes behold the furious sacred rites i pay for retribution i commit this crime by death their death must be avenged his fault by mine be punished on their funeral biers his must be laid one sinning house must fall in woes accumulated blessed shall still aeneas enjoy his proud victorious son and thestius childless morn better that both should weep in concert dear fraternal ghosts recent from upper air my work behold take to the infernal realms my offering bought so dear the hapless pledge my womb produced ah whither am i swept brothers forgive the parent lo my faltering hands refuse to second my intents well he deserves to perish yet by other hands than mine unpunished shall he scape then victor live proud of his high success and rule the realm of calydon while ye a prostrate throne a trivial heap of ashes and cold shades patience no more will bear perish the wretch perish his father's hopes perish the realm and all the country perish where oh where is then the mother's soul the pious prayers a parent should prefer where the strong pains which twice five moons i bore oh that the flames first kindled had thy infant limbs consumed would i had not then snatched thee from thy fate thy gift of life is mine now that thou diest thy own demerits ask take the reward thy deeds deserve yield up thy twice given life first in thy birth then by the brand i saved or lay me with my brethren in their tomb i wish yet what i would my hands refuse what will my soul determine now mine eyes the mangled courses of my brethren fill now filial fondness and a mother's name distract my soul o oh, wretched wretched me brothers you gain the conquest yet you gain dearly for me but on your shades i'll wait blessed in what gives you once to me again she said with face averse and trembling hand the fateful brand amid the fires was dropped the brand a groan deep uttered or a groan to utter seemed the flames half backward caught at length their prey which gradually consumed witless of this sad deed and absent far fierce meleager with the self-same fire burned inward 
all his vitals felt the flame scorching concealed the excruciating pangs magnanimous he bore yet deep he mourned by such a slothful bloodless fate to fall and happy called anchaeus in his wound with deep-drawn groans he calls his aged sire his brother sisters and the nymph beloved who shared his nuptial couch with final breath his mother too perchance now glows the fire and now the pains increase now both are faint now both together die the soul flies forth and gently dissipates in empty air lo now lies lofty calydon the youths and aged seniors weep the vulgar crowd and nobles mourn alike the matrons rend their garments beat their breasts and tear their hair stretched on the earth the wretched sire defiles his hoary locks and aged face with dust cursing his lengthened years the conscious hand which caused the direful end the mother's fate accomplished through her vitals pierced the steel had heaven on me an hundred tongues bestowed with sounding voice and such capacious wit as all might fill and all the muses power still should i fail the grieving sister's woe justly to paint heedless of beauteous forms they beat their bosoms livid while the coarse remains they clasp and cherish in their arms the senseless mass the coarse they kiss and kiss the couch on which it rests to ashes burned careful collected in the urn they hug those ashes to their breasts and prostrate thrown his tomb they cover on the graven stone embrace his name and on the letters pour their tears in torrents diane satiate now the house of aeneas levelled with the dust raised them by wings in air which sudden shot from each their bodies gorgeous soul and she the spouse of valiant hercules unchanged were left long pinions for their arms were seen their mouths to horny bills were turned through air thus altered ample range the goddess gives theseus meantime the toil confederate done homeward to Pallas's towers his journey bent but achelous swollen by showery floods delayed his progress famed cecropia's chief he cried here shelter enter neath my roof nor through the furious torrents trust thy steps whole forests oft they root and whirl along vast rocks with thundering sound high stalls i've seen near to the banks erected swept away nor aught availed the lusty bull's strong limbs nor aught the courser's speed the torrents oft of melted snows which from the mountains rush whelmed the strong youths beneath the whirling pool to rest is safer till their wonted banks again the streams confine the lessened waves within their channels pent theseus complies and answers achelous we approve thy prudent counsel and thy cave will use the grot they enter hollow pumice mixed with rugged tophus formed it tender moss the moist floor covered fretwork on the roof the purple murex and the scallop white alternate formed now phoebus's steeds had run two-thirds their race when theseus on his couch reclined the comrades of his toil close by pirithous here trezenian lelex there whose temples now some silvery hairs displayed with these were such as achelous joyed at such a noble guest the honour deemed worthy to share the barefoot naiad nymphs heaped on the board of the banquet food removed they brought the wine in cups with jewels decked the mighty hero then the distant main surveying asks what land is that i see and shows the spot tell me what name denotes that isle and yet methinks not one it seems the river god replies what we behold a single isle is not but five the eye is mocked by distance that diana's wrath may less your wonder move these once were nymphs ten bullocks had they sacrificed and called each rural god to taste the sacred feast and join the festal chorus me alone forgetful they invited not sore vexed i swelled with rage and as my anger rose my flood increased till at my greatest height woods i divorced from woods from meadows tore the neighbouring meadows and the naiads rolled now well remembering what my godhead claimed down with their habitations to the main my waves then with the ocean's waters joined the land divided and those isles you view echinades amid the sea were formed more distant may your vision reach behold an isle beyond them to my soul most dear by sailors named perimele i snatched her virgin treasure from the much-loved maid hippodamus her sire in fury raved and from a precipice the pregnant nymph plunged in the deep my waves received the load and whilst i bore her floating thus i said o trident bearer thou whom lot decreed lord next to heaven o'er all the wandering waves where all the sacred rivers end their course to which all rivers tend o neptune aid 
propitious hear my prayer much have i wronged the nymph i now support if lenient he and equitable sure hippodamus her sire had pity granted and myself had pardoned gracious neptune grant thy help to her apparent's fury from the earth wide banishes o oh, i beseech thee grant a place to her paternal rage would drown or to a place transform her where my waves may clasp her still the ocean god consents and all his waters shake as nods his head still floats the frighted nymph and as she swims i feel her heart with trepid motion beat while pressing fond her bosom all her form rigidly firm becomes and round her chest rough earth heaps high and whilst i wondering speak a new-formed land her floating limbs enclasps her shape transformed a solid isle becomes thus far the watery deity and ceased the wondrous tale all moved save one the son of bold ixion fierce of soul he laughed to scorn their minds so credulous the gods impious contemning as he thus exclaimed what tales o achelous you relate too much of potence to the gods you grant to give and change our figures all struck dumb discourage this bold speech and lelex first mature in age and in experience old beyond the rest thus spoke celestial power in range is infinite in sway immense what the gods will completion instant finds to clear your doubts upon the phrygian hills an ancient oak and neighbouring linden stand girt by a low enclosure i the spot surveyed when into phrygia's realms dispatched by pythias when those realms his father ruled not far a lake extends a space once filled with human habitants whose waves now swarm with fenny coots and cormorants alone here jove in human shape and with his sire the son of maia came the last his rod shorn of its wings still bore a thousand doors seeking repose they knocked at every door firm barred repulsed them one at length flew wide a lowly cot whose humble roof long reeds and straw firm matted covered Barsis there a pious dame and old philemon matched in age had dwelt since joined in springtide youth and there grew old together full content their poverty they hid not and more light their poverty on souls unmurmuring weighed here nor for lord nor servant was their need to seek beneath the roof these only dwelt each ordered each obeyed the heaven-born guests the humble threshold crossing lowly stooped and entrance gain the ancient host bade sit and rest their wearied limbs the bench was placed which Bausus, anxious for their comfort spread with home-made coverings then with careful hand the scarce warm embers on the hearth upturned and roused the sleeping fires of yeston's eve with food of leaves and bark dry parched and fanned to flame the fuel with her aged breath then through the small slit faggots and the boughs long withered on the top divided small and placed her brazen vase of scanty size o'er all last stripped the colwarts outer leaves culled by her husband from the watered ground which served as garden he meantime reached down with two forked prong where high on blackened beam it hung a paltry portion of an hog long hardened there and from the back he sliced a morsel thin which soon he softened down in a boiling steam the intermediate hours with pleasing chat they cheat the short delay to feel avoiding on a nail high hung a beechen pail for bathing by its hand deep curved with tepid water this he filled and placed before his guests their feet to lave a couch there stood whose feet and frame were formed of willow tender reeds the centre filled with coverings this they spread coverings which saw the light not but when festal days them claimed yet coarse and old were these and such as well with willow couch agreed the gods laid down the dame close girt with tremulous hand prepared the board two feet were perfect neath the third she thrust a broken sherd and all stood firm this sloping mended all the surface clean with fragrant mint she rubbed and placed in heaps the double tainted fruit of palace made of unsoiled purity autumnal fruits cornels in liquid lees of wine preserved endive and radish and the milky curd with eggs turned lightly o'er a gentle heat all served in earthen dishes after these a clay-carved jug was set and beechen cups varnished all bright with yellow wax within short the delay when from the ready fire the steaming dishes brought and wine not long pressed from the grape again went round again gave place to see the third remove produced now comes the nut the fig the wrinkled date the plum the fragrant apple and the grape plucked from the purple vine all placed around in spreading baskets snow-white honey filled the central space the prime of all the feast was looks that hearty welcome gave 
and proved no indigence nor poverty of soul meantime the emptied bowls full oft they see spontaneously replenished still the wine springs to the brim astonished struck with dread to view the novel scene the timid pair their hands upraised devoutly and with prayers excuses utter for their homely treat that unawares required a lonely goose they owned the watchman of their puny farm him would the hosts to their celestial guests a sacred offering make but swift of wing their toiling chase with age retarded long he mocked at length the gods themselves he seeks for sheltering care the gods his death forbid and speak celestials are we both a fate well earned your impious neighbouring roofs shall feel to you and unto you alone is given exemption from their lot your cottage leave and tread our footsteps while of yonder mount we seek the loftiest summit each obeys the gods precede them while their tottering limbs a trusty staff supports tardy from years slowly they labour up the long ascent now from the summit wanted they not more than what an arrow shot with strenuous arm at once could gain when back their view they bent their house alone they saw that singly stood all else were buried in a wide-spread lake wondering at this and weeping at the doom their hapless neighbours suffered lo they see their mouldering cot e'en for the pair too small changed to a temple pillars rear on high in place of crotchets yellow turns the straw the roof seems gilded sculptured shine the gates and marble pavement covers all the floor then saturn's son in these benignant words the pair addressed o ancient man most just and thou o woman worthy of thy spouse declare your wishes baucis spoke a while with old philemon while their joint desire the latter to the deities declared to be your ministers your sacred fane to keep we ask and as our equal years in concord we have passed let the same hour remove us hence may i her tomb not see nor be by her interred the gods comply these guard the temple through succeeding life filled now with years as on the temple steps they stood conversing on the wondrous change baucis beheld philemon shoot in leaves and leaves philemon saw from baucis sprout and from their heads o'er either's face they grew still while they could with mutual words they spoke at once exclaimed o dearest spouse farewell at once the bark their lips thus speaking closed even yet a tyanean shows two trees of neighbouring growth formed from the altered pair nor dotard credulous nor lying tongue the fact to me related on the boughs myself have seen the votive garlands hung and whilst i offered fresher have i said heaven guards the good with care and those who give the gods due honours honours claim themselves he ceased the deed and author all admire but theseus most whom anxious still to hear more wondrous actions of the mighty gods the stream of caledon as on his arm reclined he rested in these words addressed there are o valiant youth of those once changed still in the new formed figures who remain others there are whose power more wide extends to many shapes to alter proteus thou art one thou habitant of those wide waves which earth begird now thou a youth appearest and now a lion then a furious boar a serpent next we tremble to approach and then with threatening horns thou seemst a bull oft as a stone thou liest off stands a tree sometimes thy countenance veiled in fluid streams thou flowest a river sometimes mounst in flames nor less of power had erisichthon's maid spouse of autolycus her impious sire all the divinities of heaven despised nor on their slighted altars offerings burned he too tis said the cerealian grove with axe profaned his violating steel the ancient trees attacking mid the rest a huge grown oak in yearly strength robust itself a wood uprose garlands hung round and wreaths and grateful tablets proofs of vows for prospering favours paid the dryad nymphs oft in its shade their festal dances held oft would they clasping hand in hand surround the mighty trunk its girth around to meet full thrice five cubits asked to every tree lofty it seemed as every tree appeared lofty when measured with the plants below yet not for that did erisichthon hold the biting steel but bade his servants fell the sacred oak lingering he saw them stand his orders unobeyed impious he snatched from one his weapon and in rage exclaimed what though it be the goddess's favourite care were it the goddess's self down should it fall and bow its leafy summit to the ground he said and poised his axe and aimed a bleak deep shuddering shook the cerealian tree and groans were uttered all the leaves grew pale and pale the acorns 
while the widespread boughs cold sweats bedewed when in the solid trunk his blow ungodly pierced blood flowed in streams from out the shattered bark not flows more full from the deep wound in the divided throat the gore when at the sacred altar's foot a mighty bull an offered victim drops dread seizes all and one most bold attempts to check his horrid wickedness and check the murderous weapon him the villain saw and take he cries the boon thy pious soul merits so well and from the trunk the steel turns on the man and strikes his head away then with redoubled blows the tree assails deep from the oak these words were heard to sound a nymph am i within this trunk enclosed most dear to ceres in my dying hours prophetic i foresee the keen revenge which will thy deed pursue and this solace grants comfort even in death he undismayed his fierce design still follows now the tree tottering with numerous blows by straining cords he drags to earth and half the wood below crushed by its weight lies prostrate all astound of her deprived and at their own sad loss the sister dryads clad in sable robes to ceres hasten and for vengeance call on erisichthon to their urgent prayers the beauteous goddess gave assent and shook her locks the motion shook the yellow ears which filled the loaded fields and straight conceived a torture piteous if for pity he for acts like these might look to tear his form by famine's power pestiferous there herself approach forbidden fate long since had doomed ceres and famine far removed should dwell a mountain nymph she calls and thus directs a region stretches on the extremest bounds of icy scythia dreary seems the place sterile the soil nor trees nor fruits are seen but sluggish cold and pale affright and fear still craving famine there her dwelling holds bid her within the inmost vitals hide of this most daring and most impious wretch the proudest plenty shall not make her yield for in the contest all the power i boast to her shall stoop nor let the lengthened way appall thy mind my car receive receive my dragons through the air their course direct by these long reins speaking the reins she gave she borne through ether in the granted car to scythia's realm is carried on the ridge a rugged mountain offered first she eased the dragon's necks as caucasus twas known there she the sought-for famine soon espied eagerly searching on the stony fields at once with teeth and fangs for thin-sown herbs rough matted were her locks deep sunk her eyes pale bleached her face her lips with whitened slime o'erspread with furry crust her mouth was rough hard was her skin and through it might be seen her inwards above her hollow loins upstood the arid bones a belly's place supplied a belly's form her breasts to hang appeared held only by the chine her fleshless shape each joint in bulk increased rigidly large the knees were swollen and each protruding part immoderately was big then as the nymph from far beheld her for a nigh approach she dreaded what the goddess bade she told though brief her stay though distant far she stood though instant there arrived she felt the power of famine at the sight and turning quick her reins she urged her dragons to their speed in retrograde direction still on high till thessaly they gained famine performs the wish of ceres though her anxious aim is still to thwart her power and borne on winds swift through the air the fated house she finds and instant enters where the inmost walls the sacrilegious wretch enclose in sleep deep buried for night reigned and with her wings him clasping close in all the man she breathed her inspiration in his throat his mouth his chest and in his unreplenished veins her hunger she infused the bidden deed complete she vanished from those verdant fields and turned her to the needy roofs again and well accustomed caverns gentle sleep fanned erisichthon still with soothing wings even in his sleep imagined food he craves and vainly moves his mouth tires jaw on jaw with grinding his deluded throat with stores impalpable he crams the empty air greedy devouring for more solid food but soon his slumbers vanished then fierce raged insatiate hunger ruling through his throat and ever craving stomach instant he demands what produce ocean earth and air can furnish still of hunger he complains before the full spread tables still he seeks victuals to heap on victuals what might serve a city's population seems for him too scant whose stomach when it loads had gorged for loads still craved the ocean thus receives from all earth's regions every stream all streams united still requiring greedy fire on every offered element thus feeds 
countless supplies of wood consuming more nutrition craving still the more it gains more greedy growing from its large increase so erisichthon's jaws profane rich feasts at once devour at once still more demand all food but stimulates his gust for food in added heaps and eating only seems to leave his maw more empty lessened now in the deep abyss of his stomach huge where all the riches which his sire's bequest had given the direful torment still remained in undiminished strength his belly's fire implacable still raged exhausted now on the cursed craving all his wealth was spent one daughter sole remaining of a sire less impious worthy her the pauper sold her free-born soul a master's sway disclaimed her hands extending to the neighbouring main o thou she cried who gained my virgin spoil snatch me from bondage neptune had the maid previous enjoyed nor spurned her earnest prayer she whom her master following close had seen in her own shape but now in manly guise appears in garments such as fishers clothe the master sees and speaks o thou who rules to the trembling reed whose bending wire thy baits conceal so may thy wiles the water aid so may the fish deceived beneath the waves thy hooks detect not till too firmly fixed say thou but where she is who stood but now upon this beach in humble robes arrayed with locks disordered on this shore she stood i saw her but no further mark her feet the aid of neptune well the maid perceived and joys that of herself herself is sought thus his inquiries answering whom thou art i know not studious bent the deep alone and care to drag my prey my eyes employ more to remove thy doubts so may the god who rules the ocean aid my toiling art as here i swear no man upon this shore nor female i accepted has appeared these words the owner credits and the sand treads with returning steps deluded goes and as he goes her former shape returns soon as this changing power the sire perceived the damsel oft he sold now she escapes beneath a mare's resemblance now a bird and heifer now and now a deer she seemed her greedy parents more with food ill-gained supplying when at last his forceful plague had every aid consumed and every aid fresh food afforded to his fierce disease then he commenced with furious fangs to tear for nurture his own limbs life to support by what his body and his life destroyed but why on others transformations dwell myself o youths enjoy a power my form to alter not unlimited my range now in the shape at present i assume anon i writhe beneath the serpent's form or take the figure of a lordly bull and wear my strength in horns while horns i had disfigured now my forehead side laments one weapon ravished as you well may see he spoke and heavy sighs his words pursued end of section sixteen Section 17 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso, Ovid, translated by J. J. Howard. The Ninth Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid, Part 1. The son of Aegeus begs the cause to know whence spring those groans and whence that wounded front. And thus the stream of Caledon replies, his uncombed locks with marshy reeds entwined a mournful task o warrior you impose for who when vanquished joys to tell the fight where he was worsted yet will i relate in order all vanquished the shame was small the honour great for such a prize to strive and such a conqueror more the mind relieves as ere the beauteous degenera's name reached to your ears her charms the envied hope of numerous wooers formed mine with the rest as o'er the threshold of my wished-for sire i stepped i hailed him o Patheon's son for thine accept me so alcides spoke and all the rest to our pretensions bowed of jove his sire he boasts and all the fame his acts deserved and stepdame's cruel laws final completed i who shameful thought that gods should yield to mortals then a god alcides was not thus his claim opposed a king of floods behold me floods which roll with winding current through the land you sway a son in me except no stranger sent from distant regions of your country one part of your rule let it not hurt my claim that juno hates me not that all the toil of slavish orders i have ne'er performed alcmena was his mother let him boast jove is a sire but feigned or if one true is criminally so he claims a sire to prove his mother's infamy then choose 
say feigned thy origin from jove or fruit of intercourse adulterous own thou art me speaking thus with furious eyes he viewed nor ruled his swelling rage replying fierce more than my tongue i on my arm depend whilst i in fighting gain the palm be thou victor in talking furious on he rushed so proudly boasting to submit i scorned but stripped my sea-green robe my arms opposed and held my firm clenched hands before my breast for stout resistance every limb prepared to meet the fight he in his hollow palms the dust collecting sprinkled me all o'er and then the yellow sand upon me threw now on my neck he seizes now he grasps my slippery thighs but only thinks to hold in every part assailing still secure in bulk i stand and he assails in vain thus stands a rock which waves with thundering roar surround it stands unhurt in all its strength a little we recede then rush again to join the war stoutly our ground we hold steady resolved to yield not foot to foot fixed firm i prone press with my ample breast and hand with hand with forehead forehead joins so have i seen two mighty bulls contend when each the fairest heifer of the grove expects the arduous struggle to reward the herds behold and tremble witless which the powerful contest shall successful gain thrice while i clasped him close alcides strove to throw me from his breast in vain the fourth he shook me from him and my clasping arms unloosing instant turned me with his hand truth must i speak and heavy on my back he hung if credence may my words demand nor seek i fame through tales of false deceit a mighty mountain on me seemed to weigh scarce were my arms with trickling sweat bedewed loosed from his grasp scarce was my body freed from his hard gripe when panting hard for breath ere i could strength regain my throat he seized then on the earth my knee was pressed my mouth then bit the sand inferior proved in strength to arts i next betook me slipped his hands in form a long round serpent while i rolled in winding spires my body while i shook my forked tongue with hisses dire he laughed and mocked my arts exclaiming snakes to kill i in my cradle knew grant thou excelst o achelous others far in size what art thou mated with the hydra's bulk he fertile from his wounds his hundred heads ne'er felt diminished for straightway his neck with two successes braved the stroke again yet him i vanquished with his branching heads from blood produced from every loss more stout him prostrate i o'erthrew what hope hast thou in form fallacious who with borrowed arms now threatenst whom a form precarious hides he said and fast about my throat he squeezed his nervous fingers choking hard i strove as pincer like he pressed me to unloose from his tight grasp my neck conquered in this still a third shape the furious bull remained changed to a bull again i waged the war around my brawny neck his arms he threw to left and spite of every effort tried to scape he dragged me down the solid earth deep with my horn he pierced and stretched me prone on the wide sand unsated yet his rage his fierce hand seized my stubborn horn and broke from my maimed front the weapon naiad nymphs this consecrated filled with fruits and flowers of odorous fragrance and the horn is prized by plenty's goddess as her favourite care he spoke a nymph close girt like diane's train her ample tresses o'er each shoulder spread entered supporting all of autumn's fruit in the rich horn and mellowest apples came the second course to grace now day appeared the youths when light the loftiest summits touched of the high hills departed waiting not till the rough floods in peaceful channels flowed the troubled currents smoothed profound his head of rustic semblance achelous hides reft of his horn beneath his deepest waves his forehead's honour lost sore galled him all save that was perfect even his forehead's loss with willow boughs and marshy reeds was hid thou too rash nessus through thy furious love of the same virgin thy destruction met pierced through thy body with the feathered dart jove's son returning to his natal soil companioned by his new-made bride approached evinus's rapid flood swollen was the stream with wintry showers as wont and raging whirls unfordable proclaimed it him himself fearless yet anxious for his spouse's care nessus approached in strength of limbs secure and knowledge of the fords and thus he spoke her o alcides will i safely bear to yonder bank thou all thy efforts use in swimming straight the theban hero gives the pallid caledonian to his care shivering with dread no less the centaur frights than the rough flood the mighty warrior pressed with his large quiver and the lion's hide 
for on the bank opposing had he flung his club and curved bow exclaimed the stream my arms will vanquish soon as i essay nor dubious waits but in the torrent leaps not heeding where most tranquil flows the stream but stemming furious all its utmost rage now had he reached the bank now held again the bow flung o'er when loud his spouse's shrieks assailed his ear to nessus whom he saw his trust about betraying loud he cried what vain reliance on thy rapid speed tempts thee to violence o double shaped i speak regard me to respect my rights should deference to me not move thee think how whirls thy sire and that thy rage may check for wishes unallowed yet hope thou not with courser's speed to scape me with my dart not feet will i pursue thee his last words with deeds he guarantees and through and through the flying culprit felt the javelin driven out through his breast the forked weapon stood withdrawn from either wound gushed forth the gore mixed with the venom of lanier's pest this be preserved nor will i unrevenged expire he murmured faintly to himself and gave his raiment in the warm blood dipped a present to the nymph whose spoil he sought to wake again her husband's dormant love long was the intermediate time the deeds of great alcides and his stepdame's hate filled all the world meanwhile victor returned from out Icalia, when the promised rites to jove sinian he prepared to pay tattling report who joys in falsehood mixed with circumstantial truth and still the least swells with her lies had in thine ears instilled o degenera that alcmena's son with iole was smitten ardent love swayed her belief and terror struck to hear of this new flame she melted into tears with them her weeping grief first flowed away but soon she bursted forth why weep i so the harlot will but gladden in my tears but ere she here arrives it me behoves each effort to employ while time now serves to hinder what he seeks whilst yet my couch another presses not shall i complain or rest in silence shall i caledon reseek or here remain shall i abscond his habitation or if nought else serves strenuous oppose him or if truly bent o meliga with a sister's pride thy wicked deeds start vi a witness leave the harlot's throat divided what the rage of woman may accomplish when so wronged in whirls her agitated mind is tossed determining last to send to him the robe in nessus's blood imbued and so restore his waning love witless of what she sends herself to lycas's unsuspecting hands the cause of future grief delivers wretch most pitiable she with warm coaxing words instructs the boy to bear her spouse the gift the unwitting warrior takes it and straight clothes his shoulders with echidna's poisonous gore incense he sprinkles in the primal flames he kindles with the flames his prayers ascend as from the goblet he the vintage pours on marble altars hapless by the heat the poison more was quickened by the flame melted it grew more potent wide diffused through all the limbs of hercules it spread still while he could his fortitude as wont his groans suppressed at last his patience spent fierce from the altar flinging it is mount so woody with his plaintive shrieks he fills and instant from his limbs the deadly robe essays to tear that where he strips the skin stripped also follows dreadful to describe or to his limbs his utmost struggling vein it clings or bare his lacerated joints and huge bones stand with hissing noise his blood burns as when glowing iron in a pool is dipped so boils it with the venom fierce nor hope of help remained the greedy fires his utmost vitals waste and purple sweat bedews his every limb his scorched nerves crack and whilst his marrow with the latent pest runs fluid high toward heaven his arms he holds exclaiming now saturnia feast thy soul with my destruction joy o savage view from lofty heaven my tortures satiate now thy rancorous soul but if a foe may move commiseration for thy foe i am take hence this life grievous through direful pains hateful to thee and destined first for toils death now would be a boon and such a boon a stepdame might confer have i for this busiris slain who drenched the temples deep with travellers blood for this antaeus robbed of nutriment parental did thy bulk of triple form swain of iberia fright or thou three-headed cerberus me move wrought i for this in elis at the lake of stymphalus and in parthenian woods did not my valour seize the golden belt of thermodon's brave queen the apples gain ill-guarded by the unsleeping dragon's care could the fierce centaur me resist or could the mighty boar that laid arcadia waste 
and what availed the hydra that he grew from every loss in double strength revived how saw i not the thracian coursers gorged with human gore whose stalls with mangled limbs crowded i overthrew and slew their lord on his slain coursers strangled by these hands nemea's monster lies heaven i upbore upon these shoulders the fierce wife of jove wearied at length with bidding i untired still was of acting but at length behold a new-found plague which not the bravest soul nor arms nor darts can aught resist fierce fire darts through my deepest inwards all my limbs greedy devouring yet eurystheus lives still are there who the deities believe he said and o'er high eat he tortured roved like a mad tiger when the hunter's dart stands in his body and the wounder flies oft would you see him groaning storming oft oft straining from his limbs again to fling the vest trees rooting up against the hills fierce railing next up to his father's skies his arms extending lo he like a spies where trembling in a hollow rock he hides then all his fury in its utmost strength raging he cried thou likest thou supplied this deadly gift thou art the author then of my destruction shuddering he and pale in timid accents strove excuse to plead speaking and round his knees prepared to cling alcides seized him with an engine's force whirled round and round and hurled him in the waves which by you be a roll he as he shot through air was hardened as the falling showers concrete by freezing winds whence snow is formed as snows by rolling their soft bodies join conglomerating into solid hail so ancient times believed the boy thus flung through empty air by strong alcides arm bloodless through fear and all his moisture drained changed to a flinty rock a rock e'en now high in eubea's gulf exalts its head which still of human form the marks retains which as though still of consciousness possessed the sailors fear to tread and like us call thou jove's renowned offspring felled the trees which lofty Eti bore and built a pile then bade the son of Pian bear thy bow thy mighty quiver and thy darts to view once more the realm of troy and through his aid the flames were placed below whose greedy spires seized on the structure on the woody top thou laidst the hide nemean and thy head supported with thy club with brow serene as though with garlands circled at a feast thou laidst mid goblets filled with sparkling wine now the strong fires spread wide o'er every part crackling and seizing his regardless limbs who them despised the gods beheld with fear the earth's avenger jove who saw their care with joyous countenance thus the powers addressed this fear o deities makes glad my heart and lively pleasure swells in all my breast that sire and sovereign o'er such grateful minds i hold my sway since to my offspring too your favouring care extends no less tis true his deeds stupendous claim still i am obliged but from your anxious breast spanish vain fear despise those flames of eti he who all o'ercame shall conquer even the flames you see nor shall the power of vulcan aught consume save his maternal part what he derived from me is ever during safe from death and never vanquished by the force of fire that will receive his earthly race complete amidst the heavenly host and all i trust my actions gladly will approve should one haply with grief see hercules a god and grudge the high reward even he shall grant his great deserts demand it and allow unwilling approbation all assent not even his royal spouse's forehead wore a frown at aught he said his final words irked her at length to be so plainly marked vulcan meantime each corruptible part bore off in flames nor could alcides form remaining now be known nought he retained of what his mother gave jove's share alone the serpent revels thus in glittering scales his age and former skin thrown off at once so when tyrinthius from his mortal limbs departed in his better part he shone increased in stature and majestic grace augustly decked his venerable brow veiled in a hollow cloud and borne along by four swift steeds in a high car the sire him placed in glory mid the radiant stars atlas perceived his load increased nor yet eurystheus baited in his rancorous hate but cruel exercised his savage rage against the offspring of the sire aboard but now alcmena worn with constant cares in argolus to iole confides her aged plaints to her the labours tells her son achieved or all the wide world known and her own griefs beside alcides words caused hillas to his couch to take and take iole cordial to his inmost heart and now with generous fruit the nymph was large 
Alcmena thus to her commenced her tale. May thee at least the favouring gods indulge, and all delay diminish, when matured, thou to Elithia shalt have need to call, who o'er travailing mothers bears the rule, whom Juno's influence made so hard to me, of Hercules' toil-bearing, now the birth approached, and in the tenth sign ruled the sun. A mighty bulk swelled out my womb, so huge, well might you know that Jove the load had caused. Nor could I longer bear my throes, my limbs cold rigors seize, while now I speak, my pains, part even in memory now I seem to feel. Through seven long nights and seven long days with pangs incessant was I racked, my arms to heaven stretching. I called Lucina, and the powers, without cries mighty. True Lucina came, but came by Juno prepossessed, and bent my life to sacrifice to Juno's rage. Soon as my groans she hearkened, down she sat upon the altar, placed without the gates, neath her right hand, her left knee pressing, joined fingers with fingers crossed upon her breast, my labour stayed, and spellful words she spoke in whispering tone. The spellful words delayed the approaching birth. I strain and madly rave with vain upbraidings to ungrateful Jove, and crave for death, in such expressions plain as hardest flints might move. The Theban dames around me throng, assist me with their prayers, and me my trying pains exhort to bear. Galanthus, one who tended me, of race plebeian, yellow-haired, and sedulous what ordered to perform, and much esteemed for courteous deeds, she first suspected what, I know not, somewhat, formed by Juno's peak, and while she constant passed, now too, now fro, she saw the goddess on the altar sit, girding her arms with close-knit fingers o'er her knees, and said, O dame, whoe'er thou art, our mistress gratulate, Alcmena now our Golican, is lightened, now the prayers of the child-bearer meet her hopes. The dame who rules the womb straight from her station leaped, and all astounded her clenched fingers loosed. I in that moment felt my bonds undone. Galanthus, they report, the goddess mocked, thus cheated by her laughter. Savage she dragged her so laughing, by the tresses seized, and forced her down to earth, as up she strove erect to rise, and to four feet her arms transformed. The same agility remains, her back its colour keeps, her form alone is diverse. She, cause then her lying mouth my birth assisted, by her mouth still bears, and round my house she harbours as before. She said, and by the memory moved she mourned for her lost servant, whom lamenting thus her child-in-law addressed, If then the form altered of one an alien to your blood, O mother, thus affects you, let me tell the wondrous fortune which my sister met, though grief and tears will frequent choke my words. Her mother, Dryope, alone could boast, me to my sire another bore. Her charms, Ethalia, all confessed, whom, rifled first of virgin charms, when passively she felt his force, who Delphos and who Delos rules, and Dreamon took, and held a happy spouse. A lake expands with steep and shelving shores, encompassed, myrtles crown the rising bank. Here Dryope, of fate unconscious, came, and what must more commiseration move, came to weave chaplets for the naiad nymphs. Her arms sustained her boy, a pleasing load, his first year scarce complete, as with warm milk she nourished him. The watery lotus there, for promised fruit in Tyrian splendour bright, grew flowering near. The flowers my sister cropped, and held them to delight her boy, and I, for there I stood, the same prepared to do. But from the flowers red flowing drops I saw, and all the boughs with tremulous shuddering shook. Doubtless it is, but far too late we learned by the rough swains, nymph Lotus, when she fled from Priapus obscene, her shape transformed into this tree which still retains her name. My sister, witless of this change, in fright would back retreat and leave the nymphs adored, but roots her feet retain. These from the ground she strains to rend, but save her upper limbs, naught can she move. A tender bark grows o'er the lower parts, and her mid-limbs invades. This seeing, and her locks to rend away, attempting, her raised hand with leaves was filled. Leaves covered all her head. Amphissus found, his grandsire had the child Amphissus named, his mother's breasts grow hard, nor when he sucked, lacteal fluid gained he. I there stood, of her sad fate spectator. Loud I cried, but, O oh, my sister, aid I could not bring. Yet what I could I urged. The growing trunk and growing boughs, my close embraces stayed. In the same bark I glad had been enclosed. Lo, come her spouse Andreman, and her sire so wretched, and for Dryope they seek. A lotus, as for Dryope they ask, I show them. To the yet warm woods salutes ardent they give. 
and prostrate spread the roots they clasp of their own tree now sister dear nought save thy face but what a tree becomes thy tears the leaves thy body formed bedew and now while stable while her mouth yet gives to words a passage such like plaints as these she breathes if faith unhappy e'er can claim i swear by all the deities this deed i never merited without a crime my punishment i suffer innocent my life has been if i deceive may drought parch those new leaves and by the hatchet felled may fire consume me yet this infant bear from those maternal branches to a nurse transfer him but contrive that oft he comes and neath my boughs let him his milk imbibe and neath my boughs sport playful when with words able to hail me let him me salute and sorrowing say within that trunk lies hid my mother but the lake so let him dread nor dare from any tree to snatch a flower but think each shrub he sees a god contains adieu dear husband sister dear adieu father farewell if pious cares you feel from the sharp axe defend my boughs and from the browsing flocks and now as fate denies to lean my arms to yours your arms advance approach my lips whilst you my lips may touch and to them lift my infant boy more words i may not now the tender bark my neck so white invades my utmost summit hid move from my lids your fingers for the bark so rapid growing will my dying eyes without assistance close the lips to speak cease and existence ceases the fresh boughs long in the altered body warm were felt while Iole the mournful fact relates and while alcmena from eurytus's maid with ready fingers dried the tears herself still weeping lo a novel deed assuaged their grief for Iolaus, scarcely youth, his cheeks with tender down just covered, stands within the porch, to early years restored. Junonian Hebe, by her husband's prayers or come, to Iolaus gave the boon. Who, when to vow she went, that future times should none such gift enjoying e'er perceive, was checked by Themis. Now all Thebes, she said, discordant warfare moves. Through Jove alone, Capaneus can be conquered. Mutual wounds shall slay the brothers. In the yawning earth a living prophet his own tomb shall see a son avenger of his parents death upon his parent impious for the deed at once and pious at the action stunned exiled from home and from his senses driven the fury's faces and his mother's shade shall haunt him till his wife the fatal gold shall ask and till the fijian sword shall pierce their kinsman's side Caliroe then the nymph from Achelous sprung suppliant shall seek from jove her infant's years mature may gain moved by her prayers jove will from thee demand a son's spouse and daughter of his wife the boon and unripe men thou'lt make the youths become while themis thus with fate foretelling lips this spoke the gods in murmuring grudgings mourned angry why others might not grant the gift aurora mourned her husband's aged years mild ceres plained that jason's hairs were white Vulcan for Erichthonius prayed an age renewed, in Venus future cares employed, anxious for promise that Anchises' years replenishment might find, and every god had whom he loved, and dark sedition grew from special favour, till the mighty sire the silence broke. If reverence I may claim, where rashly rush ye? Which of you the power, fate to control, possesses? Fate it was, gave Iolaus youth restored again, by fate Caliroe's sons ere long shall spring to manhood prematurely nor can arms nor yet ambition gain this gift with souls more tranquil bear this since you see the fates me also rule could either fates once change old age should never bend iacus down and radamanthus had perpetual spring of youth enjoyed with minos now despised through load of bitter years nor reigns as wont Jove's words the deities all moved, not one longer complained, when heavy pressed with years they Iacus and Radamanthus saw, and Minos, who when in his prime of age made mightiest nations tremble at his name. He, feeble then, at Deione's son Miletus trembled, who with youthful strength and Phoebus's origin proud swollen, and known about to rise against his rule, yet him he dared not from his household roof to drive but thou miletus fledst spontaneous thou the aegean waves in thy swift ship didst pass and on the asian land the walls didst found which bear the builder's name seance here meander's daughter whose recurving banks she often trod whose stream itself reseeks so oft in beauteous form by thee was known and clasped by thee a double offspring came biblis and caunus from the warm embrace 
End of section 17. Section 18 of Metamorphoses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso, Ovid. Translated by J. J. Howard. The Ninth Book of the Metamorphoses of Ovid. Part 2. Let Biblis warn that nymphs should ne'er indulge illicit warmth. Her brother Biblis loved, not as she ought, not with a sister's soul. No fires at first the maid suspected, naught of sin. The thought that oft her lips to his she wished to join, and clasp her arms around his neck fraternal, long herself deceived, beneath the semblance of a duteous love. Love gradual bends to him her soul. She comes fully adorned to see him, anxious pants beauteous to seem. If one more beauteous there she sees, invidious she that face beholds. Still to herself unconscious was her love. No wish she formed beneath that burning flame, yet all within was fire. She called him Lord, now kindred's name detesting. Anxious more, biblis, than sister he should call her still. Yet waking, ne'er her soul durst entertain lascivious wishes. When relaxed in sleep, then the loved object oft her fancy saw. Oft seemed her bosom to his bosom joined. Yet blushed she, tranced in sleep. Her slumbers fly, she lies a while in silence, and revolves her dream, and thus in doubting accents speaks. Ah, wretch! What means this dream of silent night, which yet I oft would wish? Why have I known this vision? Envy's eyes must own him fair. And but his sister am I, all my love he might possess, worthy of all my love. The sister's claim then hurts me. Oh, at least, while tempted thus I wakeful naught commit, let sleep oft visit with such luscious dreams. No witness sees my sleeping joys. My joys, though sleeping, yet are sweet. O oh, Venus, O oh, thou feathered Cupid, with thy tender dame! What transports I enjoyed! What true delight me thrilled! How lay I, all my soul dissolved! How joys it me to trace in mind again the pleasure, though so brief, for flying night invidious checked enjoyment in the bud! O oh, Carnus, that an altered name might join us closely, that thy sire a sire-in-law to me might be! O oh, Carnus, how I'd joy, wert thou not son, but son-in-law to mine! Would that the gods had all in common given, save parents only! Thou in lofty birth I would should me excel, O beauteous youth! A mother whom thou'lt make I know not, I ne'er can thee know but with a sister's love. Parents the same as thine, my hapless lot, all that I have me only pains the more. What are to me my visions? Wait have dreams? How much more happy are the mortal gods! The gods embrace their sisters, Saturn clasps ops, joined to him by blood, Ocean enjoys his sister Tethys, and Olympus's king his Juno. God's peculiar laws possess. Why seek I then celestial rights to bring diverse with human ordinance to compare? Forbidden love shall from my breast be driven, or that impossible, may death me seize, instant and cold upon my couch outstretched, my brother then may kiss me as I lie. Yet still my wish double consent requires. Grant I should yield, still might the deed to him seem execrable. Yet the Aeolian youth, the sister's nuptial couch ne'er dreaded, why, oh why, on this so dwell? Why thus recall examples to my view? Where am I born? Hence, flames obscene, hence far, a sister's love, and that alone my brother shall enjoy. But had his soul first burned for me, perchance I had indulged his passion. Surely then I may demand, who would not, asked, refuse. What couldst thou speak? Couldst thou confess thy flame? Love forces, and I can. If shame my lips close binds, Yet secret letters may disclose the hidden flame. With this idea pleased, these words her hesitating mind resolved. Raised on her side, supported by her arm. He shall, she said, now know it, all my love preposterous confessed. Alas, what depth now rush I to, what fire has seized my soul. And then with tremulous hand the words composed. Her right hand grasps the style, the left sustains the waxen tablet smooth, and then begins. She doubts. She writes, condemns what now she wrote, corrects, erases, alters, now dislikes, and now approves, now throws the tablet by, then seizes it again, irresolute what she would, whate'er is done displeases, all. Shame and audacious boldness in her face are mingled, sister once her hand had wrote, but sister soon as seen her hand erased, and her fair tablet bore such words as these, to thee a lover salutation sends, and health, which only thou to her canst give. Ashamed, she blushes to disclose her name. 
for should i press to gain my wished desire without my name my cause i trust would find successful aid let biblis not be known till certain hopes of bliss her mind shall cheer yet faded colour leanness and pale face with constant dripping eye and rising sobs show my unhidden grief well might these prove to thee an index of a wounded heart my constant clasping numerous fond salutes if e'er thou'st marked thou well might have perceived not sister-like embracings in my soul though this deep wound i bear though in my breast this fire consuming burns yet strive i all witness ye gods my truth all to suppress and act with wiser conduct hapless war long have i waged against cupid's furious rule more pressure have i borne than what a maid could e'er be thought to bear at length or come and forced to yield thy help i must implore with trembling voice thou only canst preserve thou only canst the loving nymph destroy with thee the choice remains no foe thus sues but one by nearest ties to thee conjoined pants to be joined more nearly linked to thee with closest bands let aged seniors learn our laws and seek what moral codes permit what is permitted and what is denied let them inquire and closely search the laws a bolder love more suits our growing years as yet we know not what the laws allow and judge for all things we free leave enjoy the example following of the mighty gods nor parent stern nor strict regard for fame nor timid thoughts should check us absent all should be each cause of fear the dear sweet theft beneath fraternal love may be concealed with thee in secret converse i may speak embrace thee kiss thee in the open crowd how little then remains pity forgive the declaration of this love ne'er told had raging fire not urged it nor allow upon my tomb this cause of death to stand here the filled tablet checked her hand in vain thus writing at the utmost edge the lines but stayed her crime straightway she firmly pressed with her carved gem and moistened it with tears her tears of utterance robbed her bashful then she called a page and blandishing in fear exclaimed thou faithful boy this billet bear and hesitated long ere more she said ere eh, to my brother bear it as she gave the tablet from her trembling hand it fell the omen deep disturbed her yet she sent a chosen hour the servant sought went forth and gave the secret message sudden rage the youth meandrian petrified and down the half-read lines upon the ground he flung his hand scarce holding from the trembling face of the pale messenger quick fly he cried thou wicked pander of forbidden lust fly while thou mayest and no had not thy fate involved our modest name death hadst thou found he terrified escapes and backward bears to his young mistress all fierce Caunus spoke pale thou o biblis heardst the rough repulse thy breast with frigid chills beset but soon her spirits rally and her furious love returns scarce to the trembling air her tongue can utterance give in these indignant words deservedly mourn i who so rashly gave him of my wounds the conscious tale to learn why trust so soon to words what still might hid remain on tablets hastily composed why were not first the wishes of my soul tried in ambiguous hints first sure i ought whence the wind blew have marked nor loosed my sails him flying to pursue and the wide main in all directions plough now bellies out my canvas not a single course explored hence am i borne against the rocks hence whelmed in the wide depth of ocean nor my sails know i to tack returning did not heaven check the indulgence of my love by marks obvious to all when from my hand down dropped the tablet which the boy was bad to bear marked that my falling hopes not more deferred thy wishes or the day should sure have been surely the day for heaven itself me warned and certain signs me gave but those my mind stupid neglected personal my words should i have urged nor trusted to the wax in person should my love have been displayed then had my tears been seen then had he viewed my raptured countenance then had i spoke far more than power of letters can convey my arms around his neck i then had thrown howe'er unwilling and had he been coy in dying posture i his feet had clasped and stretched before him life demanding all had i achieved perchance though by the boy my messenger commissioned i have failed aptly perhaps he entered not perhaps and much i fear improper hours he chose nor sought a vacant time when naught his mind disturbed this has alas my hopes destroyed for from a tiger Caunus sprung not round his heart not solid steel nor rigid flint nor adamant is girt nor has he sucked the lioness's milk 
he shall be bent and gained his heart shall be nor will i brook the smallest bar to what i undertake while now this spirit holds my primal wish if it were given i might revoke my deeds is i had ne'er commenced my second now is that i persevere in what's begun for should i now my wishes not pursue still must he of those daring wishes think and should i now desist well might he judge formed lightly my desires or planned to try his virtue and involve in snares his fame or dreadful think me not by love o'ercome who burns and rages fiercely in my breast but by hot lust for now concealed no more my guilty act can be i've written once once have i asked corrupted all my soul should further no depravity ensue guilty i must be called what more remains in crime is little but in hope immense she said and such the wavering of her breast that whilst the trial grieves her which she made farther to try she wishes every bound or passing and with luckless fate her suit still meets repulsion he when endless seemed her pressing fled his country and the crime and in a foreign region raised new walls then daughter of miletus they report forsook thee all thy senses then in truth thou rent thy garments from thy breast thy breast thy furious hands hard smote now to the world madly she raves now to the world displays her wished-for love denied all hope despair she too forsook her country and the roof so hated and the vagrant steps pursued her flying brother trod as thracia's dames o son of semele thy thyrsus shake when celebrating thy triennial rites so did the carian matrons biblis see fly o'er the wide-spread fields with shrieks and howls these left behind o'er carrier's plain she runs and through the warlike Lilyges, and through the lycian realms now kragos had she left and Lymere and xanthus's waves behind with the high ridge chimera lifts who burns central with flames his breast and front fierce armed a lion toward his tail a serpent formed now all the forests past thou biblis faint with long pursuit falst flat on the hard ground thy locks are spread dumb now thou liest thy face presses the fallen leaves oft in their arms so delicate the lilagian nymphs to raise the up attempted oft they strove to give advice that might thy love control and offer solace to thy deafened ear still silent biblis lies and with her nails rends the green herbage moistens all the grass with rivulets of tears and here they say the naiad nymphs their bubbling art supplied ne'er drought to know more to afford their power sure could not straightway as the pitchy drops flow from the firs cleft bark from solid earth as stiff bitumen oozes or as streams by cold congealed thaw with the southern wind and warming sun feban biblis so by her own tears exhausted was transformed a fount becoming which still in that vale neath a dark ilex springing keeps her name now had the rumour of this wondrous change spread rapid through the hundred towns of crete but crete had lately seen a wondrous change in her own clime in iphis's altered form there in the festian land near Nossus's realm was ligdus born a man of unknown fame but a plebeian of unblemished worth nor had he more than noble stock estate yet unimpeached for honesty his life he thus the ears of his then pregnant spouse addressed when near her bearing time approached two things my wishes bound first that thy pains may lightly press next that a male thou bringst more burdensome are females strength to them nature denies then if by fate ordained to give a female birth which i detest unwilling i command o piety excuse it let the babe to death be given he said and tears profuse the cheeks bedew of him who bade and her who heard his words still telethusa to the latest hour with vain petitions strives her spouse to move that thus he should not straighten so his hopes firm to his purpose ligdus stood and now scarce could the heavy weight her womb sustain when in the silent space of night in sleep entranced or isis stood before her bed or seemed to stand surrounded by the pomp to her belonging on her forehead shone the lunar horns and yellow wheat them bound in golden radiance with a regal crown with her anubis barca came and came bubastis holy apis various marked he who the voice suppresses and directs to silence with his finger timbrels loud osiris never sought enough and snakes of foreign lands full of somniferous gall to her the goddess thus as raised from sleep she seemed and manifest each object stood 
O votary, Telethusa, fling aside thy weighty cares, thy husband's mandates cheat, nor waver when Lucina helps thy pains, save it whate'er it be, the goddess I, assisting, still give aid when rightly claimed, nor will it e'er thee grieve to have adored an ingrate goddess. Thus as she advised, she vanished from the bed. The Cretan dame rose from the couch o'erjoyed, and raising high to heaven her guiltless hands, prayed that her dream on truth was founded now her pains increased and now her burthen forced itself to air a daughter came but to the sire unknown the mother bade them rear it as a boy and all a boy believed it none the truth the nurse accepted knew glad prayers the sire offers and from its grandsire is it named iphis the grandsire's appellation joyed the mother hears the name which either sex may claim and none in that at least deceived the lie lay hid beneath a pious fraud the robes were masculine, the face was such as beauteous boy or beauteous girl might own. And now three annual sons the tenth had passed. Thy father, Iphis, had to thee betrothed Ianthe, yellow-haired, nymph most admired amongst all the Festians, for her beauteous charms. Telestes of Dictea was her sire, equal in age and equal in fair form, the self-same masters taught the early arts, suiting their years. Their unsuspecting minds were both by love thus touched, in both was fixed an equal wound, but far unlike their hopes, Ianthe for a spouse impatient looks, with nuptial tortures. Whom a man she thinks that spouse she hopes will be. Iphis too loves, despairing what she loves e'er to enjoy. This still the more her love augments, and burns a virgin for a virgin. Scarce from tears refraining, what, she cries, for me remains? What will the issue be? What cure for this new love unknown to all who prodigies possess in this desire? If the high gods me wish to spare, straight should they me destroy. Yet would they me destroy, they should have given a curse more natural, a more usual fate. Love for an heifer ne'er an heifer moves, nor burns the mare for mares, rams follow ewes. The stag pursues his female, birds thus join, nor animal creation female shows with love of female seized. Would none were I. But lest all monstrous love's crete might not show soul's daughter chose a bull even that was male with female yet if candidly i speak my passion wilder far than hers appears she hoped for love pursued by fraud enjoyed beneath an heifer's form the adulterous spark deceiving be from every part of earth assembled here the skill let daedalus hither on waxen wings rebend his flight what could all aid could all their learned art change me from maid to youth? Or all to thee, Ianthe? But why resolute thy mind not fix? Why, Iphis, thus thyself forget these stupid wishes driving hence, and thoughts so unavailing? Lo, what thou wast born, save thou wouldst also thine own breast deceive, what is allowed behold, and as a maid may love, love only. Hope first snatched by love, love feeds on still. From thee all hope is born. No guardians thee debar the dear embrace, nor watchful husband's care, no sire severe, nor she herself denies thy pressing prayers, yet art thou still forbid, though all agree, to reap the bliss, though gods and men unite, behold, too, all my votive prayers succeed. The favouring gods, whate'er I prayed, have given. My sire and hers, and even herself, comply, but nature far more strong denies, alone, me irking with refusal. Lo, arrives the wished-for hour, the matrimonial light approaches, when Ianthe will be mine, and yet far from me, in the midst of waves for thirst I perish. Nuptial Juno, why comest thou, or Hymen, to these rites, where none leads to the altar, but where both are led? Here stayed her speech, nor less the other nymph burned, and, O oh, Hymen, prayed thy quick approach. But what she wishes Telethusa dreads, and searches for delays, Feigned sickness oft prolongs the time, oft omens dire and dreams. Now all her artful fictions are consumed, and now the long protracted period came for nuptial rites, and but one day remained, she from her own and daughter's head unbinds the fillets, and with locks dishevelled clasps the altar, crying, Isis, thou who dwellst in Paritonium, Mariotis's fields, in Pharos, and the sevenfold mouths of Nile, help me, I pray, relieve my trembling dread. Thee, goddess, once I saw, and with thee all those images beheld, and them all I know, thy train, thy torches, and thy timbrels loud. And with a mindful soul thy words I marked, 
that she enjoys the light that i myself not sinful suffer to thy counsels we and admonitions owe pity us both grant us thy helping aid tears followed words straight seemed the goddesses altars all to shake and shake they did trembled the temple's doors the lunar horns blazed bright the timbrels rung forth goes the mother of the omen glad yet not in faith secure iphis pursues his mother with a step more large than wont the snow-like whiteness quits his face his strength increases fiercer frowns his forehead wears shortened his uncombed locks more vigour now than as a nymph he felt for thou a boy now art so late a female bear thy gifts straight to the temple and in faith rejoice straight to the temple they their offerings bore and on them this short poem was inscribed iphis a boy the offerings pays which maid iphis had vowed the following sun illumed the wide world with his rays when venus came juno and hymen to the genial fires and the boy iphis his ianthe clasped end of section eighteen